what is it? Some things. I see my own reflection. Like what kind of thing? Craving for attention. Longing for salvation in the middle of the night. As far as the eye can see. As long as the sea is deep. As long as my soul is free, I am alive. After all, I should know better about this matter than you. You got some Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. It's difficult to play recorded music without hearing hiss, hum, and other noise. An attack could come without warning. The sky would suddenly light up. If a doorway is right at hand, use it. Video or go to the movies. Dolby noise reduction has helped make the sound more real. While we like to make as little noise as possible. Scotty, be me in. I just started noticing some things. Like what kind of thing? Can you picture the monopoly? Which one is face? Apparently, it's never been the case. The Mandela effect. Either we're sliding between parallel realities. A simulation and it's glitching out. Do you hear yourself right now? Maybe it's in my head, Claire, but what if it's not? Maybe none of this is real. So this one is a famous verse in the Bible. It's Matthew 18, 20. When two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Okay? okay. Talking about the presence of God will be there when there's two or more people. Right? Maybe none of this is real. of God will be there when there's two or more people, right? That changed several months before COVID, and it changed to where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in the midst. Meaning two or three, and then what? God's not going to be there? Limited gathering. And then what did we see? Just months later, they started limiting gatherings, churches were shutting down, all of this. And this is such a huge change. This is universal. In the Lord's Prayer, where it used to say, forgive us our trespasses and those that trespass against us. Yeah. That's how I, I, no, I remember it. I should know better about this matter, Mr. Corbett, than you. No doubt. You are. No, the genie aren't real. Why has nobody been to the moon in such a long time? Eight, seven, six... Because we didn't go there, and, and that's the way it happened. Ruben, no! That's off limits! What? What's happening? Ladies there? and gentlemen, rock and roll. So, it used to say, forgive us our trespasses and those that trespass against us, right? That's gone from every freaking Bible now. Now, what it says isn't the same in each. Most say debts and debtors instead of trespass and trespasses. Some say sins and sinners, and I think there might be a couple of other, you know, less known, obscure variations, but the majority, I'm going to say 80% of them, say debts and debtors instead of trespass and trespasses. Oh. Yet the entire freaking Christian world thinks it's trespass and trespasses. And you want to talk about residue? I mean, people have, my friends, I friends of mine, they've been in the house, plaques on the wall, you know, that has yeah. the Lord's Prayer the way that it used to be. Yeah. Again, <laughs> Universal as far as that aspect of it. Trespass and trespasses is gone from all of them. Now, there's more changes. In it. <laughs>
fallout is dust that is sucked up from the ground by the explosion. It can be deadly dangerous. It says so right in the Bible. The day will come when the lion will lay down with the lamb. In my time, I don't know he had a second day. Alright everyone, welcome back, Dose of Reality, and if you're watching on Valentine's Day, named after Greg the Hammer Valentine, it's uh, this is live. <laughs> yes, we are live, Wednesday night, 2024, 2 2024 as you see the date right there. So, a uh, little bit of a late start, and... Uh, yeah, Streamlabs just did not want to launch no matter what I did. I eventually did get it to launch, and it looks like we're live in all the important places. So right now, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Rockfin. We're live on Rumble. We're live on Facebook and Twitter, and it will be uploaded to BitChute and Odyssey later. Uh, please share the stream out on whatever platform you're watching it on. Uh, let's get more and more people in here, all right? Um, so, plan is, gonna multi-stream all night. Um, I'm gonna bring C-3PO on to join me in a little bit, after I talk about a few things, um, and show a few things. I'm gonna bring C-3PO on. And then, in, later on in the show, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it into an open panel for members. So anybody that's a member of my Ko-fi or my Patreon, um, you guys will all be sent a Zoom link when it comes to that time, but it'll be a couple hours into the show. Anybody interested in signing up, the link's pinned at the top of the chat. The Super Chat link and the... I gotta open a few more things, sorry. I had to reboot my whole computer. Uh, the Super Chat link and the Kofi link are the same link. When you get there, it'll say, like, do you want to do a one-time donation or, a, a, you know, a monthly thing. So $7 a month. Uh, please do Kofi rather than Patreon because Patreon takes a big chunk and then you will have access to come on the show uh, later on and these always turn out to be uh, really cool shows because <laughs> yeah, we have the best community. We have some of the best free thinkers and s some people that really I find highly intelligent um, and able to you know, analyze reality and just talk deeply about things. Um, and I feel that the people in this community have a lot of discernment. Of course, we all make mistakes. It happens. Um, but we, it's, it's a very tight-knit group of people I like to bring on my stream. I know a lot of other people like to do, uh, just lots of people like to do open panels where you, they just post the link. That's never turned out well for me. I got porn bombed a few times right in the beginning. And um, I just don't want any Tom, Dick, and Harry coming up on my show. So there's that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to give a shout out in a second and then we'll really get rolling. Give me one second. I am just typing up the thing for my super chat link so I can pin it. Yeah, thanks for being patient. Lots of tech issues. Not on my end at all. Restream wasn't working earlier either. The site. And then it started working at like 740. Um, it's fucking weird. <clears throat> all right. Let's give a shout out. And we'll get it rolling. Over on Rumble, 17 people. We have CSIS and we have MCG. And let's see, over on Rockfin, we have X Helio, Dan Wiley, uh, Four Jacks, 13 people on Rockfin, and 127 on YouTube already. Uh, so that's good. 
Let's see, let me scroll up. I'm trying to scroll up. My chat's loading because YouTube sucks a fat one. Uh, Jehovah's Daughter Barbara, Awakened Saint, Damien Rudiger, uh, Suso, Joyce B, Barry Jackson, Their Material Hatred, Carrie Skates, uh, Four Jacks, Day Trooper, uh, Unindoctrinated, New Hampshire Guy, Barry Jackson, Lex 02116, Ryu Gamin Makado, Mr. Beast Fan, Boston Ray, Imaginationary Man, Suso, Thomas Knight, uh, One More Quarter, Richard Minnick, Tartarian Mandela, uh, William Hale, Ulysses Bernalis, Shiva Shampoo, Sue Finelli, Matrix One, Barry Jackson, uh, some name in the crazy language, I don't even know what it is. Uh, well, not that English isn't a crazy language itself, but that I just don't, I definitely can't read what that says. Uh, Southern Bell, uh, Ann Gaynor, Melissa Mouse, Cassandra Ruske, Bob Jones, Chicago Cubby Bear, Red Pill Rants, Joe Blur, uh, Tony Coriolis, Southern Bell, Ash R. Uh, let's see who else. Rooster Cogburn. All right, a lot of people in here. Already 130 people here. Okay, cool. If I missed anybody, it's not intentional. Uh, the the chat skips around, and then you gotta try and find your place again, and then it's gone, and uh, blah 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 blah. All right. So, uh, let's just get right into it. I do have to get my show notes back open. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, technology can really suck. Let me take these off. For a few. Technology can really fucking suck. <laughs> and then there's nothing you can do. You just like wait on it. And there was like, I thought about maybe opening it in StreamYard and launching from over there. But then I'd only be able to hit one platform because I don't pay them money now too. And I would have to recreate the whole link because they don't let you just connect to an event. It just wasn't even worth it. So I just kept trying this. But I'm glad we eventually got it. Um, so today's Wednesday. I just did a show on Sunday uh, with Dave Murphy. I hope you guys all got to catch that show. Very interesting stuff. Uh, I always enjoy talking to Dave. And I just actually finally got to meet Dave Murphy uh, a few months ago in Vegas, which was really cool. And for those of you that don't know, he and I didn't even know this was going to go down until it did. Uh, he totally included the Mandela effect in his presentation at Flattobafest. So that was fucking cool, you know, um, for a few minutes too. Like it, it was uh, not just like a, a just mentioned. He went into it a little bit. A um, lot of cool ideas. Now, I don't agree with every theory that, uh, you know, with everybody, nor with everything Dave says. Uh, but a lot of stuff was stuff I could resonate with. Um, definitely going to have him back on sooner rather than later. It's been a long time since he's been on. If you guys don't know, I interviewed Dave Murphy on his Awakening interview in like 2019. Uh, really cool interview. Check it out. It's one of the ones that's still up on YouTube. Uh, it's on my Awakening playlist. And he's called in another time, uh, I think to me and Karen, uh, to talk about the Mandela effect. Uh, so I knew Dave was very well aware of the Mandela effect. And every once in a while, you'll see him post about it on his Facebook page. And you know, I love more truth is especially people that I think have done some really good work in other areas. I love when they start to talk about this. So like I said, <laughs> this is the year of ME, right? I mean, people are waking up. In fact, um, I just got a text from David Weiss who is in Mexico right now. I can't be in Mexico, but uh, Shiva and I had a Mandela Effect presentation, as you guys know. Um, <clears throat> let me actually just text him back. But Dave's actually down there in Mexico. Our presentation, I, it aired uh, yesterday, okay? Um, you know, to, to everybody that's there. And not, they didn't put it on the screen at the stage, I guess, but... It went out on the, the stream for everybody that streams it, plus everybody that's there has access to the stream, so people are seeing it. Um, David just texted me before the show, a lot of people talking about your presentation yesterday throughout the day and today. So, uh, yeah, we got people talking. All right. <laughs> it makes me happy. You know why? Because this is an important... I mean, 
how could this not be near the top of the list of like if you if you're into you know maybe you're not into like trying to figure out what this place is and what our existence means but if that is something that interests you here we are man this is the most fascinating and deep topic ever like we did that rise above show like a week ago or whenever it was a week and a half ago when Shiva and I went on there and uh <clears throat> Man, I thought we laid out the Mandela effect really well. Got a lot of good feedback from that. Just blowing people's minds. I mean, these guys hadn't even had an idea that people's names were changing. And I think a lot of people don't know that because the Mandela effect is always misrepresented. Right? The uh, people will, uh, you know, even if, uh, you know, when people read these articles on it, you know, like I always say. Not talking about people's names changing. Speaking of which, don't know what actually supposedly, and because I don't spend any time focusing my energy in this type of shit anymore. But at Joel Olstein's church, there was supposedly a shooting. Let's take a look at what's going on on Twitter. <clears throat> when you put Joel Olstein in the search, I'll show you this real quick. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely everywhere. Everybody's calling him Joel Osteen. Even Time Magazine, which is like, you know, one of the biggest publications ever. They have him as Joel Osteen. I commented to them. I said, why are you calling him Joel Osteen? His name's Joel Osteen. Joel Osteen. Osteen. I mean, it's everywhere, of course. Here we go. Time Magazine. Here's what to know about the shooting at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Megachurch. Well, Joel Osteen's never existed. We don't have any evidence. Nothing's going on with the Mandela effect, right? <laughs> There's more evidence that this is taking place than any type of like so-called, because I don't look at this as a conspiracy, but I know it kind of goes under that umbrella and most of the people here that have gone through that type of road, this has more evidence than all of them. I mean, it's fucking everywhere. You know why? Because this reality has changed. We didn't come from somewhere else and come here. In my opinion, now we're talking theories, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Because all the residue is here. Not only is all this residue here. Memories of everybody that walks the face of this earth and this reality that we're currently in, they're all Mandela affected. I show this time and time again, no exceptions. Exceptions to some changes, but nobody's... Uh, immune from the Mandela effect. Joel Olstein, we could, I mean, I could show you this all day. Of course, it's going to be endless, okay? E even when they're posting clips with the new reality on their graphics on the screen, still typing it with the L. I mean, it's, you know, this has been going on for years, too. It's crazy that people haven't caught on to this one yet. People are just oblivious to what's taking place in reality. I mean, we could do this all day, okay? I'm not going to go through it all, but you could go through Joel Olstein residue all day. We've been doing it for years. I've used this particular Mandela effect to show uh, many people to be highly affected, even though they deny the changes, which is fucking still weird to me. That whole dynamic. Yeah, let's go and deny our own reality. That sounds like a good idea because it scares me. I thought I knew what was happening. <laughs> it gets a little deeper than everybody just lied to you about everything, which is huge. That's a big fucking deal. But it gets deeper than that. The lie gets deeper. One of the things I really liked about what Dave said in the show we did the other day, Dave Murphy and I, is when, um, you know, he said that, like, they they using so much energy and getting desperate and throwing so much out there to hide the fact that reality, you know, what they're presenting is a fake reality. And this is like what I've been talking about a lot. It's all so much of it. it this is the, like the one, it's not the only thing, but this is one of the biggest things they absolutely do not want you to know. They've completely, now I don't know 
You know, none of us know what's causing this. I lean towards it's whatever created this realm or whoever created this realm, however you want to look at it. But I've always said I'm open to the possibility that uh, we're making some of the changes. I do think there has to be a, a very intelligent person, deity, whatever, you know, like a god, whatever you want to call it, behind the scenes that has the ultimate knowledge and intelligence to send some of the messages that we get and some of the synchronicities. I don't think that those could be us doing it. Could we be causing other changes? Sure. Um, but and I forgot where I was going with that. I hate when that happens to me. But yeah, some interesting ideas, definitely from Dave. I like his ideas about the um, the <laughs> the Ukrainian fucking NPCs inserted into this reality. I mean, that is not off the table for me. Now, you know, I'm not going to just jump all aboard either because I haven't done any research into it. But that is not off the table for me. The idea of human-looking... Just like us, people in here, just to be obstacles to us, it's not far-fetched. It does seem like that would be a move that would be done. Now, I don't think that cloning is real. I don't agree with that. I, I think that's... I just don't. Um, but you could take a group of young kids or whatever and then, you know, if you had them in state care, psychologically damage them permanently to be like total NPCs for the rest of their life. That like that's something that I, I believe could go down. <clears throat> yeah, I don't believe in cloning. But I and I know, you know, well you believe in NPCs. Yeah, I mean I I lean towards it. I don't think that anybody has the ability to replicate this creation without actually going through like the reproductive cycle. That's my take. I could be wrong on that. But I haven't seen anything concrete to show me that cloning's real. I've seen a lot of claims by people that never seem to turn up with really anything. It always seemed like, uh, seems like disinformation to me. <clears throat> um, so, what else I wanted to show? Let's check this out. Hang on one second. <clears throat> so, uh, all right, yeah, we'll get to we'll get to showing things in a minute. I have more receipts on this reality to show you. People have been helping out and sending me things from their own grocery stores and all over the country. I have more products to show you that are in the POS systems. Exactly the way the Mandela Effect community has said these things have been spelled for years. How does that keep happening if nothing's going on? Why do these articles all come out about Joel Olstein? Why do you remember the Monopoly man with the monocle? Why do you remember Ed McMahon working for Publishers Clearinghouse and delivering giant checks? Because they are all part of reality. And the people trying to tell you that your memory's failing you are trying to gaslight you. They're the ones running the PSYOP. You should trust yourself. We got the fucking coolest thing going, too. We're so fucking... This is a fantastic time for me. I think it's fascinating that physical matter can change while it's in your possession. And it can do it retroactively all the way back through the fabric of time. If time's even a thing. Because is it? Well, when these things are changing, but they're changing not just instantaneously, but retroactively. Well, that raises a lot of questions. But hey, man, who cares if the Monopoly man had a monocle, right? The Mandela effect's just stupid. It's always about little things. Meanwhile, the human anatomy has changed. The Bibles are being supernaturally rewritten, and the land masses of the earth are in the wrong position. Engines are hanging off the front of the fucking commercial airliners. I mean, no big deal. Nothing to see here. These people are just crazy. If they're crazy, then you're crazy because you have the same memory as us. You're not on the outside looking in. You're all experiencing this. You know why? Because 
y'all live here. And it's happening here. And we're all experiencing it. Come on. You all know Richard Simmons wore a headband and did sweat into the oldies. He was iconic for his headband. He's never wore a headband now. You can't find a photo or video of him with one. How many examples will you brush off before you'll say, okay, there's a lot more to this place. This isn't a PSYOP. So many people cover PSYOPs. I spent a lot of time doing it, like fucking years. And when you're somebody that covers these events all the time, you don't miss, you don't put aside the biggest one. You don't put aside 9-11. If you think this Mandela effect is a PSYOP, you should be dedicated to tearing it apart. Everybody's talking about it. Are they all falling for the PSYOP? Is Food Lion just falling from the PSYOP? And Trader Joe's and Walmart and Kroger's? Or maybe shit really is changing and we keep presenting fucking proof of it. Let's have a look at a little more. <clears throat> Bring up my folder here. Give me a second. Excuse me. I did have to reboot, so I'm a little less organized than usual. Again, <clears throat> some of these things I filmed, and just recently, like I've shown other people, and just like before, when other people across the country were going into these stores and buying the Haas avocados on different sides of the country and showing me that the POS systems were printing out, HAAS, even though it's never existed now in this reality, Let's take a look at some more. This is from Sue Finelli, who's a legendary residue hunter. Boom. Again, and Sue, if you're in the chat, could you just tell me what store this is? Because I didn't have this one. She sent me a couple. <laughs> but this one I didn't have labeled with the store. But as you can clearly see there, turmeric. On the barcode thing from this grocery store, and this isn't Food Lion, this is a completely different store. Blue Pac-Man also showed you Food Max, turmeric. I guess they're all just, for whatever reason, misremembering that there's an R right here before the M, and all in unison doing this on this one spice, and, and it also just matches what the Mandela Effect people have been saying all along. <laughs> The PSYOP is the people telling you to not trust your senses. They are the PSYOP. And they might all be NPCs, even if you think that they're truthers. They're going to be NPCs in all walks of life. All right, let's take a look at another one. This is Trader Joe's from Sue Finelli. The legend. Turmeric powder. But as you can see on the barcode. Uh-oh. Houston. We have a problem. Again. Turmeric. One R. Grocery outlet. Sue Finelli. The legend. Brags. It's never been Brags now. It's Brag. Old school Mandela effect. This is a huge one, though. Just a few weeks ago when I went out, Dean and Chris came up here. And um, totally well aware of the Mandela effect, these guys. But he just didn't know about Bragg's and he saw it in like the store on his way here and he was blown away by it because he stopped in the aisle and looked at it and he's like, no. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at this. So, and I forget, I, I don't forget, but I got an email from somebody and I wasn't able to catch their name, but check out this. So you guys are well aware of the, probably the Tostinos. Tostinos have never existed. 
Um, they've always been Totinos now in this reality. And what's interesting is a guy I work with, he, a couple, like I, I've told you guys a story, like a week or two ago, he's like, I got to show you this Mandela effect thing. And he showed me a video on that, on, on Tostinos. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a really old one. But yeah, check this out. Somebody went to Kroger's. Uh-oh, did we do it again? Oh, these Mandela effect people. If only they had some evidence. Kroger's still has it as Tostino's in their computer systems. They also have Haas avocados in their computer systems. Probably turmeric too. Nothing's happening though. <laughs> You just constantly see this motherfucker everywhere with red stripes on his hat. And he's never had stripes on his hat now in this reality. Go look at an Uncle Sam poster. This Max Hedrum, oh, oh this Max Hedrum looking dude. Oh, no, you know what? After a closer look, there is white there. I thought I had residue with the red under the blue there. But we have more. But wait, there's more. <clears throat> Chesiah Cat, we're all mad here. For those that don't know, it's now most everyone's mad here. Maybe that's a clue to the NPCs. And they're the large number of the population, it would certainly seem. And they're mad. <laughs> they're completely out of their fucking minds. We're all mad here. We're all mad here. We can go on and on and on. We can do this all day. We could do this all day with like every Mandela effect ever. <laughs> That's how much fucking evidence we have, homeboy. Let's have a look at some more. Joel Olstein, classic. Daylight savings time, never existed either. Classic. Smokey the Bear. How about American Gothic? Residue of American Gothic, obviously they're making it with different characters. And they're both looking straight forward. Unlike the American Gothic painting now where the woman's looking off to the side. How about this one? This one blows my mind. This is some great residue right here. Bill Haley and the Comets have now always been Bill Haley and his Comets. It was definitely Bill Haley and the motherfucking Comets. It was not Bill Haley and his Comets. But now it's always been Bill Haley and his comments. C three PO nineteen seventy seven. Well, that's weird. That fucking elusive silver paint, man. Why was silver paint so hard to come by in the nineteen seventies and nineteen eighties? <laughs> uh, it cracks me up, man. Cracks me up that people don't want to look at the most fascinating thing that's ever happened in the history of humankind. It's okay. We know that you guys are the NPCs. All gold, baby. All motherfucking gold. Oh, this is a good one. So check this out. I have, I'll show you a video on this. This is a mural painted in Cincinnati to, to honor Kenner because that's their home. C-3PO, all gold. Of course he's all gold. Why would they put a fucking silver leg on him? Nobody remembers the silver leg. Do you think people have gone to Star Wars conventions for years with a fucking silver leg? No. They haven't. <laughs> Fuck me. Let me check this out. Hang on. Let me get into this video. 
Here it is. I should have played. It's pretty hard to first. be downtown or in over the Rhine and not notice those giant murals around. Artwork Cincinnati continues to turn buildings into colorful images. As Local 12's Brad Underwood reports, the summer's final mural might just have something in it for you. Look at the work that goes into this. Oh, they couldn't paint his legs silver though, right? Teachers on, and apprentices man. bring back the memories of some of our favorite toys. I don't know about you, but I loved my Care Bear and I loved my Spirographs. Of course, R2-D2 and C-3PO icons of Star Wars. I was born in 75 and the first toy I remember ever opening was a Star Wars toy. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. I remember when I got my Easy Bake Oven when I was little. I mean, I can find something to love about every element of it. And that's the beauty of the latest mural on Court Street near Race. The 65 foot tall, 127 foot wide creation is that of Jonathan Queens. I think my first color theory was the back of the Play-Doh box where it told you if you mix these colors in this ratio, you'll get this color. And, and the colors mixed together. Pay tribute to Kenner Toys, a legendary Cincinnati toy company founded in 1946. Kind of an incredible presentation up here, isn't it? Corky Steiner's father was one of the founders of Kenner. Seeing the toys larger than life is something that brings back his inner child and hopefully others too. And I can't imagine anybody who was a kid growing up in Cincinnati or as a kid at heart can't walk by this and have some level of identification and some level of of an internal joy saying, I had that, I had that, oh, I wanted to have that, but my mom wouldn't let me. Oh, the play they found that. You just have to do that. And once the scaffolding is down, I bet you'll do it too. Downtown, Brad Underwood, Local 12 News. Artwork Cincinnati expects the mural to be completed next week. The dedication is October 1st. All gold, C3PO, and of course he would be. That is such an obvious Mandela effect. It's so huge for so many of us. Hence the reason, we, I mean, tonight's guest named his channel after that Mandela effect. C-3PO is certainly, at least in my top five, I've even had him as high as in my top three at times. I kind of, I mean, he's right up there with, with Ed McMahon and Mr. Rogers and C-3PO and Black Tom and, and the geography changes. I was a huge Star Wars nerd, guys. Not like a nerd, I was never a nerdy kid. But like I was so, and I know most of us all were into it, but I mean, I watched that fucking movie like 200 times, dude. I was obsessed with those movies. Homeboy did not have a silver leg. Not in my reality. And let's remember, Star Wars is literally like the biggest movie of all time, and the franchise and the whole thing. Like literally, if it's not number one, it's certainly in the top handful. Came out in 1977. But it took about 40 years for people to start asking about this guy's silver leg. 2016? All of a sudden, Anthony Daniels is doing an interview with USA Today about his silver leg. Please don't tell me it's because of definition. Because we had plenty of high definition for many years before 2016, and Star Wars was remastered over into high definition several times before 2016. Whoever they is, certainly know the Mandela effects taking place. Hard to believe, uh, yeah, Dan Aykroyd, his name has two Y's in it now. I see you typing about Dan Aykroyd. Um, not only that, let's remember, see, I don't believe that they have the technology to alter this fabric of reality. I know a lot of people are on board with that. I'm not on board with that. They want you to think that. But the technology that they do have certainly puts them ahead of the game ahead of us as far as picking up on when changes happen, different algorithms pick up different things and all that surveillance and all this, right? 
So that's why you, maybe you didn't see, and I've covered this before, a lot of these big Mandela effects, especially the ones in media, they started covering these before the topic blew up on YouTube. Like, they were trying to cover up the Apollo 13 flip-flop in 2011. Not the flip-flop, but the original change of it. They were coming out, and, and those, those articles calling it a misquote. Houston, we have a problem. Biggest misquote of all time, even though that's what it says again now. <laughs> yeah, those first first ones of those came out in 2011. I did a... The, the Today Show I did a show in like 2000 and something. It was before 2010. And they were out there trying to dismiss a lot of these Mandela effects. They weren't using the term Mandela effect. Of course, they were using the term movie misquote, which is I find hilarious. <clears throat> And I'm not saying that people can't misquote a fucking movie. And I'm certainly not saying that lyrics can't be misheard. Of course that's a thing. But for those people that think the music changes, for instance, are just misheard lyrics, right? Repeatedly, we've shown you what we call the horse's mouth. And we've shown you the people that actually wrote and performed these fucking songs. Singing it the way we're saying it used to be. But it's not that way anymore in their albums. Did they mishear their own lyrics? <laughs> the desperation of the Mandela Effect denier to protect what they think this reality is is mind-boggling. Is my air uh, purifier too loud? Can you guys hear that at all in the background? If you can, I'm gonna shut it off, but if you can't, I'm gonna leave it on. <clears throat> 2024. Denying your own reality and calling this a PSYOP it's just as bad as, like, defending NASA or defending the fucking media. Like, wh wh how far up your ass is your head? People that can't have this type of conversation don't interest me at all anymore. At all. At all. Not that they have to be talking about this all the time. I'll watch people talk about other things, certainly. But if they can't even have a conversation about this ever, if it never comes up in a serious way, like, what do they bring to the table for me? So, I've moved along from a lot of these people. NPC truthers. Mac used to talk about that a lot. We had many conversations about if that was a thing, and I would be like, how could they... And after a while, I started to realize that that could be a thing. Especially when it comes to this, right? Because, well, everything else is about their physical, fake, fucking deception reality that they laid out. Right? All of it. It's all lies. All of it. Like, everywhere you look, it's been a complete lie. This is on a different level, though. They've lied about what reality is. They know that these changes are happening. They're trying desperately to cover it up and distract you from that. But they don't have control over it. They don't have control over it, like their fake space program and their education system and their fucking financial system and everything else. They have control over that. They don't have control over this. So they have to run a sophisticated gatekeeping operation. Most people have fallen for it. They think their senses are failing them. And they've rolled over to this reality. Agents of the system, even though most unknowingly, my opinion, I don't think there's as many shills as everybody says. There certainly are. I mean, look at them all that came out in the last four years. Well, you know, uh, But as far as like in the different truth movements, there definitely are. But most people are just a bunch of people that have different opinions. But although I don't, it's interesting, right? Although I don't think there's as many shills as people think, I think there's actually a bunch of people inserted in these different movements and stuff that might not be people. 
They might not be shuls, they might not even be people. Shipped over on Dave's orphan trains. <laughs> I like that idea, man. Holy shit. I never heard anybody say that. I mean, I've heard about the orphan trains, obviously. I talked about that in like 2018. But the idea that they were used to ship a bunch of NPCs into reality, and I'm like, I'm at the point now where, shit, that's not far-fetched. <laughs> not one bit. Reality's fluid. What if you do think that um, people trying to control the realm desperately... What if, what if you do believe that they could uh, clone NPCs, right? Let's just say, let's play along, even though, like I said, I don't believe that cloning is real. Um, that would absolutely be a fucking move that would be done if you were trying to keep people grounded in this reality, not realize that it's fluid and you just insert tens of thousands or millions or whatever of just complete script zombies that are just going to act as a roadblock everywhere. <laughs> it's a fascinating conversation in my opinion we have to be able to have these conversations can you honestly tell me straight up 100% that there's not NPCs in this reality and I don't just mean highly indoctrinated people I mean people that are here in this place for the, with certain governors on them and specifically here to get in, get in our way It's on the table. There's a whole bunch of shit that's on. Even the shit I fucking don't like, it's on the table. A lot of it. So, like, for me, right, the different timelines and, and, and parallel worlds and stuff like that, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work with the, the stuff we see. The residue, the flip-flops, the incrementals, people's memories are all here, you know. In my opinion... But like some of the other stuff I don't like, I think is obvious. It's obvious that they're pointing you in those directions, like CERN. No, no reason to believe that's anything more than underground NASA. They've always said that. They want you to think CERN is ripping into reality. Oh, you believe CERN's ripping into reality, but you laugh about it when they say they found the God particle. It's all bullshit, man. I don't believe we live in a simulation. I know a lot of people in the Mandela Effect community are, are onto that. But here's the thing. Even though I don't like those ideas and I think that those are part of the PSYOP, the next level after they can't convince you that your memory is just failing, right? And you know that this is happening. They want you to give them credit. That's why people like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse and all the people that lie to us about everything else, from climate change to outer space and everything in between, right? These motherfuckers are pushing that we live in the simulation. However, even though I don't like those ideas, simulation and certain causing changes in reality, those are on the table. I don't like them. I think that they're bullshit. But those are more viable to me than multiple timelines and multiverses and uh, this happened because of time travel and you know, this happened because we went from Sagittarius to Orion. It doesn't make sense to me because of what we see in this reality. Now, like I've always said, as long as, as someone I respect, you know, and I think they can bring a lot to the table, I'd love to hear their different views that are different than mine. Like when I had Svetlana on and she went on about how we're living inside of a hologram. Very interesting conversation. Then right after that, I had Adam Walton on. I know he's a big simulation guy. I knew Dave probably thought quantum computers was involved in this somehow, but I definitely wanted to talk to Dave and hear his views. And we got a lot of fascinating stuff from him. Because again, I don't know what's causing this. C-3PO doesn't know what's causing this. Moneybags doesn't know what's causing this. We all have ideas and certainly things that we lean to. I'm sure all of us do. But we really don't know. The best we can do is when talking about 
theories and stuff, just be very open with each other. Now, when it comes to things I'm not keen on being too loud, loosey-goosey with, it's the presentation of Mandela effects and people presenting what a not Mandela effects, bad Mandela effects, shit like that. That's the shit I can't get on board with. We need to have discernment in everything we look at. I don't want to spread shit and then make, make it look like, oh, this is something fucking silly, right? Because it's not silly. It is fun as fuck, though. I have a great time, man. Because you can just fuck with people, right? <laughs> hey, sing me the Mr. Rogers song. They'll be like, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for it. And you're like, no, man, that's never said that. <laughs> and, and you can do it all day because everybody's so Mandela affected. <laughs> I think it's a fucking fabulous idea. I'm going to show a few more things and I'm going to bring C3PO on. You appreciate the stream, consider a super chat. Thank you very much. That is how I'm able to do this uh, and not have to pick up even more work. Um, also, I am gonna let members come on a little later on. So anybody that's a member of mine on Kofi or Patreon, when I'm ready for you, I'm gonna email you all a Zoom link as well. And you can join me in C3PO and we're gonna make this a big open panel conversation tonight. Well, open as far as the members. But we're going to stream everywhere. We're not dropping it to a member stream or anything. I'm just saying those are the people are going to be able to come on on Zoom. <clears throat> All right. Let's look at a couple more things real quick. <clears throat> Check out a couple more videos. Uh, okay. Uh, 13 uh, minutes and 30 uh, seconds. Like, I've been getting a lot of clips from this show, man. This guy's highly Mandela affected this Jimmy Dory show. I've never watched that show. I can't watch any of these guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just, I'm not going to watch guys that are covering shit like this. Like, that's, we're just like so far past that. I know some of you guys like that shit, but I'm not putting any energy on the fakest aspects of this fucking system. Right? I'm not going to watch fucking Putin and fucking Tucker Carlson have a conversation. Like, I'd rather go staple my fucking prick to the side of the house. Thirteen minutes and thirty seconds. Sorry, I was looking for the timestamp. And this is one that I am affected by for sure. Talked about this many years ago. I'm going to be honest. Tucker's sitting there going, well, come on. He's a kid. He's 32 years old. Oh, yeah. The intelligence agency would never use a kid in his 30s. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they, Wall I, they, they, they have a long history of using Peace Corps members and just out of college. So. They use Julia Childs. Yeah, that's not an argument. Julia Childs. It's never existed anymore. She lost the S on her name. Julia Child. Now in this reality. And on that note, I am going to go ahead and see 3 po and send you the link. Give me one second, guys. I just need to grab it here, and I'm going to text it to you, Mark. That's going to be the easiest way. So sorry if you need to copy and paste it and send it to yourself or something. Um, it's just the easiest way for me right now. Boom, I sent you the Zoom link. So c 3 po is going to be joining me. Let's take a look at the chat. I haven't seen the chat in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, almost 200 people here. Yeah, and, and there were over uh, 300 people here uh, for pretty much the entire show with Dave, which was good to see. See my channel start to get uh, some of those views back up there again. Of course, YouTube deleted half of the views when it was done. Like, when it ended, it had 1,300 views right when it ended, and then it just said 500. It's like, they just keep doing that. But I know I'm not the only channel that they do it to. They just fucking suck, dude. <laughs> Again, so if you're somebody that's new to my content, please make sure you follow me on other platforms because I don't just talk about the Mandela effect. I get very deep on other things, too. Uh, in fact, I get very deep on 9-11. And I'll be doing a 9-11 show on Jesse Howell, The Missing Link, uh, next month, about a, right about four or five weeks from now. 
I forget the exact date. It's in my calendar, though. I'm going to be on his show uh, to go deep into the 9-11 media hoax. A lot deeper than you've seen anyone else go, most likely. Even people that will tell you no planes. It gets very deep. Let's remember, they lied about everything, and not only did they lie, well, they didn't go even halfway to the fucking moon, right? They never fucking dropped a nuke on anybody. They told us people were dropping dead in the streets. Yet I didn't hear an ambulance for 18 months. Every medical building I went to was completely empty and I took 15 flights in a row without covering my face and filmed it for everybody. And I'm fine. They lied to us about all of it to its core. Same goes 9-11. And it's such a big deal. I don't want to go too far into it right now. But because of that event, now truth is we're going to push fear anyways. But because of 9-11, it, I mean, it's so intensified and multiplied because of all the, the, the bullshit things that they push to validify thousands of people getting crushed underneath buildings uh, when they showed up to work one day. That's not how this reality works. Look at the last four years. Now, for years, I've been hearing how the military is going to roll through the streets and they're going to kick in the door and they're going to stick something in me and pop, 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 pop. But what really happened? People consented to that stuff. Either they did or they didn't. Most did. Now, they were certainly deceived into it, but nobody was held down. That's how this reality works. Sorry, the government didn't drop buildings on the heads of thousands of people. Nothing leaked from a lab in, in China and then was mishandled. They didn't mutate the virus like that bullshit fake undercover video with that Veritas guy and the, and the, the Pfizer guy and the whole fucking scene. This is a scripted reality. The best you can do is laugh at it. Because it is kind of fucking funny. Especially looking back at all the shit we used to believe. Listen to these astronauts talk. They talk like they're talking to you like you're a little child. They mock you. Getting off track here. Mark, I don't know if you're there. Uh, let me go check on Zoom. He might be backstage. No, he's not here yet. I texted you the link. Oh, hold on. I think he texted me. Okay, he'll be here in a couple minutes. But anyways, I don't want to go too far down that road and get this stream in trouble tonight. I'll be laying out that day in September in depth on Jesse's show. I told him I need at least three hours um, at a minimum. <laughs> he said he'll block me off for four hours. So I'll let you guys all know when that's going to go down. It's always good to get back into that because not living in fear is one of the most important things you could do. That is like how you are manipulated. Fear and division, but fear even more than division. There are a lot of people that can ignore the division, most of the division brainwashing, um, but can't get out of the fear. Of all the, and, and it's not anybody's fucking fault for being an idiot or anything. It's going to take you to realize that something you've always believed in was complete bullshit. It doesn't have to be the same journey I went on. But everywhere I looked... I didn't see false flags. No, I guess I did see false flags because false flag is a broad term. They were false flags, sure, but more specifically, they were completely fabricated events, even down to the ground that you stand on and where they say we are in the universe.
that's how deep it goes, right? But it goes even deep. Do you think it stops there? They lied to us about what reality is, what time is, what's possible with physical matter. We've been lied to about that. That's what I'm talking about on this channel. It's important stuff. And it continues to take place. A lot of people think like, uh, we, how are the young ones gonna know? Because everything's already gonna be changed for them. Like it's always been the wolf for these kids that are born now instead of the lion and the lamb, right? And stuff like that. And definitely that makes sense to a point, but we know that these changes continue to happen. So they're gonna have their other own Mandela effects that they're gonna grow up with. They've already had some. A lot of young people know about this. I work with a lot of young people too. Like for me, they're young. I mean, a lot of these people that work in, the, in that I end up having conversation with, I mean, they're in their 20s. I'm in my 40s. That's young people to me. People that are born after 2000 now are fucking old enough to drink. <laughs> Shit, I'm getting old. <laughs> but I'm saying most of these people know about the Mandela effect. And, and a good amount of them not only will say, yeah, I know, like, and, you know, sometimes you can't really gauge, you know, if they might have just heard the term, never really looked at it at all. Um, but a lot of people instantly spit out one at me like, I know Chick-fil-A didn't have a fucking K. And like I said, I was just told that tons of people are talking about our presentation down in Mexico. So that's good. I'm so glad. And thank you, Sheba, for including me in that. Sheba was the one that was originally asked to do it. Very much appreciated. Invalid meeting ID, C3PO? All right, let me try and get another link to you. Hang on. That's weird. All right, I'm going to send it to you again. Uh, shit, I'm going to email it to you, Mark, because now I'm grabbing it on my desktop. Give me a second. Don't anybody go anyway. I'm just sending a link to C3PO. And thank you, Ashley, new member, $10 tier. Thank you. And when I let the members on, I will send you a Zoom link and you can join the show. Much appreciated. C3PO, Zoom, 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 Zoom. Let's go back to my room. So we can do it all night, and you can make me feel right. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to my room. You guys remember that shit? <laughs> it's pretty cheesy, but that shit was cool. <laughs> the 80s had some fucked up music. <clears throat> yeah, the Chick-fil-A one has endless amounts of residue, some great residue. Like I said, people do these reviews on chicken sandwiches. They go to Chick-fil-A. They make these dramatic videos about it, and they spell it C-H-I-C. -C. Houston, we have a problem. Reality, we have a problem. Imagine walking by, like, an auto mall, like a bunch of auto dealerships, and seeing all these Mandela-affected logos, um, especially the Ford and the Volkswagen. I think everybody can see that those are different, even the people that deny this, right? Imagine seeing the, all this shit and like all these Uncle Sam and just ignoring it and just be like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. It's just a psyop you're falling for. No, you have become the psyop. You need to look in the spiegeling, spiegeling, motherfucker. Why is it just obscure things? <laughs> That's always one of the good ones. And let me check if C3PO is backstage. Where you at? Here he is. I'll put my camera back on too. He's coming, guys. He's lost and signing in right now. I didn't give Facebook a shout out earlier. I forgot. And the Colonel was over there. Nathan Sanders. Where you at, homeboy? We're waiting for you. You could come on tonight if you want. I think that'd be fantastic. I know fucking C-3PO would be down with that. But we have Melissa Jean Lara over there. Gary Adriano. 
Mark Fewing, System Failure, Colleen Cohen, Steve Bowen, and Jeff Zanzibar, all over on Facebook. And we have now on the screen with me, Mr. C3PL's Golden Calf. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you, buddy. What's going on? Awesome. <laughs> I was, just got a new phone because I was having a lot of like tech issues, so I was due for one anyway. What do you think about how everybody all around the country is just going to grocery stores and sending me fucking receipts and shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean... It's so uh, obvious. <laughs> yeah, so completely obvious, man. And if Nathan's li listening, let's go, Nathan. Hop on here with us. Um, but Mark oh, wanted to... Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know we're going to get into uh, a personal thing with you, but anything you want to comment on before we go in that direction about anything that I've said tonight or shown? Uh, yeah, I was listening. I was just uh, getting some stuff together. Um, yeah, I, I actually think that idea that you were talking about with Dave Murphy is uh, it's something I've thought about. It's obviously something that we can't really, you know, 100% prove, but I just find that very suspicious with all the orphan trains. And, um, like, I've been following John Levi's channel for a long time, and he shows a lot of photos of, like, them just kind of populating all these empty cities like San Francisco and Chicago and there's all these people wearing like, you know, all black suits and all black dresses and they have umbrellas and they're just like laying around on the beach, like in uh -huh. dresses and suits. And it's, it's, it's just like, who are these people? They're almost like these like clay golems or something that were just kind of like, you know, manifested, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a strange situation. It doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, definitely some interesting ideas. Um, so you have a personal story that you wanted to talk about tonight. So why don't we just get right into that and uh, we'll chop it up for a bit and then we'll start to bring some other people on. Sure. Uh, well, uh, I do a, a side business of selling old media. So I have like a ton of like 80s, uh, you know, VHS tapes and laser discs and posters and all kinds of stuff. Um, so I was putting together a box of like these old horror movies to sell them. And um, I'm curious, like, if anyone in the chat has ever heard of this movie, it's called The Manito, uh, M-A-N-I-T-O-U. And I'll actually show you the tape if you could see it. So this is what the tape looks like. Yeah. And um, I was holding this in my hand just the other day, and the A was just like a normal A. Um, it was just, you know in the same font, you know, same color, just looks, looked the same. And then the next day I picked it up and it had this crazy looking X with the, uh, it still has the bottom of the A kind of, but, um, it had like these, uh, you know, these like electrical shocks coming out of it. And I think it's like something with the twin pillars again, cause that's one of the biggest messages of the Mandela effect. Um, but yeah, this, this changed and I, you know, I, it's like a personal change for me. Cause like, who's, who's even like heard of this rare movie? And um, it's got like a really iconic looking poster too. And it's got like the fire and ice colors too, which is really big right now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I didn't know what the word Manito meant. So I looked it up and it's a Native American uh, like entity. And if, if you put the, a lot of the meanings together, it basically means um, a mysterious entity or being who can control nature or the environment. So, uh, I mean, it, I think it's like a really powerful message. Wow, that is pretty big, man. And, so and different than the day before. Yeah, that is uh, like you said, you're you're really into that, so you're paying attention to these fonts on on all these movies. You have a side thing. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? You sell uh, old vintage uh, horror movies or something? You said. Yeah, uh, well, my main job is like uh, freelance, um, you know, videography, photography, editing, stuff like that. And then because um, the money's, you know, kind of here and there with it. So I do a side job where I uh, I accumulated like a ton of old media um, between like five and ten years ago. And uh, it's gone up a lot in value. So I've been selling it. Um, and that's kind of just like a side hustle, like, you know, eBay and, and those types of uh, websites. So uh I, I, yeah, like I had it in my hand, like I was like, you know, and, and a lot of the artwork is really awesome for these old VHS tapes. So, uh, you know, I, I carefully noticed it and I thought it was cool looking and I had seen it before too. Um, it's one that I've noticed. I, I... 
Uh oh. Mark just froze up. You there? Oh, did I? All right, you're back now. Uh, don't make us question it if you don't make us question if you're a Ukrainian orphan. <laughs> or like, <laughs> a, a Ukrainian like uh, MK Ultra or something. Ukrainian fucking cloned uh, orphan NPC. If you glitch out again, we're gonna have to <laughs> fucking pull that card on you. <laughs> So I'm like curious if anyone's even heard of that movie because like I know that it was around about five years ago, but like I never heard of it before, you know, 2015. And it also might be a thing where the word the was uh, put in the front of the title because that happens a lot. I'm not like 100% sure on that. I remember it just saying Manito at the top, not the Manito, but the A to the X change was like really something. Yeah, Very so, uh, again, that would make you probably, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it would probably make you lean towards that there's something intelligent, for sure, sending uh, communication to you by way of the Mandela effect, right? Uh, yeah, it, whatever, I mean, like, I think it's God. I mean, I, I know it's God as much as I can know anything. We live in a world where we can't be 100% sure about anything except that we exist. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I know it's God doing it, and... You know, like, it, it's like he can see, he knows, like, everything. He knows, like, where every atom is in the whole world at all times, you know. So he knew that I was observing that tape and that I would observe it again the next day. And the change was made. And, and the change, the meaning of the change is literally about a uh, being who has control over reality. And, like, I understand it's like a horror movie and it looks kind of creepy. Uh, I understand where some people are coming from when they think it's the devil doing it. Um, and I actually originally thought it was God and the devil doing it. Uh, but I kind of, I lean more towards it's just God now. Um, because I, I feel like it's it's like a puzzle that's meant for us to solve. And it would be too confusing if there was, like, one side putting in the truth and then one side putting in lies. Like, that would, it's, it's already, like, confusing and difficult enough for us to solve. So I, I just feel like that's not what's going on. But, like, as far as, like, a lot of, like, horror movies and things changing, I mean, we live in, like, a nightmare world. You know, I think that's part of the issue. That, um, you know, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, like, it, it, the movie It has a bunch of changes. Uh, I mean, there's a nightmare on Elm Street. Actually, uh if it's cool with you, um, I pulled a bunch of stuff out of my inventory that is, it's like physical inventory that changed while I owned it. Yo, yeah, yeah, dude. Let's, something... let's get into it. That's um, cool. So, you're familiar with uh, laser discs, right? Oh, yeah. And let me say thank you to Kimo Sabi, who also just signed up for a subscription. And uh, you will be sent a Zoom link as well uh, later on when we get some people up here. But yeah, of course, I know what laser disc is. It never, it, it's a, uh, uh, before DVDs, Laserdisc were a thing, but they didn't uh, fare too well against VHS. Yeah. Um, so, uh, since I had so much stuff in my inventory, I I've did kind of an experiment um, that I started maybe like a year ago, and I haven't even talked about this until right now, um, but I just put a bunch of stuff up on my walls in like this editing room that I have. Um, so like, you can see like a bunch of stuff behind me, but like the whole room has like stuff all over it. Um, so I figured, you know, if things are changing, then, you know, the more stuff I put around and the more stuff I'm looking at, plus, you know, it's nice to decorate the room a bit, but yeah. I, I, I always notice the stuff. So like, I noticed, I've noticed a lot of changes just because of that. So like one of the changes actually was, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. So mm -hmm. like, this is the Nightmare on Elm Street laser disc. And, uh, I had it on my wall and I don't know if you could see it, but like the, um, the title is now like a lot like blockier and like the H and the A, like it's very difficult to even read the the name. It nightmare. really is, yeah. That looks really uh, much more difficult than it was. And I had this on my wall, and I always thought it was like a cool logo, and now it doesn't look cool. Like it, it looks like difficult <laughs> to read. So that like, movie totally has a huge. Well. That movie has a huge change too that we should bring up again too. Like uh, you know, in Nightmare on Elm Street in the first yeah, movie, now the, I mean, the door is blue now, and it was always red. Now it's still red in all the sequels, but it's blue in the original now, and it looks completely ridiculous. That one's huge. Yeah, that's a huge one, and I think it, it's very significant about what it means too. Like instead of a red door, we want to have a blue door to get out of the nightmare world that we're in. 
but and also like uh freddy's uh blades um he used to have five blades on his hand and now he has four he doesn't have the thumb anymore i'm not actually sure what that oh, means yet he actually um, doesn't have the really uh yeah he in the original he also doesn't have the stripes on his sleeve anymore they're only on the front and back of the yeah, sweater now yeah yeah i have a video on that i did and a long i think time that's ago. another uh I think that one's like another uh, two pillar change because um, our arms are like the pillars. So like he's showing that like he's the guy with the blades, which are like the uh, needles and he's got two red pillars. So that's like a, a left pillar takeover because the left pillar is the red pillar. If you look at it that, like if you look at it like a color spectrum, the red would be left and green is on the right and then yellow and blue are in the middle. What do you think about the whole um, night, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors and what Dave was talking about and what I brought up about as far as, uh, I know we're getting off Mandela for a minute, but what do you think about uh, pulling people into dreams? You think we can do that? I think that we can do that. Uh, I, I think it's certainly on the table. I mean, I haven't experienced anything like that, but it is in a lot of like fiction works. And usually the stuff they talk about in fiction is something that either we can do or maybe we'll be able to do in the future. Um, I, you know, to be honest, like, I think we're kind of in a shared dream right now. I, th I think this world is like a dream <laughs> or, or a nightmare, maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd say a dream. Like I'm not having a nightmare. If you if people again, that's why I love the Mandela effect. It's teaching us to not be tied to this bullshit and, and especially all the fear and nonsense that they push and things they do to keep you get with your nerves. You know, I think this place is great. I'm having I'm having a beautiful life but i know some people are miserable but almost all those people not all some people are in some you know really bad situations but almost all the people that are miserable also live in fear well uh for me i mean i don't want to get into it right now uh, we could maybe some other time but like i've been sick for a long time so when you're like chronically ill like it sucks it's a it's like a nightmare <laughs> so yeah, I would bet that that's tough. That's the thing I'm talking about. Some people are put in a situation like, you know, that, that would be one that would be really tough. Um, so did you have some uh, things you wanted to present you were saying about the Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah, I got a, a few more. Um, this one I've shown before, not, not the physical copy, but like this is the Blade Runner tape or a yeah. laser disc, I mean. And um, the uh, L and the A merged on that. It definitely wasn't like that in the past. And uh, an interesting thing, too, is so you've heard of laser discs, um, but have you ever heard of CEDs? CEDs? Yeah. No, nah, man, I've never heard of that. So, like, no one's ever, like, heard of these CEDs, um, you know, buying and selling all this media. I, I've come across a, a, a bunch of them. Um, but, like, I don't think they existed in the past, but... So, like, this is an example of a CED. It's like a laser. It was like a competitor to Laserdisc. And it's actually pretty cool because it's got, it's like a framed, you know, artwork almost. Um, and then, like, the, the, disc, the disc comes out of here and goes into the player. But uh, this is one that changed after I acquired it. Um, you can see the R and the A in uh, Dracula merged. Yep. And it wasn't like that when I first got it. And then this one's really crazy. Um, this is a Wizard of Oz CED. Like, look at like all the offshoots of the letters. Look like, at that F, dude. Like... That F is wild. On all of. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it wasn't like that at all when I first got it. I had it on my wall, and all of a sudden I looked at it, and it just changed like this. And that movie, uh, can you speak on it for a minute? Because that has a ton of Mandela effects, and I think uh, there's so many new people to my channel. Uh, we should probably touch on those for a minute. I mean, that's a huge Mandela affected movie. Yeah, um, I, I think several of the fonts and titles for it have changed. And uh, you've got the um, Scarecrow. He's got a black hat now instead of like a brown hat. Uh, the Tin Man, um, he's got like a bow tie now. He's got like a third eye. Um, like there's like a silver spot or a white spot on his third eye. And what's interesting too is Tin, I think, is uh, Jupiter. So that actually would be appropriate for the third eye stuff. Um, and then, of course, the scarecrow with his gun, um, the Wicked Witch, she no longer says fly, my pretties fly. Like, it's, it's right up there with Star Wars and Back to the Future. Um, and Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain now instead of the man behind the curtain. 
Yeah, and that implies uh, two people behind the curtain at least. Yep, exactly. So, uh, actually, I was talking to Nathan before um, we were talking about the. Uh, he he actually brought up the uh, father um, quote. Is like um, denouncing some people for he's saying like you know you're not of my father you're of your father the devil so that implies that there's um, two fathers. Uh, and I think it's like a light father and a dark father or like a white father and a black father, like spiritually light speaking. Um, and I think that's mentioned really in the Mandela effect because there's a few things. Um, you know, the Tata Motors change. Tata Motors. What the fuck is Tata Motors? I uh, don't even know what that is. That's a company, a car company. Yeah, it's a it's an Indian car company. No, tell me about um, it. I know nothing about this change. And if you want yeah, to show so, uh, something on screen, take a screen share anytime you want. Okay. Um, I, I can't do a screen share because I'm on my phone, or at least I don't know how to do it on my phone. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But I don't have it. something. I mean, you could, if you wanted to pull up a logo for Tata Motors, because it, 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 it's uh, one of the Lambda changes. So yeah, the two A's are now, they're now Lambdas. And um, if you... Uh, Look up what Tata means in Indian because it's an Indian company. The the word Tata means father, and I think that the lambdas uh, mean mountain. How am I so spelling Tata? How am I spelling Tata? T A T A. Yes. So I think the lambda changes are referring to mountains, and it's like the Twin Peaks under the dome, like the show uh, Twin Peaks. So, like, one father is, like, the white mountain and the other father is, like, the black mountain. So, yeah. So, it's, like, two lambdas. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I'm not familiar with this at all, but um, that's good that you brought it up because, again, it's not just American, you know? And I'm sure, yeah, dude, exactly. India, India is huge, too. Like, India's got a huge, you know, like, uh, movies and, like, their own Hollywood and music and all this, and we don't see any of that. Like, I'm sure there's tons of Mandela effects over there. Yeah, I bet the Bollywood movies have Mandela effects for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that that's like referring to two fathers. And then there's, uh, you know, the Mont Blanc change, Mont Blanc. No, what's that one? Um, it's, I think they're like a French watch company. So, again, this is like a French company. If you want to uh, type that into it's uh, M-O-N-T um, space B-L-A-N-C. And maybe you put like logo. So that's another uh, lambda change. And there's residue for these changes too. It's not just like saying it for the sake of saying it. Um, but if you look that up in France, uh, it means white mountain. Um, and also, uh, it's the it refers to the tallest mountain in France as well. Mm -hmm. So, like the, the lambda changes are are usually or almost, I think, always referring to a mountain. And I actually discovered another change just recently. I don't think anyone else has discovered this change yet, but um, I could show it to you uh, if you put me back on screen. There you go. Okay. So uh, this is my copy. Have you ever heard of the uh, video game uh, Twisted Metal? Oh, yeah. I used to have it for a PlayStation 1, I think, one of the earlier versions of it. Oh, I think that's when it came out. might have been PS2. Um, do you remember the Twisted Metal Black? Yep. version i do not um, so like this, not this not like it. i'm gonna remember everything in it but i do remember the game sure um so this is my this is actually my copy from like 2000 or whenever it came out and uh look at the a in metal oh wow so i don't think anyone's even seen that yet no but it definitely I... wasn't like it wasn't like that <laughs> Um, but there, so that's like a twisted black mountain, you know, made of metal, you know, so I think that refers to like Rupus Nigra, the mountain, uh, at the North pole, cause the, the left pillar would be black, but it's also, um, North cause, uh, the cardinal directions are a little flip symbolically. So like East is up, West is down, North is left and South is right. So that's why like with the, um, with nine 11, the twin towers, the North tower is the, like the left pillar and the South tower is the right pillar. And that's why the North tower has the, uh, 110 meter, uh, needle on top. It's because mm -hmm. the needle is associated with the left and it's yeah. also like double, 
because like each tower was 110 stories so 110 plus 110 that's like that like makes the double for the left pillar it sounds complicated but it actually it all fits into the same twin towers symbology yeah that's wild man that twisted metal fucking font is crazy looking and this is, yeah. if, again, for people that might be new, I mean, this is a uh, same thing with the Kia logo, obviously, the A is a lambda. Uh, this is something we've been seeing for years now with the Mandela effect is we are picking up on certain patterns. And uh, the lambda is definitely one of them, the people missing and gaining L's, uh, mostly losing, uh, gaining L's in their names and S's and I's and E's being swapped around and IE's and Y's being swapped around. Do, do you know what Kia means off the top of your head? No, do you? What is it? I'm assuming you do. Yeah, well, yeah, cool. I, I made a video about all the mountain uh, symbolism, but the, the word Kia means mountain. Wow. So I'm just saying, like, like it, it is a lambda, but an old, like, the symbol for a mountain was a lambda, like, way before the Greek language, you know? So I, I think it, it goes back to that original symbol of a, a mountain. Mm-hmm. A lot of people. And have there's two. more too. Uh, more what? Like a space mountain. Like like a space mountain. That's another one that has lambdas. Where else have you noticed it? Uh, what are some of the other more noticeable lambdas for you? Uh, Samsung. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that's definitely a big one. Um, let's see. I'm not 100% sure on these because I wasn't familiar with them, but there's movies called Atlantis and there's a show called Stargate Atlantis. Um, I think that those are Mandela effects that changed to lambdas, but I've I've heard mixed reviews from some yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. If you're not sure, you're not sure, you know. That's what's... So, that's I do what's... think Atlantis... Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I do think Atlantis refers to the North Pole, so... Uh... Well, I was just going to say that. I mean, are these lambdas pointing us towards uh, Mount Nauru? Is this like a map being laid out by the Mandela effect? I think so. Seems kind of like it. Because, uh, well, actually, another really interesting one that isn't a lambda, but it has to do with the name, the meaning of a name is uh, Stouffer's stovetop. Because um, when Armageddon happens, um, if you think the Earth is flat then and, and like a disk, then it's going to resemble a uh, stovetop. Um, so the word Stouffer's or the name Stouffer's actually means, um, something like steep cliff, like, like a tall mountain. So it's, it's like, um, God saying that the, the people at the tallest mountain will be removed from the stovetop, like when Armageddon happens. Well, that's an interesting one. I've never heard any type of meaning attached to the Stouffer's stovetop stuffing, but I certainly know that Stouffer's stovetop stuffing existed. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's a huge yeah, one for me. Uh, the grocery store is That's just, a huge one for me, yeah. Yeah the, it, yeah, the grocery store is just gigantic with Mandela Effect. It's crazy. And I love how people are showing all these receipts for all these different places. I think it's fantastic, and I can't wait to lock 100 people in there. <laughs> 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 you know? Yeah, the grocery store stuff that people have been gathering is great. Um, it's so obvious. I mean, like, I don't know how people, you know, deny it. Like, yeah, what other type of evidence do you want to finally admit that this has taken place? Like, and we don't need these receipts. Like, we know, and we, we wouldn't need a single receipt, just the fact that we all remember it was Haas Avocados, Haas with the two A's, and, like, we don't even need these receipts. But now we'll, we've got receipts from all different huge grocers on turmeric and Haas Avocados and Tostinos, and it's like, how does this keep happening if nothing's changing? I mean, it's so obvious, man. We have so much evidence and so much pretty hardcore evidence, you know? So, yeah, some of it's not all the best, of course, but there's some stuff that's really significant. Well, I, I mean, I think we're getting towards the end of whatever is going on here, like it's towards the end of the world script, but people can follow suit with what I did. Like, just put a st bunch of stuff around you and uh, it'll change. You know, like as far as my experiment went, like like I could show you a lot more stuff too. Like it, it, it's it's pretty incredible. Like like one day you walk by it and it, and it shows something, and then the next day it's it's literally different. Like uh, uh when I acquired this uh, NES game, 
it didn't look like this. Mm -hmm. Like that looks so crazy. <laughs> you can't even like read it. Yeah, that is wild, dude. <coughs> There's just no way. Um, when I got this, this is like for the Japanese system. It didn't have the two G's together like that. What I think is really like, interesting I, I, is some of these changes within the video games. And I just, you know, oh, I, stopped, yeah. I stopped playing games like a decade ago, more than that. I used to be really into them, but this is something I would have been uh, all over if I was still playing these games. I think that Call of Duty one that they talk about is really interesting with the sign, the yellow sign. Because yeah, in, well, the uh, way it's described, even though I don't know the map or anything like that, it certainly seems like that's a legit Mandela effect. And it's a huge game. I mean, we know it's gigantic, you know? There, there's a lot to that, too. And there, there's a ton of evidence because uh, a lot of gamers go crazy over that. And um, I've never played that game specifically myself, but you could see other people just absolutely, you know, saying 100% there was never a sign there. And, like, I know what they mean because you play that game over and over again, you know, um, they, they even specifically remember that where that sign is was like a spot where you could throw your hand grenade um, mm -hmm. and hit the other team. But now you wouldn't be able to throw your hand grenade there because the sign would block it. So yep. like that's like a um, big an anchor. anchor memory. Big anchor, yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, so the name of the game, because I, I think that there's messages just intertwined into all of these changes. Do you so know the, the name, name of the, of the map? Do you know the name of the map? So people in the chat want to know. I forget the name of the map. Yeah, I think it's called Standoff. Okay, there you go. Um, but also, think about the name of the game. It's called Call of Duty. And I think the Mandela effect is like a Call of Duty. Oh, yeah, dude. And then it's also, <laughs> yeah, and it's also called Black Ops 2. And um, like Black Operations, like I think that somehow we went from like the white world to like the mirror black world. And then the two, it looks like the Twin Towers. Like if you look at the you know, cover of it. Yeah. And then uh, on top of that, um, uh, you can look at the meaning of the sign because I think it's in Russian. So uh, I translated what the meaning is in Google Translate and it's a fallout shelter. It says like, get to the nearest fallout shelter as soon as possible. Something, something like that. <laughs> wow, dude. And I am going to so go ahead other, like, and uh, I'm just um, right now. I'm just sending out a message to everybody with the Zoom link. Everybody that's a member is going to be able to join the panel in just a few minutes. So keep keep talking, okay. Mark. I'm listening. If I just seem like I'm not responding for one second, sure. it's just because I'm typing this into a couple sites. So yeah, anyone who's interested in like solving the Mandela effect, like we are, um, I recommend you know all like wh whatever names pop up, um, look up what the names mean because. Uh, there's always something significant in what the names mean. Um, and also, you know, every aspect of it, you know, look it up. Like, like if, like in the call of duty thing, a lot of people just say like, Oh, that's a Mandela effect. Um, let's just stop there. But no, it's like, well, what language is it in? You know, what does it say? You know, like what's the name of the map? What's the name of the game? You know, like the more you pry into each effect, the more meaning comes out. And then the more meaning that you understand and know, the more everything connects together into one script, one story. Um, I, while you're doing that, I could show a few more things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'll be done in one minute. I'm just, I already sent it out. If you're on Kofi, you have an email now, guys, with the Zoom link. Just open your email, click the Zoom link, and come join the show. And I'm doing Patreon right now. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. It'll just take me another minute. Sorry about that. Oh, no worries. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see that. This is the Metal Gear Solid Five game. And it has a big uh, V on the front. And, and this game's loaded with uh, predictive programming and all that kind of stuff. Um, Hideo Kojima, he's like the Stanley Kubrick of video games. Um, but that V on the cover, and you guys could look it up for yourself. I know it didn't really come out too clear because of the plastic. Um, but it used to be a solid V, and now the bottom of it has a portion of it taken out. And that's like my copy that I got in like 2015 or 2016. So it, it definitely was just a V, like for, for a 5, because it was Metal Gear Solid 5. Yeah, and that's a very popular game. Have you seen these, Brian? I'm sure you're familiar with Short Circuit. Um, look at this. Look how the 
logo is now. It's crazy. Wow. Yeah, I definitely don't remember seeing it like that. And I've seen Show Circuit many times. And I, I think this is like the first VHS tape of it. So like, there's no way. Like, uh, like when I had this, I've had this tape for a while. Like, it's just been in a, a pile of tapes. Um, and it's, it just it didn't look like that. It's crazy. And then Short Circuit too looks weird too. So those changed. Hey, sure. Laser Lips, your mama was a snowblower. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, thought you, yeah. I thought you were talking to someone who just joined. No, no, I was quoting Johnny Five when he's taunting those other robots <laughs> and shit. He's like, hey, Laser Lips, your mama was a snowblower. I used to love that shit. This one's a, a pretty crazy one. Um, it's another, like... Uh, like B movie that people probably haven't heard of, but it's a definite change when you look at the logo. So it's called the Perils of Gwendolyn, and you can see the the the. See, like the H and the E are merged. Yep, it might be tough to see. Yeah, I see. But like this has a whole bunch of merging going on, and um, it's not something I'm super familiar with. I haven't seen the movie, but. To have the H and the E merged like that, there's no way um, anything would ever be made like that. So uh, it's like it's just a definite Mandela effect because that that's a pattern. Like um, we were talking about, like that Gorillas in the Mist uh, book. There's a few others where the H and the E are merged together, and you, you just never would do that. Oh, speaking of lambdas, this is a new one. This movie is called Star Crystal. And uh, I have a couple of these tapes. Um, it, it just wasn't like that. No way. It, it was just uh, A's in that font. So it's another Lambda change. And the, the cover is like a big all-seeing eye. <laughs> wow. No, so I think some people saying they didn't get the link. I sent it. Ch check now, uh, anybody. It should be in your email, uh, everybody that gets the Patreon or the Kofi. Um, you guys should have a Zoom link now. And uh, so stars are a big pattern too. Like we see like the Converse all-star change. It goes from like, um, it's like a mirrored version. It was on the outside of the shoe, now it's on the inside. The uh, star in the middle of Top Gun, um, now it's like at the bottom of the logo and it definitely wasn't like that. And then, like, that Star Crystal movie, and then this one also, it's, it's called Star Crash. The stars um, all staggered the on the American flag. Yeah, that's another one, too. And uh, this, this logo just was not like that. This is what the whole cover looks like. But, yeah, it, it didn't have the pointed A. Like, it just looks crazy. It's not the way it looked. So there's a lot going on with the word star. I'm going to read a super chat, pushing buttons, 62 says, hey guys, I'm really amazed by C3PO Golden Cap break down these Emmys. You guys are the best, $25 super chat. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, people well, really, thanks, man, enjoy, I, awesome. I, I really enjoy the way you uh, break down some of these changes. It gets pretty deep and I really enjoy it. And I know people really enjoy the, the style of videos that you do. It's been really cool. Well, I'm happy to do it. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so fascinating. You know, I wish... The whole world, you know, could talk about this. Do you think that, uh, I mean, what do you think? Do you Because there's some people that can see a lot of things and they can get through a lot of, like, deceptions and things like that. But they just, no matter what, are just anti-Mandel effect, can't see it. We show they're affected. Do you think there's actually something physical in there? Do you think they might have, like, a governor? Or do you think... Um, Kind of like Dave and I were talking about, there's the left brain and the right brain, and those people literally can't access the other side that will let them see something spiritual. Do you think that's a possibility with a lot of these people? It's certainly possible, because that's ultimately what the two pillars are. It's the right brain and the left brain. Because um, this, this whole thing is about us. It, it's like when those two pillars fall and they become, they merge into one world. It's like two worlds and they merge into one world. That's what like 9-11 was all about. Um, and if someone doesn't have access to the other side of their brain or they're, there's something wrong there or something like a barrier that's keeping them from it, then um, they're not going to be able to have that merging happen. And that's actually what we see in like the razzle dazzle camouflage, um, because when the worlds <laughs> merge, that's, just, like the, that's the, just, the, just so ridiculous looking, man. 
Yeah. <laughs> Actually, interestingly enough, the first time I ever saw Razzle Dazzle camouflage was in that Metal Gear Solid game. <laughs> oh, I really? I put it in there because it was like a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. also about that um, Twisted Metal Black game, um, the theme song for that game, if you remember, is Paint It Black. Oh, interesting. For people that don't know, I see a red door and I want to paint it black. Uh, now it's I see a red door and I want it painted black. And I guess the link I sent out is a dead link, uh, Dave is telling me. So I'm going to resend everybody a link. Um, but if you could speak on some of the music changes real quick while I do that, that would be fantastic. Sure. So uh, with the two pillars, like the two worlds, um, so the right being white and the left being black, um, when those worlds merge, that's where you get like the black and white mixing. It's like the yin yang symbol, which is also a Mandela effect because it used to be yin yang, um, but the G was taken off the first word, Y I N. Um, and also with the razzle dazzle camouflage, you see the mixing of the black and the white. And what's really interesting too about the razzle dazzle is that uh, the Olympic um, ocean liner, it was one of three uh, sister ships with the Titanic and the Britannic. And um, I think the Britannic and the Olympic are both Mandela effects. Um, but you have the Titanic, which represents the left pillar, and it was destroyed by an iceberg. Um, and the word berg uh, means mountain. So the ice mountain is the right pillar. So that destroyed the Titanic. And then the Britannic was destroyed by um, a sea mine, which is a spiked ball, which is what CV is. Um, and and I totally the think the Britannic, ball. I've heard of the Olympic and being the sister ship of the Titanic for many years and never heard of the Britannic till like two years ago. Yeah, I'd never heard of either. of them. The fir first one I heard of was the Olympic and then the next one was the Britannic. <laughs> Um, but then the uh, Olympic, um, that would be the middle pillar uh, because that's like Mount Olympus. Um, also with the Olympics, that fits into the three pillars too because you have gold in the middle, which is God. And then on the right, you have silver, which is the moon. And then on the left, you have bronze, which is the sun because that's like the imposter of the gold. Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but then you have, so the, with the Olympic ship, it had the razzle-dazzle camouflage, which is black and white, but it also had blue on it too. So that's like the blue door. Um, like you don't want to have red and red on the black and white because that's like going lower. Um, but blue would be higher, like in terms of like the you know chakra spiritual frequencies. Let me uh, the Olympic has welcome Dave to the stream. And Dave, I I reckon the newest link I sent you worked. It worked. Uh, okay, yeah, so kept coming up saying authenticity code or some other bullshit. That's, that's like that. really weird. So anybody out there that tried to get in and had the same error Dave did, I resent you guys all uh, another email. Sorry about the duplicate emails, but I sent you guys all a new Zoom link, and apparently that works. So anybody that's a member, if you want to join, check your email again, please. Check the newest email for me. There is a different Zoom link in the. And here we go. Someone is joining right now. So let's welcome this person before we uh, continue the conversation. <laughs> I think it's oh, this C3, girl. C3PO is right on that. Yeah, Jupiter is tin. You're correct. Saturn oh, is lead. The sun is gold. This is where that whole thing of the philosopher's stone is, is, is kind of metaphorical of taking the base, ego, selfish, lead man and perfecting him toward godlike status, transforming from lead to gold, from the Saturn to the sun. Let's, I, I noticed uh, you have the uh, tinfoil hat, too. Yes, yes. Very <laughs> good for keeping up the solar radiation up let's, here in the... Let's just say hi to but, another guest that we yeah. have. Ash, <laughs> welcome back to the stream. It's good to be back. Yeah. I was actually thinking... Yeah. So, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just no, no, and I want you to jump in. I mean, uh, I directly messaged Dave the link and got him on here, but you um, came through the thing, being obviously... You want to jump on for uh, what you want to get into? We can stop um, there. I was wondering just different reasons why the Mandela effect is, or more specifically, um, like the the I see a red door and I want to oh, paint oh, it black. Man. You're actively doing it. You want to paint it black, but now it's I want it painted black. So like I want someone else to do it. I don't want to do it. It's it's kind of to me it's kind of like a 
commentary on how people kind of act right now. Mm -hmm. You know, like wake them up to be like, hey, maybe, you know, get up and do something. Yeah. He's just sitting around, so. It's yeah. Yeah, I think they all have meaning, especially the music changes. I mean, definitely. Uh, some of the messages and some of them, they certainly do have a meaning, in my opinion. I don't think any of this is just for, like, no reason at all. You know, I think every every change. And even if something changed just for the sake of changing, that still has meaning because that's to wake somebody up that's familiar with that whatever product it is or whatever. You know, uh, you know like, again, we'll bring up Nathan's sister and the diarrhea medicine, <laughs> right? He, he, he speaks on the Mandela effect as good as anybody on this panel tonight, but he couldn't get his sister to take it seriously uh, until she noticed the, the, the medicine, uh, modium, uh, losing an eminent. So, I mean, they're all huge. Hey, hey Dave? Is there a... Oh, yes. is, is, out of all the brands, you know, Haas Avocados, Stouffer's, all these things... What's the one to you that's so obvious? Like, you know 100% that that's completely ridiculous as far as, like, a... Oh, yeah, the Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing. Because, listen, I used to be a drunk, right? And if I could still say Stovetop Stuffing instead of potatoes, sto if I could say Stouffer's Stovetop Stuffing instead of potatoes, then I was okay to drive. That was my, that was my go-to, right? Wow. Then it was like, no, no, no. And I said, now somebody to say it craft, it just sounds stupid to me. I'm like, no, it's not. That's not it. Because I used to, that's like a tongue twister to me. And I remember the commercial. And stove for stovetop stuffing instead of potatoes. What? Like, are you, they'd act like, are you crazy? You know, who does that? It's not Thanksgiving time. What are we doing here? You know, and, and I just remember that line was really iconic. And that's another weird thing, too. That's that Stone song. Uh, to paint it black was like my favorite uh, Stone song. It's what got me into listening to the Rolling Stones. I remember hearing that on a commercial for you could buy a greatest hits of such and such a year. Yeah, you know. And I remember them playing just a portion of that song, and I was like, "Oh wow, I really like that." So I went and found it, you know, and on a forty-five at the record store, and I was like, "Fuck yeah, that's a great song." I'm now a Rolling Stones fan, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that and it's really weird that that one stuck with me so long. And then that's the one that changed, you know. And so I know that that's an anchor thing to me because I was really looking at the words. I was kind of um, infatuated with the nihilism of it all, you know. And I guess that's kind of what drew me to it. And um, so I was, you know, that's that's a big one for me to be changing, you know. Some of these newer songs, like my wife texted me from work today and she says, what's the what's the Mandela effect with Rihanna? And I says, I'm pretty sure it's the way her name is spelled, yeah. but I was I never gave a shit about Rihanna from day one. I mean, I was like, yeah, you, you don't know, really just... you don't really come across as a Rihanna type of guy. <laughs> no, no. And she, I think the, the probably the most uh, most of her talent that I've seen would be in the form I, of she was in that horrible I, movie battle show. i'm not like really into like new music like i am my old stuff at all you know i couldn't give a shit about any of these people either but i think that she actually is pretty talented like her voice when she sings yeah so what is now r-h-i-e-a-n-n-r it, it used to be it used to be r-h-i but now it's r-i-h used to be yeah I, rem I do remember r-h-i because i thought what an interesting name you know, I wonder if she's RH negative. Yeah. You'll have to forgive me if I start to ramble a little bit. I had a little chunk of Mama Lisa Tattersall's famous fudge. Oh, my God. That woman <laughs> from the apothecary just down the road here, man. Wow. That makes you into that makes you into it. You weren't a chatty Kathy before you had that. Oh no! I mean, it's just like uh, it's 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 a pretty uh, pretty mellow fudge. I, I like why don't, shit. Why don't why don't we all why don't we all shut up and let Ash sing? Because I think Ash wants to sing. I know the crowd yeah, wants Ashley, it. Come Ash, on, and then we always hear Dave sing. How about you sing us some of your favorite Mandela affected songs? And yeah, well, sing actually, for us. There's a, really, um, there's a residue with the painted black. So there's a band called the Dresden Dolls, and they have a song called uh, the Jeep Song. And it's about, um, you know, I see my ex everywhere with his Jeep, you know, and I'm just, I'm so tired, like that, right? Um, but the, the lyric is, uh, I see a red Jeep and I want to paint it black. And 
I had no idea about the actual song until I saw your video on the Paint It Black, and I'm like, whoa, that's where it's like referencing. Okay, <laughs> totally yeah. came from it backwards. Yeah, that's cool. And again, you know, for people that don't know, we talk about the horse's mouth. I mean, we've shown you the Stones multiple occasions. Uh, Mick Jagger on stage singing it the way we remember in a couple of live performances. And we've shown this repeatedly with many of these different musicians uh, over and over again, actually. Uh, we've even shown uh, Moneybags did a video showing Sally Fields twice quoting her own Oscar speech, which now never existed. Well, it's been changed. I shouldn't say never existed, but it's completely different now. And I think that's an interesting aspect of the Mandela effect, right? Well, we can talk about Sinbad, too, because I want to get everybody's take. Uh, so the obvious question is, does Sinbad know or is his reactions genuine because he really thinks he didn't make this movie? and uh, Or is he just an asshole? Um, but let's keep in mind, even though he's so closely tied to it, that doesn't mean he can't have a memory of it because we saw Sally Fields quote her own speech, which doesn't exist twice. So, uh, Ash, what do you think? Sinbad, does he know? Does he not know? I wonder if he flip-flops just like how um, the Mandela Effect does, because I kind of had that similar experience with like, oh, the Mandela Effect's real, oh, no, it's not, back and forth, very confused mind. So I, I kind of wonder the same thing, where it's like he, he believes it with his full heart, but not all the time. But what about his his memory? Does he does he think he was in this genie movie, or does he think that's bullshit? Well, so that's where I'm wondering, right? If it's like I do remember being in that, but mm, maybe <laughs> like either, yeah, because it's like how can you have a mm -mm, it's like you either remember being in a fucking motion picture or not? Like I would yeah, think, yeah. <laughs> Mark. I make a ton of crochet things, and I have some people come back to me with things, and I'm like, I don't remember making that. And they're like, no, you totally did. Why would I not remember making it? Yeah. I, I like, because I make it all the time. So I'm wondering if similar, I don't know, I'm not an actor. Yeah. Hey, Mark, okay. what do you think about Sinbad? Um, and I know you know about all the disinfo, too, and the college humor thing. And uh, for me, he doesn't seem genuine at all. I mean, that's my take. But I'm totally open to he really might not know and just really might get triggered from people assuming he's in this movie he was never in, according to his reality. I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? Well, I definitely think he's, he acts like an asshole. And um, it seems like he's being put up to do all these things. Um, yeah. Like, it feels like someone told him, you know, like a handler, you know, said, you have to fight against this. But as far as what he really remembers, you know, I, how, how can we know? No, Damien G says, but Brian, you don't remember your name being Stavely, and he has one E in it. Are you like Sinbad? No, see, I'm not like Sinbad because I'm not out here being an asshole, making fake videos with fake residue planted all over the place. And I'm just telling you, of course, no, I don't remember that. But yeah, it could have, uh, it could have been that. I'm not denying that that could have happened. And I could have taken an update. <laughs> I'm much different than Sinbad when it comes to all of this. <laughs> Well, to be fair, okay, Sinbad's from Detroit. Sinbad's always been an asshole, okay? Even when he made the fucking movie that he didn't make. And what I think is so telling is the fact that they were able to get that college humor thing so accurate. So if you yeah, never made the movie, yeah. how could you have been so accurate in your spoof of it? You see what I'm saying? That'd be like well, somebody, somebody knows. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, and and I remember because I'm from just outside of Detroit, right? When that movie went down, it was on the news. Local uh, stand-up comedian Sinbad, you know, and his movies opening at the at I think it was the Royal Oak Theater, and um, he was there dressed as the genie, giving out autographs to all these kids that were going to see the movie. And it was a big thing because Detroit's always trying to get some kind of recognition for something other than being a shithole. And that was another attempt at it, you know? And uh, I, I remember that clearly. That place was mobbed with kids. You know, I mean, I wonder, that'd be interesting to go around through oh. Detroit and ask some people Dude. that are like in their 30s now, say, hey, do you remember Sinbad in that movie? They're going to say, yeah, dude. Them, dude. Almost all yeah. of them are going to say, everybody remembers. People that aren't into the Mandela effect at all, if that gets brought up. 
I mean, they totally remember. And again, dude, like, the excuses people try and make to dismiss our memories, like the idea that we would just somehow mix up Shaquille O'Neal in the mid-90s and Sinbad. I mean, talk about two people, nothing alike. And, and I'm sorry, but you're literally, you could mistake different people. People have doppelgangers. You're not going to mistake Shaquille O'Neal for anybody, period. That's like mistaking Andre the Giant for somebody else. Like, you just, it's not going to happen, dude. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. We know the difference. And we also have matching, many of us, matching anchor memories of thinking what a ripoff when Sinbad just did the movie and now here comes Shaq with the fucking Genie movie. Like, uh, where, does that, where did that come from? What that's what I thought. I was like, God, they're going to make another one like that? What the hell, you know? Um, but at that point, I was under the impression that both movies existed. So yeah. I didn't know that the other had disappeared and then they made another one. That's ridiculous. Right. Well, I don't know if you guys uh, remember it, but um, for me, Shaquille O'Neal's last name is a Mandela effect, too. So for you, it was a EA instead of an EI? I think it's EA now, isn't it? I'm not even sure. And I've heard people talk about that, and it's really weird that I'm not even sure how his name uh, was. But that's interesting, too, either way, because... It's another O'Neill, like Ed O'Neill, which has also changed. Right. It's got an extra L on it, along with all these other people. Like, and and O'Neill Surfboards. O I had, yeah, O'Neill Surfboards, yeah. Yeah, th that company has two L's now instead of one. So what's the meaning of that, Mark, in your opinion? And I'm going to step away to use the restroom, but I have the headphones on. O'Neill, you ever look into that word at all? Uh, I haven't looked into it, but there's also uh, Sam Neill, um, the actor um, so his name used to be N E I L, and now it has two L's. It's odd shit. Well, these people will get on and they'll stop denying it because a lot of these deniers I noticed are some of these egghead globe tards. And when it changes finally to Albert Einstein, then they'll wake up yeah. and they'll notice. You know what I'm saying? They probably still won't notice. <laughs> yeah, they probably won't well, notice. No, it's always been like that. It's, it's yeah. what relativity was brought off of. Yeah, 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 that's it. You know, actually, what's one that people don't talk about much is, um, do you remember it being the Einstein-Rosenberg Bridge? Yes. But now it's uh, the Einstein-Rosen Bridge. The Berg was taken out. What? And that's another one, too, because Berg means mountain. So, like, the mountain was taken out of that. Why are they removing our mountains, man? <laughs> yeah, there's something to that. There definitely is something to it with those lambdas, all of that, you know. And the uh, so that's what gets me is like it could it could mean so many different things, you know. It could be interpreted, I think, so many different ways. And I'm just trying to figure how should I interpret this, you know? And there, well, again, I've been kind of grouping it, you know, like grouping it together, like. Like all the lambda mountain symbols, all the, you know, I mean, like the, you know, that we talk about like the black, the different color ones. Mm -hmm. um, the there's a lot of keywords, you know, like door is a keyword, bell is a keyword, uh, you yeah. know, mirror is a keyword, magic is a keyword. There's like 50 keywords, and a bunch of symbols. Now with these letters, somebody was, uh, I think it was Barbara, Jehovah's daughter Barbara. And um, she had a pretty good idea if we could get together the letters that we're seeing the changes with. She's like yeah. this whiz kid with anagrams, man. She is like this whiz kid with anagrams. She did this big, long anagram just to my name what comes out of it. And it that's was amazing. Cool. Although I would say I think it's every letter that's affected. I don't know. I see a predominance in S's. How would you want to say we take the letters and organize them, Dave, chronologically by when the, t the change with those words happened and then place the letters in like a timeline? Like, how, how would you? I would just give them to our magic computer, uh, Jehovah's Daughter Barbara, and let her go to town on it. I mean, I'm serious. It's, it would be just like putting the data into it because I was amazed at the anagrams and shit she got just from my name. The only the, issue is, like, how do we know that we have them all gathered, you know? Right, right. Oh, right, yeah, right. we Could never, well, we'll never have them all gathered. We already know that. Right? I mean, there's I no mean, way. There's some that are just, there's some that are just completely obvious. The S's, the T's, the L's, you know, um, the A's. 
Um, we're seeing that. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of this that's really fucking obvious, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, a, it's definitely a, like it's a, and I was thinking even this too, because what in the Bible, it's changing God and logos, another word meaning God or truth. And we also use that for uh, labels and symbols that companies use. We call them their logos. <laughs> it's just kind of blanket thing. Change logos. Boom. Yep. It just does, you know? Yeah. So uh, Mr. Well, T did the, another. Uh, did you see Mr. T did another commercial, Skechers? Yes. Uh, right. Uh, it, it, right what, check it out. <laughs> it, you want to hear the worst part of it was. It came up right as I was getting ready to watch. Uh, I just got done watching one of your videos, and I clicked on another video, and the commercial that came up was that one with Skechers with Mr. T in it. And that's when I sent you that screenshot. I sent you a screenshot. Oh, the, did you? I, I was, I, yeah, I, I, did you? I didn't notice. It's got low sound, but I was trying to show you. I said, Jesus Christ, it's right here even on the YouTube video. I just got done had been, just got done watching your video, too. And then that comes up, and I was like, son of a bitch, you can't get away from this, man. Yeah. And and so, focused on it. Yeah, and so obviously, uh, again, what's that, Ash? I never saw him growing up. I never saw anything really outside of being on the board. But now there's a, a fun factory over here and there's a Monopoly man just right there and he has no monocle. It's massive. And it's really strange. And I'm seeing like advertisements on like ads for him and there's no monocle and it's just kind of like really being pushed the Monopoly man right now. And I, I don't remember that at all. Yeah, did you see my video a couple years ago? And, and as we know, they're trying to tell you that the... Uh plant this peanut guy is who we think the monopoly man is and we're just mixing them up and then they did this whole thing where they like killed the plant this peanut guy then he came back to life and the first thing he says is where's my monocle like it was so ridiculous well look I, I'm at the, I'm at the gro I went to the grocery store and um, right there by where the pet foods at is where they have the books and magazines yeah. And right as I'm walking by, I'm looking over, and of course, down there at the bottom are those little golden books, story books for kids. And they're usually about maybe seven or eight pages total, maybe a paragraph worth of words in the entire book, right? And lo and behold, what do they got there? Now, have there been any, real quick, just keep this question on the burner. Is there any Mandela effects with the movie The Goonies? That's one I'm wondering. Not that I've um, heard of yet, they, no. Okay, because they well, had the Goonies, they had Jaws, and in Jaws, they had to include, out of all the lines in there, the, you're going to need a bigger boat line, right? And they had E.T., and in the E.T. book, they had to include the phone home line. And it's sort of like, I was like, holy shit, why was my attention drawn to these? And secondly, why are they making children's books out of Jaws? You know, there was a parental warning on that movie when I was a kid. <laughs> it was scaring the shit out of people. People wouldn't go to the beach anymore after seeing that movie. And now it's in a kid's book. But I looked and I was like, well, I'm not sure about Goonies. But I know there's a Mandela effect in Jaws, E.T. And I looked at him to see if it was, you know, if they had the lines that had been infected. And sure as hell they did. You know, and I'm like, why? That's like real. Well, I think, uh, I think it had the word the added on to the front of it. I think it was just Goonies, and now it's the Goonies. I don't know, but I'll tell you what I do know. When I got my license and growing up and after that, yield signs were definitely fucking yellow, and now they've always been red, white, and black. And I know, Mark, you had something to do with the yield signs you wanted to talk about tonight. So. Yeah, actually, I, um, I've been wanting to talk about that for a while. It's just there's so much to talk about, we never get to it. <laughs> But um, like I guess for one, do you guys remember the yield signs pointing up in the past? No, it seems like they've always been an upside down trying. Yeah, I think upside down for me okay. as well. Um, I think I do remember them pointing up, but I'm not 100 percent on that. But the other change, of course, is for real. So what's really interesting is um, the Mandela effect didn't change the yield sign all the way to its inception. It changed it. Yeah, to um, the I know I to it, the in mid seventies. It predates my birth, though. So it not only predates me growing up, but it's like they were there until like nineteen seventy four or something like that. Right, but I think that that dates on purpose because it's telling us something. Because the uh, so the yield sign 
um, the shape of it, the downward triangle, that's the symbol for water or ice, maybe. Um, but I, I would say water in this case. So uh, that time frame in the early 70s, that's when Watergate um, was happening. Oh, wow. So you have Watergate would be like the huge story around at least the United States. Um, so like they're pushing this Watergate and gate is another big keyword. And I think the gate refers to our third eye. And um, water uh, also refers to our third eye because it's like a vessel and like the brain is like 80 to 85 percent water. Um, so it could uh, something they did. I don't know. Something happened in the early 70s or something. But I think it's tied to uh, Watergate. And then the word yield, um, it actually has two opposite meanings, which is really interesting because you can yield um, to like an authority like like bowing down but you could also yield like an abundance of like fruit or like a harvest you know a yield so i think like a profit yeah yeah so I, I think it's like talking about like the third eye like um are you going to yield to the beast system or are you going to yield like what we're doing right now and, and you know spreading the truth and trying to get to the bottom of things and you know ad advance ourselves spiritually that's such a big one for me dude and so is the objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. And talk about residue again with substantial residue. Uh, as a lot of people know, I recently just got my license back after losing it for years because of a DUI. Uh, and I had to do the like, driver retraining. And because of COVID, they let you do it at home on the computer. And in their own programs from the Department of Motor Vehicles from Massachusetts is residue for objects in mirror may be closer than they appear. She literally narrates and tells you that's what's in the mirrors, and they show the mirror and it says it the new way. And that, that's again with the two pillars too, because like the left pillar is like the mirror world. So like, like the two pillars are now merged together. So the left pillar is closer, you know, than it used to be. That was such a fixation. I remember looking at that whenever I was able to be in that. I was kind of young at the time. It was kind of iffy to be in that chair. But whenever I could, I stared at that mirror. I'm like, maybe. What? That makes no sense. Like, are they or are they not? Like, I I need a definite answer because, like, this driving thing is serious. You know, it's kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I would get super aggro that it didn't have an exact meaning. So when it flipped, I'm like, no way. Oh, so now it's actually pretty clear. Okay. In a way. They changed the road, the Mandela effect. The man, I almost said they, uh, and I don't think it's a they. I, I still still do that sometimes, right? But the Mandela effect changed one of the most well-known road signs, and it changed the every single mirror on every vehicle in the United States. They all have that message, um, and people still don't notice. Like, and tra uh, traffic lights are upside down too. Yeah, a lot of people remember that, uh, the green on top. For me. <clears throat> and also, every damn near every auto uh, company has their Mandela effect in their logo. I mean, come on, man. Who the fuck? How, how do you look at that Ford logo and not want to throw up? I mean, it's so stupid looking now. Well, it's updated, you know, just like your phone does. Everyone gets updates all the time that it's just like, oh, okay, well, maybe they just updated the logo. They updated the cars, you know, not really thinking that... You know, I haven't really bought a new car in the past five years. So maybe they updated seven years ago, you know, but I don't really think people think further than that outside of, okay, well, that's mystery solved. I'm going back to watching my TV or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable to think that until you're presented with all this evidence. I don't think people do. And then if they do, it's... A mixture of, oh, okay, or it's just complete shutdown. I try to tell my parents this stuff pretty often, and if they don't tell me the new reality without me saying anything, my mom told me wine bottles straight out without me even saying it. I'm like, well, that's weird. Um, oh. <laughs> so that creeps me. Oh, okay. Creeps me out a little bit. Um, was, if, if they don't do that, it's just like a complete, oh, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah, the fluoride stare. Yeah. Um, well, you know, like you were saying, we get these updates and getting them all the time. And I was just thinking, you know, what if all of a sudden there are those of us who have not been getting the updates? 
And how many updates have there been that we're unaware of that we took? How many changes have actually happened that we're unaware of because oh, we yeah. were taking updates? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, how long kind of... have you had an awareness? Like, how long have you been aware? Of how long you haven't get, been getting updates? And if you have like glimpses of awareness throughout your consciousness throughout your life. If it's... So I can give an example uh, of, I guess, me taking an update because it goes back to my first Mandela effect with Kurt Henning. Um, so at the time, I didn't know what a Mandela effect was. I knew his name was Kurt Henning. I saw it change to Hennig. And I eventually rolled with it and kind of accepted it until I realized what the Mandela effect was and then looked back at it. So I took an update on that. Definitely. Yeah, I, I reversed exactly a couple updates too. Um, like the, I didn't see the streetlights one at first and I just thought it wasn't the Mandela effect. But then the more examples of like a green light on top that I saw, it like all of a sudden just clicked in my head. And I was like, oh my God, it, it used to be, you know, green on top. But I had originally had the update. It's like the Grinch for me. I, when I was watching the, your video, Brian, about the Grinch. The Grinch who stole Christmas. Oh, Christmas. I have to think about it because there's like this really funny line in my brain about like it was and wasn't. And that's like a really kind of like there's a kind of like a, a divide between where it was and where it wasn't. And that, um. Like around Christmas time, it all shifted. So you're saying like you strongly remember the Grinch who stole Christmas and how the Grinch stole Christmas? It depends. Yeah, but uh, where I am as like when I'm a child, I remember the Grinch who stole Christmas. And yeah. That was, like time period, and then I my brain's like no fighting it like the how, and I'm like no, it's not how, and it's. I can't even say how. I mean, I saying how the Grinch stole Christmas is like saying Centralville. Like it just, it just don't work for me, bro. Like that movie, that was literally my favorite one out of all the Christmas specials that they would play every year was the Grinch. <coughs> it was definitely the Grinch who stole Christmas, and now the fact that that's never existed and now it's how the Grinch. Well, stole that's Christmas. another one too that doesn't make any sense. Like, like why would he title it "How the Grinch Stole Christmas"? It, it's it's like not about like you know how he stole it. It's, it's about, about the his character. character, yeah, who he was, yeah. And and yes, everybody, I know this is the book, this is the animated thing. They've all changed. None of them are the Grinch who stole Christmas anymore. Not even the Jim Carrey remake. None of it. Focusing <clears throat> well, on names, right? So if it's how the Grinch stole Christmas, it wants you to focus on how he did it versus his character itself and what the story actually meant, maybe. I'm um, just get on. Maybe, uh, yeah. Actually, I think that that's probably it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. But like, how the movie is how he did it. Sewed that whole costume, dressed up his puppy dog, lived down the slip. That's all how he did it. He stole how he all did it, and we get to focus more on his actions. Well, uh, uh, Christmas is, it means like Christ Mass. Um, so there, there's a lot going on there because that's like all the right pillar stuff. So it's like how, how the right pillar was stolen, you know, by the left pillar, you know, that kind of meaning. I see a, a trigger but, denier in the chat, so I'm going to address him in a minute, but I'm going to let him leave a few more comments first. I've seen him around. R Richie Ruggs. Richie Ruggs is a denier. He, um, I think, I think I be believe he left a comment. I don't know what's fucking stupider, the Mandela effect or Flat Earth. So this is a guy who, you know, he believes the narrative. He probably thinks there were 19 hijackers with four box cutters, a guy in the fucking grassy knoll. Uh, but, but Brian went out of his way to go log in onto a show about things that he thinks are ridiculous and does it over and over again. Now, what does that tell you? That he's really in the closet and afraid to admit it. No, he's he's doing this because he's part of it. You know what Oh, I'm well, he, he's one of those Ukrainian cloned NPCs <laughs> shipped in on the orphan trains. If you uh, caught that whole story, Dave. Yeah, I did. That was very interesting. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that, that's the thing. I mean, we see that. I mean, why would these people go on day after day 
you know, like, uh, and just pop into the chat like that Lisa that I finally, I threw her out of my shit. I'm like, I'm just tired of seeing you, you know? Um, what, what the fuck is with people that that's what they're going to do all day. You know, anytime I see this, instead of watching something I'm interested in, I'm going to hang out in a chat and say stupid shit. That's got to be, you know, that's exactly the same spirit behind the people that are trying to cover it up, that are trying to make it look like it's a psyop, that kind of shit. That's agents of that. And whether they're knowingly or unknowingly doing it, it's legion at work, man. I'm telling you now. They're totally, it was try, they tried because I tried sending off, um, do you remember when you were debating with someone and he had a freaking tiger thing on? Is that a... Oh, I, I remember that guy, Dave, on your show. Yeah, he, had the, so, he talked like a tiger. He was a tiger cartoon. Remember, Dave? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So he, like, he had this whole thing on, and I said, you stream out, and the person was like, is this the right stream? Why is there a tiger? I'm like, it's to totally distract and make it look freaking silly. Yeah. That you're like, this is a oh, Yeah, I yeah. It's totally common. Yeah, I couldn't. I wouldn't be able to have a conversation with that motherfucker looking like a tiger. I went on an interview with one guy about the Mandela effect, uh, and this uh, this is the guy I told you that told me he saw planes hit the towers in New York all of a sudden in the middle of the interview, and I called him out on it on the air, um, and then he admitted he actually saw it on TV, just like I said he did. Um, but besides that, this motherfucker, I go on his show. I'm thinking I'm talking to a regular guy. I log in, and this guy is an animation of Donald Trump. And I was talking to a cartoon Donald Trump for fucking three hours, dude. It's really yeah. annoying. It, it's really well, a troll. Yeah, it's a that's a they that's a, that's to... getting trolled, dude. I don't I don't appreciate that. They they are afraid to show their identity. You see, it's like that guy, that penguin guy that comes on my show all the time, right? He's a, he won't come on camera. He's always got this robotic voice and a um and this penguin avatar, you know. Um, none of them. They don't want to. They're they're afraid to show their face on the camera, because I think they're just doing this like behind the scenes. Probably nobody else around them even is aware that they're it's, doing it's, this. Shit. It's more than that, though. It makes the whole stream look clownish. And even if you're saying good things, you're talking to a fucking cartoon and you're getting trolled. <laughs> I mean, there you are, man. It happened to me too. I mean, that's what it is. Um, let me say thank you to Holistic Media. Uh, donated ten dollars in a super chat. Thank you so much. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like that immature type of shit. <laughs> it, well, that's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with stunted minds, too. I find the average globe, Glober to be at a probably maximum mental maturity age of 14. Well, but just look at their bedrooms them. behind them. They got all their toys and shit. It's fucking weird. Oh, I know. I know. It's like... And they're real uber sensitive about some things. Really, really. Richie sensitive. Rugg says, I thought a troll was someone who is rude and disruptive. Yeah, I didn't call you a troll. I called you a denier. Man Man and, and Mandela effect deniers are liars. So you, I did call you a liar right now by default. <laughs> You'll learn, though, man, because you're going to get hit with so many fucking Mandela effects listening to this channel. I mean, you might not admit it, but like most deniers, you will know it, and you will know it inside. For some reason, it scares. And, and what's interesting is I don't think there's anything scary about it. Um, I think the people that are very scared of it, one of the main reasons that they're scared of it is because they actually aren't spiritual at all. They don't believe in anything of the outside the, you know, outside the natural world. They don't believe in the supernatural at all. Um, so for them, it's like, it just, they're going to have to deny it. They have to deny it. They have to just continue yeah. to deny it in, until they're ready to have that point in their life where they're ready to admit that there's more than, there's more than the physical here, you know? Did you ever see the movie Nefarious? No, tell me about it. No. Oh my God. Yeah. It's a good one. You got to see it. Uh, it's an independent film and, uh, I tell you what, this guy deserves an award, man. He's a, a guy on death row. He's being evaluated by a psychiatrist to make sure that he's fit to be execu uh, executed, right? The guy comes in there and he introduces himself and he says, yeah, I know who you are. And he, uh, he tells him his whole academic record, where he was born, who he's married to, blah, 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 everything about him. 
<clears throat> and he's like, oh, so you've done a lot of research. How did you know so much about me? Anyway, the guy says he's possessed by a demon. But the thing is, during this whole exchange that they're talking and shit, and the guy says, well, I don't believe in that because I'm an atheist. He says, no, good, good. He says, I'm liking you even more and more all the time. He says, my master's house is full of intellectual meat sacks like you that thought that they knew everything and couldn't see beyond their own physical world. He says, just keep going, just keep going. And I was thinking that exact same thing. And it's it, when you see this atheist type viewpoint, right, where they're just completely into the left brain pow you know yeah um it's almost to me in, a, in many cases i see that it's it's uh it's like a toddler playing uh covering up their eyes and thinking nobody can see them um i don't have to be accountable for my actions because if i don't believe in god nothing's being watched and i think that's what it roots right down into you see then i don't have accountability only to myself and I think that's yeah, I think a lot of people have like a fear of being judged, and e even the word judgment, you know, it's a Mandela effect. So. And and the judge not lest he be judged, Mandela effect as well. Yeah. And there was the judge Judy, which kind of started to reverse back, but this judge that I, I loathe that woman. I loathe her. <laughs> you look like the type oh. of guy that would hit that. I no, no, I'd hit her. I would. I don't believe in hitting a woman, but I'd smack that bitch upside the head. No problem whatsoever. Wow, what's your, be, what's your beef with Judge Judy just because what she represents or did she really tick you off? Well, that, that's, that's one portion of it. But the second thing, that get, the biggest thing that gets me is the way she's, her little snipey attitude. You know, like that. I'm like, oh, I cannot stand a dismissive person, man. So, oh, man. <laughs> Damn, bro! I didn't know you had heat with her like that. No, I can't stand her, man. I, 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 I loathe her very existence. I really do. Well, that's just about any judge, really. They're pompous pricks, most of them. Well, all of them, really. <laughs> guys, don't forget anybody that's a member. You guys all have an email. I'm sorry for the multiple emails, but the most recent one I sent you all, it has a Zoom link, and you can come on the show just like Ash did, just like Dave did. Uh, come on up and be part of the panel. Oh, hey, uh, Brian, could you put me on the screen for a second? Yeah, sure. Give me a second just to resituate a couple things. Yeah, so you're on the full screen. Uh, one second. I'll tell you while you're doing that. I got I people over and I'll put on your show. You know, they'll come over and your show's on. I put it on. And they'll hear some of these Mandela effects and they'll look at me and go, fuck you, no way. Uh-uh, I know better. That used to be, what? And they start getting like, and then it, get, it opens the door. I said, just keep watching, just keep watching, you'll see. And then we'll start getting into a discussion about it, you know. And some of them are big, especially within my my age group. You know, the uh, the, the the Ed McMahon is a big one. You know, the Monopoly guy. Uh, some of the shit that's culture references that we yeah. grew up with. You know, some of these newer ones like. Pokemon it doesn't mean shit to me because I never watched it. I thought it yeah. was a silly fad that was going to pass by before the summer was over, but I was wrong. But imagine if you were a little kid and you had an inquisitive ah. mind, that would be huge for you. No, that's yeah, there's a lot of my son. It's huge to my son, yeah. There's a lot of Pokemon ones. There's like 10. Yeah, it's spelling of one of those things. Is Onyx. Names. Yeah, people talk I, about I think Onyx. that's what my son was telling me, that his wife... Uh, was really into Pokemon, and she even had a list that she wrote of all the Pokemons down. And she goes, I know better. I know how that's spelled. And she went and checked her list, and it was changed on her list. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I see Shiva in the chat. Shiva, I telegrammed you uh, the Zoom. I know you might be busy, or the hours might not be right over there, but if you want to hop on, I sent you a Zoom. That'd be cool. Who? Go, go ahead, Dave. I was talking to Shiva. Oh, that's Shiva. all I had. Yeah, I was going to say handwritten thing changed, you know. Um, that And that's nuts, man. Usually that's the kind of thing that stays a residue. But oh. I think it was well, something uh, like hoax oh. a or some, some. See, I don't know none of them monsters or whatever, but um, I, he told me. It has an X in it. Oh, yeah. Well, well, one was like a phoenix bird. It changed into like a rainbow bird. This one was its name changed. Right. 
Yeah, see, like, I don't know what none of those monsters are. I was laughing my ass off when people were walking out in the street getting hit by cars playing that stupid <laughs> game. Though. I was like, oh, man. Well, I, found, I found some uh, Mirror Mirror residue when I was looking at the, some of my tapes. Oh, shit, and somebody sent me some I forgot to show earlier, too. They had the, the tape, and the tape had an insert. And on the insert, it says mirror, mirror on it and not magic mirror. Uh, I'll show that. But that nice. might be what yeah. that might be what you have. What do you have? You want to show I don't some know if you stuff? Could... Let me let, hold on. Let me pin you on the screen so uh, the, vo the, it, the camera stays on you for a couple minutes. Hang on. This is just like some crappy movie called Boogeyman Two, <laughs> but um, at the bottom of the thing it says mirror, mirror. If you could see that. Oh yeah, yeah, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the deadliest of them all? <laughs> Dude, it, it's literally mirror, mirror in like every case, everywhere of everything other than the original one that's changed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I think it's because Walt Disney's the devil. And Walt Disney himself quotes it as mirror, mirror, so. Yeah, he doesn't even know his own famous quote. Yeah. Everyone gets their most famous quotes wrong, you know. Kevin Costner. That's the one. Archiax. Yeah, yeah. Beta Baby Maker said the one I was thinking about. I don't think that's a Pokemon. I think they're talking about the Archaics channel. Yeah, uh, that's a YouTube channel. Okay, so I would say, well, it has an X in it and an L, like, yeah. like making it hard to pronounce in my per uh, uh, Yeah, I'm not sure about that. What? Why? What happened with that channel? Oh, I don't know. I think the person was just asking if you knew the the guy's uh, theories or whatever. Actually, I saw a good stream that Archaics did with uh, Shiva Shampoo um, about the Mandela effect. So that was really good on their part. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people talking now. Pretty hard not to. It's the underlying aspect of reality. No matter what you're into, the Mandela effect affects it, <laughs> and in a big way. I yeah. mean, it's inserted uh, a million pounds of TNT being blown up in the middle of New York. Nobody's ever known about it. Damage it's so much attached to Liberty so bad. Now nobody's ever been to it. And here comes Ash back into the room. We'll get her back on. Um, it, it's Flat's insane. always been talking about it. Flat's oh yeah, been man. Talking about it too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like Flatside. Yeah, he's been talking about and holding his ground against the deniers as well. And they've been dealing with some drama over there because it's just because he's been talking about the Mandela effect. Yep, people get triggered as a motherfucker. So I definitely uh, respect Flatoid and, and, and Michael Khan and PJ that's always on the, the panels together uh, for talking about this. PJ Kruchank, he's a good guy, man. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's a... Uh... And that after that weird experience on there, there again, that was another one. That was another one. When I saw that guy come on there, yeah. when you were on there, and I was like, where in the fuck did this guy come from, man? <laughs> and Flatsoid's like, who's this? How did he get the link? And I'm like, good question, Flatsoid. How did he get the link, man? That's That was just so suspicious, man. And then he just, like, wanted to take over the whole fucking show. Yeah. And that's what I mean, like, I, you know, pushing some loosey-goosey at best type of stuff. Ooh, uh, Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, how ridiculous to say Bill Clinton being named William is a Mandela effect. I mean... Well, the uh, Lost Geographic guy. Yeah, what did you think about that performance? I, I didn't see a lot of it, but yeah, I mean, like, I saw him say that the Teddy Roosevelt didn't have a monocle, and I was like... Well, that's an interesting Mandela effect because I totally remember him having a monocle. So I just did a simple Google search and there's like 10 photos of him with a monocle. So. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. I don't know what, what the deal is with that. Yeah, man. Yeah, they even had political cartoons of him with it. Man, well, I can remember. There's I photos. Papers I got to bring up. Yeah, if it was a real Mandela effect, it wouldn't be photos of him fucking wearing it. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, he's talking about old changes again. I'm talking about what's really big to me, what I know is 100%, and I can stand my ground on it. And uh, I don't ever want to present something bad or be in the race for a new effect. 
Um, even sometimes when we discuss, like, is this a change or not, I get a little, like, wary because I don't want, like, that to be used to try and discredit the Mandela effect if something turns out not to be a change. But then again, fuck these people. They're NPCs, and we need to be able to have the discussion, too, you know? Yeah, we need to be able to ask questions. <laughs> yeah, totally, dude. If we can't do it here, we're we going to do it. It's different if you're saying that, like, this is a Mandela effect, you know? Yeah. But there's so many that are huge. Uh, you know, I got 125 on my short list. I got about 200 that are going up on the website. And they're all definitely, jo you know, and I have a criteria, as I know everybody on this panel uh, does as well. Uh, well, at least I know uh, you, C3PO, and Dave, uh, as far as making content on the Mandela effect or talking about it on live streams, like... If this is not, if, if you don't, if you ask fucking 10 people, uh, you know, fill in the blank and seven or eight out of 10 of them or even high, it actually disagree with you. And they remember it as a current reality states, you probably don't have a fucking Mandela effect. You know, then we got people out there that are taken like just totally muddy in the waters like that recall vector guy. And he'd been muddy in the waters for years. And he, he, the guy would literally look for a typo and try and back engineer a Mandela effect off it. Like, that's just horseshit. So we're not going to do none of that around him. Yeah. That's I've some Alabama some, horseshit. I see some that are like, you know, oh, here's the thing, so, you know, some Mandela effects. Let me check it out. And I'm, look, I'm watching it, and I'm like, these aren't Mandela effects. What the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. What are they doing? And, I, they, you know, they've got to be purposely put out there to... Um, to do, you know, to to make people. I think it's uh, to make it look oh, bad. Well, yeah. This isn't anything. Yeah. You know, this isn't what I thought it was. You know, why don't they want people to notice this? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And who is who's behind trying to shut it? Well, down well I mean, right? it's showing you behind the curtain of reality, Dave. I mean, and they control the physical reality. And if this is totally out of their hands, which I think most of us believe it is. Uh, you could see why they wouldn't want people like us that are kind of onto them in other areas to see this. Because maybe, and there's probably it's a lot more we don't covering know. covering their eyes, right? What, what, if, what if some of it is us causing it? And what if we can, uh, if we could learn to manipulate that and get together and have the conversations and, and do that? Like, what if that's something that they're thinking in the back of their head? Not even in the back of their head. They're, they're thinking it right in the front um, that, you know, if we figure that out, they're really fucked. Imagine we could just like Mandela affect the media out of existence, like and it never ex <laughs> it never existed, and the whole world's like just different because it was never me the media telling you all this fake bullshit. I don't see how we could be doing it. I mean, maybe like if we're super advanced in the future or something, but like the way we are right now, I don't I don't really see how we can be doing it. It's too sophisticated. Yeah, I don't think we we are either. But I'm open. No. I'm open to open to the idea. You know? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't take it off the table. But I, I do like you know. In our current state, you know, we can't change matter in reality. Like I understand the whole manifesting thing, like um, what Dave was talking about, like how you could like manifest like a part. But that's body different. That's like, that's like yeah, manipulating in a way that the pieces fall into place in the correct way. It's not a retroactive reality shift that you're causing. Right. right? It's, it's apples and oranges. Yeah, it's a totally different aspect of reality, but that, you know, intertwined like that. <laughs> this should get well, to we, so collective have, people yeah. thinking about it, right? So if everyone is thinking, why does the lemma not have an end or, you know, mm -hmm. well, let's get rid of that. If we're all collectively thinking that and it shifts just a bit, you know, oh. I'm wondering about that with Captain Crunch. I remember Captain Crunch, but I remember Cr Cap Crunch ties me, Captain. Yeah. And then... Now that's changed, and I also wonder if that's a bit of a, like a hint, right? Because it's like Captain is in your lying, right? So the cereal's lying, Captain's lying about how good it is. I don't know because that cereal will tear up your freaking mouth. That cereal sucks. Does, Cap <laughs> Does Captain right? mean lying? It, it's a common, yeah, slang. I guess. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, when you're capping, that. you're lying, you know, versus not capping and you're not lying. Okay. I, I'm like, gonna... if you ever see those little, like, blue emojis all the time everywhere, that's, like, someone saying cap, that means, like, oh, they're saying the lie. You know? 
Damn, I'm way behind on the fucking lingo. These yeah, young yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I go, I go from here and shit. Yeah, I hear the shit that she says, and I hear the shit that Dave says sometimes. Talk about two opposite ends of the spectrum on the fucking jive. <laughs> Dude, I got the Pokemon books and everything. I read this thing cover to cover as a child. I remember Onyx having a Y. I remember Pikachu nice. having a black tip tail. This little dude had a black tip tail. I remember like coloring it and what like copying it exactly. And when I drew it, and guess what? All of those drawings are gone. Wow. They're rotting in a freaking dump somewhere. Oh goodness, oh, okay. I'm so pissed about it. <laughs> I was, oh, it's a trip. There's like people that are out there trying to get you to get rid of your art and stuff. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, fuck that. I wouldn't do that if I actually had some. I didn't think about it. it it's it was a really weird time. My grandma really, the was appeal an to authority can go way too far. Just yeah. there's a there's a mural you, uh... from where I just moved in in um, you know when I was living with Karen and Ted. We were in a little town called Earl, but it's right next to Shelby, uh, North Carolina. And in Shelby, there's a, this building called the Earl Scrug Center. And it's like, it looks like kind of like the fucking, the, the building from Back to the Future, the clock tower. Um, and it has a clock on it, you know? And on the clock, it has the fucking, um, the Roman numeral four, but it has it the fucking new reality way with the fucking four lines, right? And it just looks completely ridiculous. So <coughs> across the street, <clears throat> right across the street from it, there's this beautiful mural painted of not only that, but like these different landmarks of Shelby all in this one mural. And in the mural, there's a painting of the, the, the building and it has the IV the way, you know, wow. it was. And not only that, it has an American flag in that uh, painting, red stripe under the blue. And I went and I looked at the history of that building to see if the clock was ever replaced at some point. And maybe they, you know, maybe it got struck by lightning, like the clock tower, right? They replaced it. And no, they never replaced it. It's the original clock that was on there. So the residue right across the street on the mural. You know who Earl Scruggs is? He's like a jazz guy or something, right? No, man. Him and Lester Flats are the dudes that did the Beverly Hillbilly song, man. Oh, I knew he was a musician of some sort. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Him and a guitar. Can you can you can you grab a guitar and do the Beverly Hillbilly song for us live? The Beverly, that's good. <laughs> Come on, Dave. We know you can. No, no, we're not gonna do Beverly Hillbillies. But yeah, that's it. It was uh, Scra uh Scruggs and Flats, and it was Earl Scruggs and Lester Flats, and they they were they did a lot of bluegrass music, man. Pretty famous. They had an appearance on. Um, the Beverly Hillbillies once, like where they were from back home, and they came to visit. I wonder if there's any Mandela cool. effects in that. I'm gonna grab some juice, so I'm listening. Keep talking. I'll be right back. Not allowed to tell. In a, well, in, in the beginning of Back to the Future, that's a pretty crazy Mandela effect. I think it's a Mandela effect where it's like a black and white picture of Doc Brown, and he's like hanging off the clock. Have you seen that? The in uh, what's this on? Uh, the beginning of Back to the Future. And there's a photograph of him hanging from... You remember how, like, um, there's, like, a, a dolly shot where they're passing by, like, a bunch of clocks and yeah, things, yeah, and they yeah. show, like, the, the flat earth clock? Yeah. Um, there's, like, uh, it looks like it's, like, photoshopped into the video where it's just, like, this black and white picture of Doc Brown, and he's, like, hanging from the clock tower. It's just, it's really weird looking. That's pretty crazy. I have the movie. I'm gonna have to look and see about that. That would be because you know I love seeing little shit like that. I'm I find now, uh, nowadays I, I really watch more intently at things in the background. What do I notice and shit? Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, like I like that show Stargate. You ever watch it? No, I'm aware of it. Okay, so on this one I was watching. They had this uh, one of these. Um, Gaould guys came down, uh, one of these system lords, and his name was Apophis, right? And when he was coming down, I looked when the gate opened, and immediately out of the gate, they had two guards come out first. And I looked, and one was shorter than the other one, and they're standing on either side of the gate. And I was looking at this thing, and the steps going up to it, and everything. 
And I was like, holy shit, can you see the Masonic symbolism right there? There's your two pillars, the one slightly shorter than the other one. I said, it's right there in your face. And then from the eye comes this dude. And I was like, holy cow, man. Yeah, that's in, right that's in everything. Yeah, it is, man. Have you seen uh, the the crow? No, I have never seen that movie. I keep meaning to go. Really, you long. never saw the crow, dude? No. Nope. Oh yeah, then there's an the interesting thing. You know I think? It's because there was so much hype about it, and <laughs> I shy away from shit that people hype up. A lot. Of I, I watched it again uh, recently, and um, for starters, it's it's by the guy who made Dark City and Knowing. So uh, it's definitely like a world script movie. And the movie starts out with uh, Brandon Lee and his girlfriend. They're already killed. And when they show the room that they're in, it's literally like the Masonic square and compass. It's like, it's like basically saying this is the world. And like, you know, it got infiltrated by, you know, these, you know, home invaders. But like, it's totally the, the square and compass, like that room. It's just so over the top. <laughs> see it everywhere at one time i was watching um my oh shit there i go i'm rebooting son of a bitch you're rebooting dave, dave might be a ukrainian orphan yeah i think my <laughs> uh i think my system's rebooting yeah yeah you you're know, you're your your internal back, system it was acting really weird his internal system not his uh computer D dave Rebooting. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting all the Everyone updates. Everyone needs to clean that every once in a while. Dave, what's it like being a Ukrainian orphan? I think he's gone for now. He'll be back. <laughs> a lot of people here. Thank Going you, back everybody. to... Uh, well, about the Pokemon, I'm wondering, do you remember the... Um, the tentacle Pokemon. It's like the character the that, just... that was like a little fire butt that was really cute with the long snout. Uh, I think it, he more looked like um some kind of octopus type. Uh, oh, Tentacool it, like... and Tentacruel. It's like a character that used to exist and now it doesn't exist anymore. It's an interesting Mandela effect. What was the name again? Uh, Tentaquil. Tentaquil. quill kind of like a combination of a porcupine and an octopus so it's 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 about like the v basically because it's like the needles and the kraken do you know which generation it was in i i don't know i think uh okay. that all-time channel uh made a video about it if you're familiar okay, i'll have to look it. into it because yeah I had stopped after about season or Gen three or so, okay. and then when they did the the Pokemon with the in the um in Hawaii, it was uh interesting. So I jumped back in, and uh, it was okay. I guess I haven't seen it. But <laughs> I don't seen, know what like, to the... call it really. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of these goofy bastards back behind me here who was tripped on a wire doing their somersaults and shit <laughs> back here. See, well, there's a lot of wires, so. Uh... I know it. Well, it's science, man. It's a lot of yeah. science. We're doing serious. Science. It looks like a fucking Stuck nightmare. Maneuver. <laughs> it is. It is. That's why. It re that's why we had that little technographical glitch. Was because uh, they were back there doing their somersaults and shit, and they caught one of the cables and pulled the Ethernet cable away. So we had to fix that. We made him go clean the vacuum toilet. So. How did you get up there? Did you get to ride? Did you get to ride in the convertible and listen to David Bowie on the way up there? Or no, I took my jeep. I took my jeep. Oh, now you just, you just oh, you just drove your jeep and just like threw it up there in a little bit and like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, now that we have the technology to have a Tesla, I mean, if you can have a Tesla in space, baby, you can get a jeep anywhere. You know, at four wheel drive, all you got to it, it'll get you anywhere. That's all you have. Yeah, to how do. else are you gonna track on the moon without that four wheel drive? Right. I was thinking we would take. I was gonna just take the space elevator up there. Well, that's out right now. It's 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 been stuck. Oh, that's been scrapped. Oh, they kicked that can down the road. Oh, okay. No, no, it's literally stuck between floors. Oh, oh. people are trapped on it. Yeah. Oh, that's tragic. Are you gonna? Yeah. They're gonna. They're gonna send up the space fire department. 
Well, Isn't I, there I a hear horror that... movie about that? Like this, this whole like elevator of hell or something like that. I don't know, but I know that I've been told I'm going to burn in hell and I'm going to burn in a lake of fire because I tell people that their Bibles change them. So we can talk about that. (laughs) Well, I know that the the Mexican space agency is working on a space escalator. So, yeah, that's even better than the space elivator. That's that Tom and Jerry episode. (laughs) What's that? Why they have a space where Tom dies and he goes up an elevator into heaven. And That's then he like meets the pearly gates, and I, he goes to hell or something like that. I, it kind did of they fix a, really Did they fix the jaundice in his eyes when he got up to heaven? Oh, that's right. Oh, that's <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like there was creepy a lot of yellow eyes. Yeah, uh, creepy motherfucker. Uh, that uh. There's that's a lot weird. of cartoon Mandela eyes. effects if you think Yellow about eyes. it. That's weird. Ooh. Well, uh, Do- Donald Duck has blue eyes now. Like the whites of his yeah. eyes are blue. Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks weird. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. like it's light blue. Yeah. You know the one that used to get me was the damn coyote and the road runner. I used to, I can remember I was little watching that and I'd see he was always ordering shit from Acme and I was like, why the fuck don't he just order some food? You know, why go through all this trouble and just order some food? Call Domino's and get a pizza dropped off or something? Well, call Acme and, you know, they have (laughs) everything else, giant magnets and other kinds of shit. Why couldn't you just get, you know, already roasted Roadrunner if that's your thing, I guess. You know, obviously he's got Amazon or something. He's able to get all this shit in the mail rather quickly. They only sell bird seed. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) <laughs> uh, over on Rockfin, kind of weird dried good, you know. Over on Rockfin, uh, Dan Wiley says my Honda Accord recently changed again. The same car has significantly changed over the last few years. Nathan said his Accord changed as well. Uh, Mark, the word Accord. Anything you want to uh, bring up there? Then maybe there's a meaning behind that. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't thought about it. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. Yeah, Nathan's car repaired itself. What? I feel like it wasn't body damage. I feel like Nathan's car was something different, though. Yeah, it may not have been an accord. I don't know if Dan said it was an accord, though. Somebody was know. telling me about a broken crystal on their watch, and they were going to go and get it, take it to get it repaired, and they went and got the watch, and the crystal was fixed in it. It wasn't cracked anymore. You know, a lot of people of had uh, Mandela effects to do with dental work that they had done as well. That's an interesting mm. one. Oh, uh, it could so be cool. that he had different cars, oh, but I think uh, Nathan's car was a Kia, right? It was like a Kia Sorento. Maybe. I'm not sure. We got to get the kernel on here, though. Yeah. <laughs> Original sure. recipe. For sure. So, I had a and- computer that died for about six months, and then uh-huh. just one day uh, decided to have it turned back on, or it got, yeah, and then just came back on, and it was so. It, it lasted for years after that, and now it's, I don't know, maybe it'll come back. It kind of died again. I'm looking up a cord. Changed his and, name to Lazarus after that happened, too, so maybe that's uh, why. Maybe I got to call him Peaches again. Anybody that's a member on uh, Kofi or Patreon, you guys all have an email with a Zoom link. You can come join the show and be part of the panel. Peaches for free. Are you singing? What are you singing? In a can, they were put there by a man in a factory downtown. If I had my little way, I'd eat peaches every day. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What is that? Is it that it's going down the country, gonna eat a lot? Gonna eat a lot of peaches. (laughs) Going to the country, gonna eat a lot of peaches. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Dude, Mandela song. Effect songs are the know. biggest for me because I was a big Disney kid growing up eh. and um, the the Jungle Book Bare Necessities oh that's a trip you know wherever I wander wherever I roam I couldn't be fonder of my big home was one of my favorite lines like yeah, yeah. I am fond of this home it's dang and now it's like I couldn't be found in my own home. That's sad. And like, kind of like spooky kind of gives that little like, Oh goodness, where am I then? If I can't be found in my own home, 
where am I? Well, it's like the Wizard of Oz, because, uh, and now instead of clicking her heels, she taps her heels, but she's saying, like, there's no place like home, like, because she's not, you know, at home any. Like, we have to get to our home. Like, this isn't our home. Um, I just looked up a chord, and it's kind of uh, interesting if you just open your mind and listen to the context. It seems to be of agreement, okay? To make or agree or correspond to adjust. Um, to, to bring to an agreement, to settle, adjust, or compose. So, like an agreement, like a deal, like, are you ready to make it? Yeah, like, the, like uh, when they push these stories, you know, these countries are all in cahoots, but, oh, these guys are uh, in accord over this. Like, it's a crazy thing. Uh, but that means they're, like, in alignment with each other. I've heard it used or in that even context now that you mentioned. Even if you, or even with your agreement with your allegiance toward light or dark. Yeah. You know? Where are you? And you know, it's I can say God or devil, whichever way they want you want to look at it. But um, where are you in well, accordance? <laughs> there's actually a really interesting Mandela effect um, that I don't think many people know about, um, and it's got a lot of interesting meaning too. So there was this song by a band called Double, and mm -hmm. just the name Double is an interesting name right there. And it was called um, Captain of Her Heart. And it's like, you know, we were talking about the Captain Crunch, but like Captain, it's like a verb too, like to captain a ship, you know, or um, something like that. And now it's um, instead of captain of her heart, it's captain of the heart. So it's like, who's the captain of your heart? Is it like the dark side or the light side? You know, it's another interesting one. If anything, it does get your mind going into some kind of um, into retrospect these things as you start to look into what are the what's the meaning it also gives you self-introspect yeah. i think you know because you start looking at that in accordance with well there again accord in accordance <laughs> with your own self you know is that the key it's all about us yeah, yeah absolutely I, that's why I'm in agreement. I think there's only a few. There's, there's like it's funny. You had to look up the word, and then you're using it a sentence later, and it came naturally because you already knew what it meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to see because a lot of times outside of the context that we sometimes use a word in, you know, um, it helps to look and see because sometimes you see other um, meanings and contexts that the word can come into. You know, yeah, like you like the word clone. How many definitions for the word level? How many different contexts there are for the word level in the in the Webster's dictionary? It's huge. Mm -hmm. And not one of them mentions a fucking globe. That's cool. But um it, it well think of uh, the word fix. Here's a simple little three letter word, and how many different definitions does that have? It means to repair. You could say I'm gonna cook dinner, I'm gonna fix dinner. I'm going to fix this to the wall. Um, there's so many different, we're in a fix. Fixing an animal. Right? We've got a lot of different, that, that word seems to have a lot of different meanings and kind change. of connotations. Huh? Changing, because you got to fix your behavior. You got to change your behavior. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about I that. I think that's uh, what's going on with the word clone, too, because uh, I'm with Brian in that I don't think that the clones are real. And actually, if you go back and think about like the original, um, the sheep, it was called Dolly, which is uh, an interesting connotation because they clone a sheep and call it Dolly. But um, if you look up the definitions of the word clone, um, it really can just mean like an imposter, you know, somebody like imitating. So like it's kind of like an NPC or like someone who's ruled by like the left pillar. It's like um, they're just pretending to be, you know, one of us, but they're like the others, you know, like in Lost. It, it's like two. It's like the wheat and the tear, you know. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's yeah, uh kind of like um if you ever watch Fairly Odd Parents and the anti fairies versus the other fairies, you know, there's like the the opposite bad people of you. Or like Star some... Trek, they go to like uh, the mirror universe. Oh, that one. Yeah. Was what was that show? Stranger Things. With the yeah. Upside down. Where yeah, exactly. Like, or uh, we too. are we really are in an upside down. If you look at everything that we have, it's like what they push is an is an absolute inversion of reality. 
on all levels. Healthcare destroys your health. Religion destroys God. Uh, education destroys knowledge. I mean, it's the opposite. I mean, with, with school, it's not a place for smart people. I love that line out of Rick and Morty. That was one of the best ones. He says, it's <laughs> not a place for, he said, Morty's been missing school. He says, it's not a place for smart people. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, that's why I say I was once educated and then I got better. And everything's the inversion. They tell you that the earth is really tiny and small and the sun is great, big, huge and magnificent. It's the opposite tell you there is a globe no it's not it's the opposite of that it's everything that they push toward you you can pretty much figure it's the opposite of that oh medicine's oh, good I, for no it's not <laughs> I, I haven't thought about that too like um they always tell us that the the moon is getting its light from the sun but what if it's the other way around and the sun is actually black and it's stealing the light from the moon and then that's why they're both getting brighter right now because the moon it's like the right pillar and it keeps on creating more and more energy and the sun eventually is going to get to a point where it can't absorb anymore and it's going to like you know either explode or turn you know light itself well they're having a nasa said that the moon is shrinking and that's going to pose a problem for future artemis missions as they kick the can down the road <laughs> I've seen the moon change uh, just in my house here because a couple of years ago it appeared um, in a window that it never was in before, and it was like that for years. And then a couple months ago, it stopped being in that window. Wow. Yeah, there's been. But, so, I I think it was just within the last year, less than a year, that I saw my first Cheshire cat moon. You know, oh, a yeah. smiley face moon. I yeah, that shit's fucking ridiculous. Face. That shit is it was ridiculous. out yesterday. Yeah, yeah it I was. Mean, it's crazy. It's supposed to be. It goes yeah, over. Yeah, one yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Always side to side for me, and you know, standing up, ne a crescent moon was never laying on its back like that. No, I mean it was like it's fucking smiley face. Yeah, it looks like like There'd be all Not kinds really. of drawings about it, all over the place. Yeah, people would have talked about it. Hmm. Yeah, I've never seen any such thing. And look how many of these flags have a crescent moon with the star in it. You know, the symbol yeah. of Islam, right? Mm -hmm. It's it would that would be, I guess, blasphemous to have it the other way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, this is shit's shit's getting weird. And I think you're right, C three PO. I think you're right. I think we are. I think it's coming to a head. I think that it's. It's accelerating. Another thing that's happening for me is that, and I know, yeah, I'm ancient and shit like that, but um, and of course, time seems <laughs> You're like, like fucking King Tut's that. mask. Yeah, I know. She, <laughs> and listen, I, I helped make that fucking thing. I should I know, know you did. I know you did. Um, you, know, like, uh, you welded it together like the, that lady in The Mandalorian. And she's there like, you go. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that yeah, that's a ticket. Yeah, I was a high priest. Of, <laughs> did you ever? Uh, did you ever see yeah. the Mandalorian? No, man. No, it's actually pretty good. Um, I've seen it. I hear everybody talk season. about it. It's pretty good. It took but, you me know, a time, while to get into it. Time seems to be. To me, time seems to be quickening. Yeah. You it's know, I think mean, it depends like, what you're doing and where your mind is. Like, if you're like high. But like you know, you got your consciousness going. You're feeling well. You guys are doing good. Then yeah. But if you're feeling kind of sick, or if you're still taking certain kinds of things in your body, <clears throat> you know, then you're not gonna be feeling as like time feels a lot slower. Honestly, it just feels weird huh. and kind of sluggish. And then the next thing you know, a whole week passed, and you're like not. Nah. And yeah, but when when feeling well and good, it feels like it's going fast, and it feels like it legit is. It's kind of uh, almost like a like a delay going on i'm i don't know man it's so weird it's like oh my god here we are halfway through february already man and uh yeah for me it goes fast regardless yeah i, I i'm kind of like going this is this is this is amazing to me you know and it's sort of like but uh, there's still that impending feeling that i have that something's coming something's yeah. going to happen and it doesn't feel like it's a bad thing it doesn't it's not like i don't have like it's not a dreadful feeling it's almost like a feeling of i'm ready man let's do it yeah like liberation is coming 
You know, oh, like did you guys, uh, liberation is on its way. Did you see the um the new eco- <laughs> oh, it's not new, but like one of the new economist covers about the uh EV cars from China? No, I didn't see that one. No. Do you have it? Um I I uh, I don't know if Brian wants to pull it up or not, but it's uh it's really it really struck me because it looks like a literal like rapture scenario. Um what like do I, cover of, what should I um, Google? Well, give me some Google terms to try and bring it up. Economist um, what? It would be Economist, uh, January 2024, um, China EV, EV cars. So, like, I think the electric... So, China, if you look up the, the word China, it means uh, divine realm or central kingdom. So, I think that's why Trump was always against China uh, from a symbolic level, because it's like being against God. Um, well, maybe do, like, an image search. Yeah, that's it. So, like, why would the EV cars from China be coming from above us or from space? I mean, like, you know, whatever you want to think about space. But, like, those, there's your, like, your blue beams. And then the electric vehicles, you know, a vehicle is like a body. So, like, are we going to be hooked up with electric bodies? Because mm-hmm. that would be, like, an immortal body. They can suck my fucking dick. That's a hell no for me, dog. <laughs> you don't want a, an electric body? You not, already have one. Not like auto, have yeah, I, I already have an electric in my body, but no, I don't want uh, no, no, artificial, no, 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 no. artificial from them. No, not artificial. No, but that's you, not what I'm talking you're, about. You're, you're no, your body is electric. Your soul is electric. It's energy. Oh, like, like, have you ever have you ever seen a uh, Watchmen? Maybe I misinterpreted what you were saying by that message. Sorry. Did, did you ever see Watchmen, the like superhero story? No, I don't think so. Like, there's this character called Dr. Manhattan, and um, what happens is, like, he he gets turned into, like, this ultimate superhero, but he's, like, this blue electric body. But I feel like that would be, you know, if, if like, immortality is going to be a thing in, like, yeah. a supernatural world with, with magic and stuff, then it would be something like that. Yeah. So I'm no. just saying, like, why are they putting that on the cover of The Economist? Because they're basically saying, like, these blue beams are going to come down from the central kingdom and it's an electric vehicle you know it's electric i'm like i'm gonna wake up and be like fucking raiden i'm gonna be shooting lightning out of my hands well, that's what i'm saying that'd be cool man. yeah <laughs> like, like like zeus <laughs> yeah You're gonna come back as lightning you know who raiden is dave who raven is raiden no he's a character from a mortal kombat game Shoots lightning out uh, of his hands. He's a really popular character. That that was uh, that was after my video game days at home and shit. Um, I topped out on the Atari. Okay. Yeah. That was. <laughs> he so he, he, like, he, I, he, I he Dave, I have a... Dave built Tataria and then topped out on Atari. <laughs> no, I mean for real. We we made the uh, we, uh, they make a, a clone with all the games in it. Of an Atari with the yeah. little joystick. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I had my grandson over here, and he goes, "What's that?" And I says, "Welcome to my world." <laughs> and I was having a blast kicking his ass at Missile Command. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "This is pretty fun." He says, "I says, yeah, this is what we had." And he says, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah, this was <laughs> top of the line video games, babe." And he's looking at me like, you know, you fossil. I was really, really uh, into games until basically the whole 9-11 thing and everything. And then my focus turned on to looking into shit, which is a, definitely a positive thing. Uh, but I was really into games until that point. That was in my mid-30s, you know, 33, uh, when 2010 was. <clears throat> hey, Ash? Yeah. Ash, here's a, here's a project for you. Hey, can you see him? A little, aww. <laughs> It's an I don't. It's an I don't care bear. He's got a he's got a marijuana leaf on his chest. He's an I don't care bear. My wife made this. I love it. I love the rainbow too. It's beautiful. Oh, we went over to see Mama Te- Mama Lisa's apothecary the other day. Um, she's probably still in the chat over here, and we got. Um, she was giving away a shitload of yarn. You're gonna be jealous. My wife was given four huge totes 
full of all kinds of yarn. Some of it's even blanket yarn. So there's going to be oh, lots of bags of dicks getting shipped out. I'm thinking. <laughs> Colorful you, ones too, it sounds like. Did you see Angela's um, video? She made a little video of it and she had them. Yeah. She, my, she bought one of those bags of dicks off my wife. And she had it today and had a thing about how to grow dicks on a tree. And she had them all stuck on this little tree in a pot and shit. You guys are Goodness. sick, sick fucking people. <laughs> Making silly. Yeah, you guys are demented. <laughs> you, Brian's jealous because he wants a bag of dicks. I bet, I, bet, I bet you fucking weirdos don't think we went to the moon. What's that? Who, who thinks we didn't go to the moon? No, we don't go to the moon. Shit, no. <laughs> can't go to the moon anymore and you can land on a rainbow. So, Oh, that reminds me. I was looking. You so know that one guy that they always show that from 1965 that said, um, you know, uh, what was his name? Professor R. Foster. And he says that the moon was plasma. Yeah. It's tricky oh, yeah. as shit, if damn near impossible, to find any information on that dude. Yeah, that's why, I mean, I mean, it's one idea, but I mean, that's not proof of anything, that clip of that random. But I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking for this guy. Yeah, I've I'm never seen online anything or else on. Just it online, like, or in going to like two libraries and it, maybe it older was, libraries. That clip was definitely part of some documentary that I think aired on PBS, Dave, if that helps give you a little more avenue to look for it. But I don't know the name of it. It's, it's, it says here, uh, it was an ABC report. Okay, um, there you go. It says the ABC report does not mention Foster's scientific credentials and the YouTube video description explains that the network has been unable to confirm Mr. Foster's identity, identity or to find any documentation of his work. So I don't know, man. I've been looking around, and there's people that have been searching, like uh, different universities with possible variances of the names and shit. And it's like he's been scrubbed from history. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty suspicious. What do you think, Mark? Mark, what do you think the moon is? You think it's lighting the sun? You said, maybe. I, uh, all I'll really say that I know about it is it's, it's a light. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what else could we know? I mean, I think they're kind of, uh, yeah, I don't think one is lighting the other, in my opinion. Uh, I would say they're independent of each other, but they're not really independent of each other because they line up perfectly for eclipses and shit. So that would kind of be a dumb thing for me to say, but I think they're kind of like doing their own thing. But <clears throat> Well, they represent the Twin Pillars also. You mean the twin pillars represent them? Yeah, or vice versa. I mean, I... that's I mean that's what was actually revered to when the creation of that uh, the pillars and the whole Masonic thing was um, designed. You know, you have Boaz and and Joaquin, I think, or mm -hmm. Joe Quinn or whatever. Anyways, they're um, that's the sun and moon. You know, right. and the lesser one is of course the moon. And then um, with that eye, which I believe that's Polaris, above it all. But I, I look at it like this, man. Um, and, of course, the checkered game board. <laughs> and all those pieces on that game board. But, you know, like a, uh, like a planetarium. The planetarium keeps coming into my head. The planetarium keeps coming into my head. You know, if you can imagine a huge planetarium, you know, yeah. And we're, we're, when you go to a planetarium, you are experiencing the night sky, just as you yeah. would if you were outside. And where's that being projected from? The very center. Yeah. On the ground. However, could, the display is above you. And I wonder if it's not something like that. Could totally again, be that. Totally. Yeah. Uh, it could I be know. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, the but whole also thing it's, could be it's that. symbolic of us. Because like the dome is the is the top of our head, the two pillars are our brain. You know, I've speculated that maybe there is a, you know, there's actually some real what we call stars, and that they they're like uh, kind of observing us. But then there's like a whole bunch of fake ones being projected to kind of drown that out, and also of course to push the whole deception as well. Uh, so I don't know because I I. 
I feel like they could definitely fake the hook and the whole thing. And of course, I, you know, I, I think that way. Um, but then on top of that, it's like I have felt these weird personal connection like to a star before I talked about that. It felt like it was like observing me and all this shit. So it's like, I think it might be a combination up there of like real and fake. We're definitely being observed somehow. And when I say real, I mean, not by any means they say, because whatever we're seeing is really close. <laughs> and, you know, it's it's I think I don't think I'm alone in expressing this that I, I remember and still have that feeling today. But as a small, small child, the the feeling of being observed, the feeling of being watched so much yeah. so that I can remember being alone in the bathroom really little and i can remember my i mean i was sitting there and my feet weren't touching the floor that's how little i was okay and i'm thinking to myself what if this is like one of those experiments i've seen on tv where they have rats in a maze and they're not aware mm -hmm. that the scientists are watching them and shit. Yeah. you know maybe i'm maybe i'm being given these scenarios as a test to see how I react and shit. And I remember thinking that as a long as is young because I had this feeling of being observed. And I think we inherently know that. And that's why yeah, I say I the, is atheist like is, the atheist is basically willingly going, um, you can't see me because I've covered my eyes. I think that's what they're doing, and it's a, and it's a, um, in most cases a way of escaping accountability. Well, I didn't know you were there, shit, you know. I wonder how much of it, too, is I don't want to see you. I'm terrified of what I was, whatever happened, you know? And so to even start looking through the fingers is like, whoa, but eventually you got to take your hands off or yeah. stay hidden. You know, the ostrich in the sand thing, even though they don't actually stick their head in the sand. I was like shocked when I found out. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. I just heard that yeah, recently. I always heard that. Um, so... Beta baby maker wrote, Brian, didn't you get to speak to a Pythagorean? Uh, I don't even know what that is, what that means. Did I get to speak to a Pythagorean? Uh, uh, maybe on a, I was unaware that they were that. What What is that? Dave, you know what that is? Um, and someone who follows the cult of Pythagoras. That's but... what it sounds like to me, man. I mean, I'm, I've <laughs> yeah. spoken to plenty of those people, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Dave, so, yeah. Dave does it every night. Dave fucking rolls with Pythagoras oh every night. <laughs> Completely into the sun cult religion of Hermes or Thoth, if you read. That's you your know. that's your crew, Dave, up there on the ISS, the Pythagorean boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah, that was... Yeah, that's what the they said. Oh, that Reefa man says a follow of Pythagoras. Yeah, that's what... I don't know, man. There's a lot of those fuckers around. Yeah. I don't think well, they even they, recognize... They don't, they don't realize what it, actually it is, you know? They want this thing to be so true for some reason. Um, and I, I can't figure out for the life of me why. Why would you want to have a belief that requires so much mental gymnastics in the first place. I mean, you really have to accept the idea. I mean, it's no different than religion because you're accepting um, impossibilities that nobody's ever witnessed before and taking the words of people that have died a long time ago. They're made to look like scientists, but they weren't. They were mystics and philosophers that were hell-bent on disproving the bible and that's where it first came into was in the reformation that no 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 they, oh you guys are reading the uh the scripture and it doesn't say we're going to prove it to be wrong and so they send these jesuits out and these jesuits infiltrate all the education all the science all of these different areas and start pushing their fucking nonsense and that's exactly where it came from People need to understand that first and foremost, and it gives you an idea as to who is actually behind it. And I'm not talking about a mortal man. I'm talking about there is definitely a dark spirit behind this shit. I mean, when I believe that the story of the apple falling on Newton's head is metaphorical to represent that fruit of the tree of knowledge that was beguiled onto eve the same thing okay 
And there it was that he had to go into Hermes and say, look, the sun is the most powerful thing. And that's what it is, the center of everything. And that's where they brought their shit from. You can even see who was the guy, Johann Kepler, with his, uh, his statement. He even talks about the blinding light of illumination and the joy that he felt, the frenzy that he felt to bring forth a new religion. You know, I mean, these people were anything but scientists. They were crackpots, man. Possessed. Didn't Joseph Smith see a bright light before he saw God and Jesus telling him to make the Mormon church? Indeed. Just Lucifer is too. what? What is Lucifer? What is it? The, 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 light? the light? Illumination. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a lunar kind of thing, maybe. Get those vibes. Yeah, I mean, well, lunar, lunar would be the moon. Uh, one moment. One moment, please. One moment, having technographical difficulties. Two hundred and twenty-five people here on YouTube. About twenty to twenty-five thirty on Rumble. Fifteen on Rockfin. People on Facebook, Twi Twitter, Twitch. Thank you guys. A lot of people here. So, uh, sorry to interrupt. No, no, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody that ruled up in the chat and stuff. But uh, go ahead, man. The floor is yours. I was, just, I was just curious what you guys think, actually, about the eclipse that's coming up. Yeah, we're going to Ohio to watch the eclipse. And, and oh, I've oh, never oh. Uh, seen one yet. Like, I'm, I, I, I'm going to do something. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I know Zulu is having a thing up in New York um, in, a, in a casino where they're going to have a really good view of it. Um, I'd like to go, but I'm, I'm really trying to get ahead a little bit since I just moved into this apartment. You know, I'm like, don't want to, I want to have a, a few thousand dollars saved, like, so I can be comfortable again. So I don't know if I really can take a trip in like two months. But well, I but I mean, like, um, what, what do you guys, do you guys think it's like a marker of anything? Like, it, there's a lot of stuff going around with, you know, the uh, seven years. Yeah, I mean, I would say it's definitely a marker or something, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. X marks the spot. It's going to make an X path right oh, um, from the last one that we just had. We've had Twitter change to X. Um, there's something significant with this X. So I think X means the North Pole. What about when you have like ex wives, ex boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands? What is that? Is that like a similar kind? I don't know. Oh no! Like but either way, I know I'm gonna to stare. I'm gonna stare right at that motherfucking sun. I'll tell you that. So am I. <laughs> so am I. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Man. That's what I'm going. Um, I mean, that's what I want to do, man. It's, yeah, that bullshit. Don't they? There again. Oh, it'll blind you if you look at an yeah, eclipse. Sure. You know how many well, blind ass motherfuckers there would be. You know how many <laughs> examples there would be? It's just so suspicious, dude. They just want you to not see this uh, very important event in the sky, obviously. They don't want you to see it in all its glory because you, there's mm. probably a fucking connection you have to it, like on a deep level, and where if you stare directly at it, you know, maybe some uh, energy gets transferred to you or whatever, you know, however you want to take that. Yeah, yeah. I, I sun gaze, man, <laughs> and I can probably... attest to you that, that's, that your consciousness is tied to the sun. Yeah, man. Somehow. Well, I think that's I one of the main reasons that they're fucking the chem. Cool. I think that's one of the main reasons that they do the chemtrails. Mm-hmm. Just to block that connection. Yeah, they always, like, follow the path of the sun with the chemtrails. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They put those, they mm -hmm. really want to block it out. But, you know, every chance I get when it's out, I sit out, if it's only two minutes, I'll do it. You know, if it's five minutes, I'll do it. Um, go out in the yard and throw the ball around with the dogs, man. I'm, I stop and just let them rest and stare at the sun. And when it's warm enough, I'm barefoot, absolutely barefoot, man. If I'm not barefoot, you know, somehow touching the ground, you know, um, because that, that completes the connection. That absolutely completes the connection. And it's like your whole brain feels like rejuvenated. It's, it's, an, I don't know how to describe it. It's heavy duty endorphins, man. Yeah, I, I ground myself a lot 
because of like electronics, but uh, you know, it has the other effect too. Keeps you in the rhythm of everything. That's what I've said. We're part of this entire um, living machine yeah. organism, Earth. You yeah. know, and if you're cutting the the circulation off to a member of an organism, that organism is going to wither and die or become mm -hmm. useless to that or organism. And, and that's why it's important, you know, feel the pulse, get yeah. in rhythm with the pulse. You have, you're part of this, be in harmony with it, man. Don't, don't fucking cut off your cosmic penis. Exactly. <laughs> Bore a hole up in your gooch. So look, I'm a girl now. You are. Here he goes. Here he goes, Dave. He's going to be cross-dressing soon. <laughs> Does he? <laughs> He's like, soon. I already did that last weekend. You know, I was telling some people about sun gazing, and they're like, you know, you're going to go blind doing that, right? You can't look at the sun. I'm like, oh. And maybe that's why they make Trump look stupid when he wasn't looking when he was looking straight at it that one time and like, oh, look how dumb this guy is and making it like hyped up. That it's just one of the stupidest things that you can ever do. You want to lose your sight? Come on, you can't get that back. Pretty interesting. Kind of weird. Yeah, Trump's but, like Mr. Apollo. This back in my day, we didn't have these board games. The only entertainment we had was to stare at the sun. Oh no, look at little Johnny. His head's on fire. It's gonna fry your brains. That's why they were all stupid back then. That's why we're, and they believed the Earth was flat. That's why we're smart. <laughs> I've, I've I've heard of quite a few things. It's like, <laughs> I had to grab some snackaroos, man. Space snacks. Space snacks, man. Is it in like a tube? You like suck it out of a tube and shit. Yeah, it's goo. It's just goo. It's oh, and you dry like ice cream. Yeah, that's right. Ice cream paste wow. up there. Yeah. Shit! Wait, I got the wrong bag. This is from the vacuum toilet. Hey. <laughs> oh, gross! Nasty, dude. <laughs> I thought this was pudding. Fuck. <laughs> well, they just re they recycle it all anyway. So. They do. Who's oh, like Star Trek. Getting... You know, they just change the energy. You know, and it's right back into the replicator. And there's your food. How they recycle? How they Deanna's recycle favorite was oxygen. chocolate too. Hmm. Well, I mean, how are they resupplying oxygen? How are they doing spacewalks um, on the outside of something doing seventeen thousand fucking five hundred miles an hour? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all relative, you see. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. And the the artificial gravity to keep them on the ground. Don't forget that. I like the mm -hmm. one of the. I think one of the best ones is the guy they show just floating out there. They say he's untethered and he's just floating in space. You've seen that one? <laughs> That's like the cause really fear old. right there. Think about yeah. it. Like you, so a lot of people are kind of empathetic, so they put themselves in their that shoes, and they're like, "Whoa, man!" And then imagine if you get cut off, and then you're just drifting forever, and you can never go back home, which is essentially kind of what they're doing. You know, cutting off so that you don't ever go find, you know, connection, so to speak. Could it could be found of your own home? They did a oh, that's good. They did a sequel to 2001 called 2010. Really, I never heard of it. And that. Um, they John Lithgow was in it, and I it was really I, it had a really good scene. They were right there near Jupiter, and he was getting ready to go out of the uh, of the ship into space to go over to another vehicle or something. And when the when the door opened up and he's looking out, you can his breath quickens and he's real hesitant, you know, to go out. And you get that same feeling because you're looking at that POV, you know, mm. and you get that same feeling. You're like like you were just describing like, oh, shit, you know, I hope this goes OK, you know. But they just treat it like it can happen. Um, no problem. We were just uh, we're I, I started watching another series called The One Hundred, and it's I've heard from, of that. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, man. And this guy up there, he's got to make his way across over to another damaged part of the ship that the, that's up there in orbit. It's like this arc, 
and he lets the uh, the um, the airlock go, and for some reason that propels him toward where he's wanting to go. Anyway, his face shield cracks and shatters open while he's still out in space. And he makes it to the door just right after that happens. And he's fine once he gets inside. And as he's floating, and as soon as he puts the airlock on, then he drops to the ground. And I thought, who the fuck? What is going on? That dude's face would have just blowed out of that thing completely. And the magic why school bus stop? shows it freezing up into a big giant like chunk of ice. It's yeah, I mean, it, it, it would the, just the pressure of it, just the the lack of pressure on your body, you would just explode. You would just freaking explode into a million little bitty pieces, man, instantaneously, like a shook up soda can. I mean, people don't they understand kind of do that. Uh... They do it sort of correctly in Event Horizon, if you've seen that. Um, I think I might have seen I that. I haven't seen that either. This is a lot of shit I haven't seen. <laughs> Event Horizon is really interesting because the ship is like our body again. And then like the uh, engine drive of it, it's like a black spiked ball. But it's like uh, the whole room is like our pineal gland, like a third eye. And uh, there's there's a lot going on in that movie. It's pretty cool. People don't understand what pressure differentials can do, especially when they're extreme. <laughs> extreme opposing pressure differentials are devastating. <laughs> now, those people, if it was true, that went down on that blue horizon or whatever that thing to go look at the Titanic, they did the opposite of what should happen to the space station. They did the opposite. They imploded. You've got the opposite extreme going the other way. You've got all this air inside this little thing, right? That's trying to hold against an an immense lack of pressure. Everything wants to equalize. I don't know how the thing's not sta- how it would ever stay. My together. my people perish from a lack of pressure. Metal? <laughs> <laughs> you would. You would. Well, I don't remember it off the top of my. Head, but I think the song uh, "Under Pressure" has a Mandela effect. What is it? Uh, I don't remember. Off the t- it's been a while since I looked at it. Oh, oh, that's like uh the part where it's like pressure pushing down on me, pushing down on you, something like that. It's like in that pressure. part. Pushing down pressure. on me, pressing down oh, on you. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's pushing and pressing. It's it switched. Is it, oh, what like is okay. It you guys say that sweet dreams are made of this. That, that doesn't make stupid. sense. That shit's right. stupid. Yeah. Like sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I, I to disagree? disagree? That makes like that doesn't flow. Versus these, cause... these and disagrees that that it rhymes and sees. Right? Yeah. And it's like it keeps going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like this is, sounds so like weird. Stop! And I heard that on I think your stream, Dave, and it was like, "What you said this? I don't. That doesn't make sense." I've always heard these because mm-hmm. it rhymes. Totally. Yeah. And Mar- Marilyn Manson uh, covered it and clearly says, the "Oh word. yeah, clearly." Yeah. And it's it's been well, I, used I in a lot of. That's actually from... the one I know. <laughs> I remember when the video first came out, man. I remember the song when it first hit on MTV. And I was like, when the Eurythmics were first being played. And that was one of their first songs that they had on MTV was uh, Sweet Dreams. And I can remember that. I mean, you heard it about every fourth video. They played it over and over, just like a radio station would. Well, she also points to the moon when she says that. She she points at the globe. She points at the, yeah. the and there's a rocket. There's, there's even a guy there's doing a like fucking faking shit on a computer too. Well, there's a computer. There's a globe on the screen. There's a globe on the desk, and there's also an like an atlas rocket on the desk. Oh, kind of. And she a points to separate. all of them. She points to all of them. You know, like she gestures to the ones and points at the screen. 
when she says uh, sweet dreams are made of this. That happens a lot in, st in uh, mainstream media. Mm -hmm. They'll say like, um, you know, this is bullshit and they'll point at a globe or they'll, you know, it, it, like um, in Breaking Space Bad. Space may uh, be the final frontier, but they just made it in a Hollywood basement. Yeah. But like there's a part in Breaking Bad where um, Walt uh, says like, I could tell you that the earth is flat. And then uh, his wife, Skylar says, you know what? I think he just told the truth or something. Like it's like that, you know, it plays out like that. I remember that. Kind of like a phrasical double entendre, you know? Where it's like it meant one thing in the context, but it also means another thing. It's got like the, a double hidden meaning. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Almost like yield. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's the perspective. Joshua says he's just now hearing about sweet dreams. Oh, it's so, so nice. strange. And now that I'm thinking about it, I vaguely, like, I learned it through Marilyn Manson. I kind of learned these guys backwards, right? So I listened to Marilyn Manson, favorite one, these awesome flows, great. And then I remember hearing my mom saying, no, that's not the original. Go listen to the original. And I said this, and I'm like, that sounds stupid. I'm not going to listen to that. <laughs> 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 and I went to go listen to the dude that made a freaking Antichrist album instead. Brilliant. It's all the same. Only the names of change. Oh my God, that's, that's Brian. I thought that it was actually John Bon Jovi. <laughs> I've been that people get us confused often when I say. I, I, yeah. <laughs> and well, and uh, will change. Though. Yeah, now that's will change. Only the names will change. With red, people get me confused with Red Fox all the time. Can I, 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 I got to do a little question. more, man. It's I, I can't just stop there. So it's all the same. <laughs> Only the names have changed every day. We're okay. just wasting okay. away. Okay. <laughs> Man, the, the SPCA is going to get called on you, Brian. I mean, there's a lot of self reflexive. My dogs, are, my dogs are cringing. My dogs are cringing. Dave, right? <laughs> when I walk these streets, a loaded six string on my side, I play for keeps. <laughs> you want me to make you stop? Is that what you want me to make him stop, little gal? Brandon's looking at you like you crazy. Tommy used <laughs> to work on the docks. Union's been on strike. He's down on his luck. Oh, it's his tough. Luck. Oh, so tough. Gina work a diner all day. Working for a man. She brings home her pay for love. Ooh, for love. for love, she said we gotta hold we gotta on hold to hold what on. we got. What it doesn't make a difference if we make it or not. We've got each other, and that's a lie for love. We'll so give yeah. it a shot. <laughs> oh, oh, we're halfway there. Oh, oh. <laughs> I got a See? whole parody on that song, man. I did it. I got a whole parody on that one. Oh, really? Is, yeah. Is, um, let's see. Oh, I was halfway there. Oh, no. Running up the square. I squeezed my cheeks. I tried to make it, I swear. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. He shit is the puns. Underwear. Shitty underwear. <laughs> he shit is the puns. Yeah, it's about yeah, depends. Yeah, <laughs> you know, the whole fucking parody, only the dude's got diarrhea trying to make it home to take a dump. That's where my mind goes, you know? <laughs> you gotta get some depends. <laughs> Ash is having a rough one on that I know, one. I know you were serious about mistaking me for Bon Jovi, by the way, Dave. I knew that wasn't a joke. I did, I was. For a minute there, until my dog started <laughs> howling. But, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> they want to sing along. Come on. It's a unison. Oh, my but, God. Don't get my neighbor's dog going. But Most I really liked Bon Jovi's first three albums. Life. Their first three albums were really good. And Slippery One Wet is where all those hits are from, the third album. After that, yes. I fuck, after that, I couldn't stand their fucking music anymore. Nope. I went to that concert, man. That was an awesome concert. They were on cable. You went to a Slippery One Wet to a dude? Dude, that's sick. They were, fly, they were flying fuck out over the fucking audience and shit on, on harnesses and stuff, playing guitar. It was pretty So, you, yeah, you, you fucking love Bon Jovi, so you can't make fun of me.
No, it was my girlfriend like Bon Jovi. Oh, so. come on now, son. <laughs> <laughs> you probably well, were Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi that's all I know. Yeah, I am Bon Jovi. <laughs> I thought they were kind of like Johnny Come Lately shit, see, for me. You know, I was into the older bands and shit still, you know. Yeah, was, we know. I was like, who's this Bon Jovi, you know? I, I tolerated Def Leppard, you know. Bon Jovi but, was way better than Def Leppard, in my opinion. So you're more a silhouette on the shade guy. Their music slowed down when their drummer lost that arm. I noticed that. You're only played half as fast. <laughs> bon Jovi and Too Short were my shit growing up. Public Enemy. I used to listen to them a lot. NWA? Oh, yeah, dude, for sure. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, NWA, Public Enemy. Too Short was my, you know, Too Short. How, funk, what, what, how, do you like funk? Do you like funk? Like I mean, I mean, I like I like when funk's used in the background of some songs, but just funk. I mean, I don't really listen to it, but it'd be fine. Like if I was out having You're not a funky beer enough, Brian. I'm fucking funky, motherfucker. <laughs> listen, we already talked about it. we're the fucking best around here. We're mad cool. I'm funky. I can I can do the funk. Because we're Dave. the fucking best. Dave, what type of funk you want to do? Bailey's man? going live tonight in Centerville. Like <laughs> I'm talking about some, uh, I'm talking about like some parliament, man. You ever get any, any of that or some, uh, maybe even some old Rick James? I mean, I'm sure I've heard some of it. Why don't you, uh, s s give us a little sample of <laughs> Belt out some funk for us. You know, come on, everybody's heard flashlight. Give us. I don't know that. You never heard that one? No, oh, come on. I've never heard that song. Yeah. No, you gotta look up uh, Parliament on YouTube. They got all kinds of music videos you can check out. Um, fantastic Voyage, you know. Come along a ride on the Fantastic Voyage. Well, I know that because Coolio remade it. Yeah, I remember the that's, Coolio. That's, remade. The only, that's the only reason I know it is because Coolio See, remade it. I didn't it. even know Coolio. I didn't know Coolio remade it. See, that's the that's. You know, that's the thing, too. I'll I saw Coolio live before he was, like, really big. Like, I saw him at Hampton Beach in this little tiny fucking club, Coolio. It was pretty cool. I know Not Fulio. one of my favorites and nothing, but it was cool at the time. I know Fulio. <laughs> He's going by Rasta Bear these days, but... <laughs> I, I'm still, <laughs> like, I, you know, I, you guys can think I'm egging it on or whatever, but I still want to see you guys have a rap battle or, like, a parody song battle. Like, can you give a, can Dude, you okay, free? What's going on with that? What uh, He's been, I've there, been in all kinds and he jumps on all they, different kinds of like streams to bitch about you. And I'm like, well, what's going on? And then you talk about him and I'm like, okay, you guys are just like infighting at this point. Maybe no, I don't know what his problem this battle is. and get it over with Pokemon style, you know? Well, I don't know what it is. I think it's because I, uh, you know, I, I kind of called him out on some of his crazy nonsense. You know, and, and I said, mm. you know, come on, you know, reinc reincarnation of Bob Marley. How do you know that? He says, I was born nine months exactly after he died. And I said, well, you realize that a woman is actually pregnant for 10 months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, well, no, uh, uh, you know, just this shit about getting beamed up by Palladians and everything. And if you believe that shit, that's that's all well and good. But. You know, I'm not going to play pretend. I don't, I'm not buying into it, you know. Mm -hmm. And he likes to come on and totally derail the conversation to some nonsense and that, yeah. rambles and rambles and rambles. And like whatever point he started out on, he's like miles away from when he finally concludes. And it's like, I can't do that. You know, I like him all right and everything. I don't have nothing. I don't feel nothing ill about him. But he got really mad because, see, he's one of the bear cult people from Owen Benjamin. And um, I've said, you know, some things about Owen that he didn't agree with. He felt it necessary to defend Owen. And I'm like, that's a cult. You weren't attacked personally. Oh, so he just called out a cult guy and it's just a whole sh <laughs> mess now. Okay. Well, I, st you know, I agree with Brian. Make a song. Yeah. Done. Well, he, he, he got mad. He thinks that I'm nut house video, and I'm not nut house videos. 
But Nuthouse Video clipped him saying some shit, you know, bear stuff, and made a video about it, yeah. and he got I bent about it, and thinks that I did it, or I was, I had it done, or some other shit like that, and I'm like, I have better There's things to do with there. my day than fuck with you, Rasta Bear, you know? Forget about your worries and your strife. I mean the bare necessities. That's why a bear can rest at ease with just the bare necessities of life. Wherever I wander, wherever I roam, I could be fonder of my big home. <laughs> yeah, so when's the diss track coming out, Dave? You guys gotta stop me if I sing way too long. I will sing a song in its entirety if I don't catch myself in time. Oh, keep going, please. Later. Can we give requests? <laughs> <laughs> my dog so was over So you look under the rocks and plants and take a glance at the fancy <laughs> ants and maybe try a few. S sing us the sun will come out tomorrow. Oh, um, no. no. The sun will come out tomorrow. It'll be a brighter day tomorrow. There'll be sun. <laughs> that I I really Come on, Dave. You know I got a beautiful voice, and I'm like melting I, you no, hot right not, now. It don't matter who sings. I can't stand that fucking song. <laughs> <laughs> he can't stand. He hates fucking the sun will come out tomorrow and Judge Judy. I could see like, the sun will come out tomorrow. Why people might hate it because it got beaten into our head well, so much. They were the pushing. Annie. Listen, when they made that Broadway musical Annie, okay. I happen to they like the movie pushed. Annie, but I, I, I know the Broadway is different, but I happen to enjoy the movie Annie a lot when I was growing up. I well, they it. finally did the, made the movie, but I'm talking about even when I was younger and when they first came out with it. They were pushing that shit, contests and stuff for these girls to be Annie and all this. And press one in the chat know. if you liked the movie Annie. Press two if you thought it was lame. I was a big fan. Continue, Dave. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, I was just like, I heard that song so gosh dang much. I was like, I don't even want to hear that shit anymore. You know, I, 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 I'm sick of seeing redheaded girls singing. I don't want to hear little girls singing That's, that song. Anybody. Sounds like a you problem song. It was a you problem. Was. <laughs> if something's pushed on me real hard, I will fucking reject it. It's just, that's my nature. Well, you know. Tomorrow, 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 there's always tomorrow. It's only a day away. That one's hard. How about turmeric, turmeric? <laughs> it's always oh, been turmeric. There's <laughs> never, one. never, ever been an R. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I really just. Oh, Almost every grocery good. store knows that it was turmeric. We, we got endless amounts You're of fucking fruit from God Collie's food line. He's supposed to be laying with the lamb, and he's the not. Food, he's the food line. Turmeric. The food line laying with the lamb. Yeah, man. Yeah. I thought it was the duck. <laughs> I thought it was the duck billed platypus and the orangutan. Yeah. Right. Where are oh, there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of hate for Annie in the chat. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just don't have to be pushed on it. I watched it once on in like a like a Annie's live cool, thing. Man. Really Annie's awesome. Classic. Loved it. Only time I saw it. I have really good feelings on it. Maybe that's what it is. Being pushed or not forced, right? It's all about force and consent. What, what some about rich guy? Some rich guy, Daddy Warbucks, an elite, buys an orphan girl. Oh, see, story. I don't know the story, you know man. I just know the songs. I wonder if she was a Ukraine. I wonder if Annie was really a Ukrainian NPC. Oh, it's See. like the people that listen to the beat but not the lyrics of the songs, but like movie style. Ooh. Yeah, I'm serious, man. I had to think about that. Wow, that's kind of. Things. I don't know about that movie. Oh, that's weird. You're gonna now go I got to rethink the Jungle Book, too. He's like, hey, I'm this rich fucking guy. I'm going to go down here to the orphanage and buy me a little girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's look at what that story really is. I, I, I didn't I, know that. Dude. I was young enough that I just know that tomorrow's long, and it was really fun. I, the rest of all that, all that went, whoo. 
What do you guys yeah. think about the funniest movie of all time coming to America? Come on, Dave. You don't, Dave. You don't think Coming to America is one of the funniest movies you've ever seen? Yeah, I think it was pretty funny. I laughed pretty hard. I'd have to say Beverly Hills Cop was a better work with him. Oh, that's a great movie too, but that is not better yeah. than Coming to America. But no, that's I a think really great. Coming movie. to America is better. Yeah, but they're both really good. But I do like Beverly Hills Cop. I like all of them, but Coming to America well, is just number one. There's somebody movie. whose career went right in the toilet. He got caught with a tranny hooker, and bam, never hear from him anymore. Boom, over. I watched that remake like, of Coming to America, that new one that they made. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, it wasn't no good. No. But he was funny as hell. I remember. I can remember. I was stationed dude, down in Fort Delirious and Raw, movie. those are two of the best stand-ups Yes. Ever. Dude, we, I can remember sitting at picnic table outside on a Saturday afternoon with a boombox and me and my friends sitting there drinking beer at Fort Gordon that had just come out and we're listening to that and laughing so hard that my sides ache the next day. That shit with the barbecue and the goonie goo goo, man, that shit, I just laughed so hard when he went, did that whole bit about his dad. That shit was great, man. Dave Day Trooper see- says The uh, Naked Gun is his favorite funny movie. That's a great one, too. Yeah, yeah those I, are good. I like yeah, those kind of movies. N- Naked yeah, Gun. I, I really, uh, and this is one that did get a lot of hype, but I thought it totally lived up to the hype. Especially the first two. I really like the sequel as well. Hangover and Hangover 2 are fucking hilarious movies, dude. Those movies I didn't really awesome. like those. I really like that. Did you ever see, uh, and I, I like those ones like Airplane. Yeah, yeah that's, cool. that, that's a lot like <laughs> Naked Gun. Right? Yeah. Naked Gun. Have you ever seen one called Top Secret? And it's got Val Kilmer yeah. in it. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. He says, do you know a little jerk? You know, it's like it's almost like a World War II type movie where they have to go behind enemy lines. And uh, he asks the girl, he says, do you know a little German? She goes, yes, I do. He's right here. And this little fucking German midget comes out and says, guten Tag, and starts speaking German and shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And it's one of those movies where everything's just not what it seems. Mm. Just carrying it to its extreme. And I would say um, funniest movie is, is coming to America. And I think the funniest TV show ever is definitely Eastbound and Down, Kenny Bowers. That's fucking hilarious. But let's <laughs> welcome Joe. Great. Joe Martinez, Joe yeah. from Albuquerque. What do you no. think is the uh, funniest movie of all time, if you had to pick one, and the funniest TV series of all time? Oh, I'll tell you mine. Number one, this is Spinal Tap. Mm. <laughs> funniest movie ever made. This is Spinal Tap. Okay, I don't know that TV. You don't know this is Spinal Tap? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that one's great. It goes to 11, Joe. <laughs> it goes to 11. Yeah. Yeah. He said, and, why um, don't you just make 10 louder? He says, you don't understand. This has 11. <laughs> <laughs> what's not, what's TV the TV show? It's hard to say. It's hard to say funniest TV show. Have you uh, ever seen Eastbound and Down? No, I would say something older like Seinfeld or some the Cisco Kid. Oh no, that's not funny. That's just yeah, it's Seinfeld probably. Okay, I was never into Seinfeld. Seinfeld has kind of mean, you know. I never thought about it till someone said um, that Arrest, uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia is like Seinfeld on crack. And then I rewatched Seinfeld, and I was like, wow, these people are kind of like sarcastic and superficial. Like, yeah, you give them alcohol, then you get Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Kind of weird. Trading Places and the original Arthur movie are fucking hilarious, too. So my, my, I think the funniest movie, and it's I've seen it so many times, I can quote every line from it. The Blues Brothers. I never get tired of watching The Jerk. Oh, yeah, that's Steve a good one. Steve Martin. Yeah. That fucking movie is one of the best. And I got to say, probably one of the, I think, the funniest top TV shows that I've ever seen in my life was Taxi. That was pretty funny. Is that Danny DeVito? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that, that vaguely. That show was funny. Now, I like Tim, too. Ruthless People, if you've ever seen that, that's a pretty funny movie, too. That's got a real twist to it, and oh, my God, he's such an awful little person in that movie. It's <laughs> Danny DeVito with a lot of money. It's 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 uh, the character. He's like the character on Taxi, but he's rich. And so, you know, his... 
his methods have they're still there you still see uh what was his character's name on that show louis louis de palma tommy boy tommy boy has got to be top 10 comedy for me for sure oh uh, yeah, yeah tommy like too. when tommy he broke boy's that boy's fucking boy. door and then set <laughs> back on the car and shit so that when the guy comes yeah, back and he goes, what'd you do like a fucking movie cracks me up man what about uh billy world. billy madison oh uh, that's hilarious too man Joe Dirt's pretty good too, but I would I'd probably put that a tier below those other ones. But it's really good. I think oh, my so three I favorite, a lot of my my luck. three funniest movies, okay, are uh, Blues Brothers, Spinal Tap, and Airplane. Airplane was yeah, mentioned. Like yeah, that's good. I like Airplane. I haven't. Seen, and uh, I have seen uh, uh, Top Secret. That's funny, man. <laughs> it's it's I you know what, David? I saw it for the first time in my life. Like three weeks ago, man, I couldn't believe how and, funny and it. Was. And if you guys ever see like, Malibu's Most Wanted, no, yeah, I didn't care for it. <laughs> I thought that movie was fucking hilarious. <laughs> Saw a lot of people commenting about Taxi, and that was a good one. That's the guy they had on there. Um, Latka was the character. He was from a country nobody could ever oh. figure out what country he was from. What about and like his mom? His mom was sending him homemade cookies. And everybody in the taxi stand was like really digging on these cookies. They couldn't get enough, man. And they were having to send more and more cookies to him. And everybody, pretty soon everybody's working triple shifts and shit. And they found out that one of the ingredients in the cookies was coca leaves. And that's why yeah. everybody was spun out working and shit, just going all fucking crazy. Dave, what about the uh, hope, like the first five fucking Police Academy movies? The first Those, one was funny, second one was okay, but then they just got retarded. You know? Yeah, I, I liked I liked about the first five of them. They had at least like eight or nine. I thought it got really cheesy at the end, but I thought those were fucking funny. You know what else makes me laugh like steady throughout the whole damn movie, like laughing hard, is uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the first one. Oh, God, I couldn't watch that. I tried to see that one again when I was like, my no. older is so no. close to me. Something about his facial expressions just really creeped me out. And it might be because my first instance of knowing about him was through that crack about PSA, you know, the PSA about crack. And like, this is crack cocaine. I'm like, oh, okay. And so when I saw him in like his actual film, it was like kind of odd. Three best sequels. Oh, sorry. What was I, what? No, I said sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. First time oh, I, I ever saw Pee Wee Herman was in an old Cheech and Chong movie. And he was one of the patients in in this uh, insane asylum that Chong ended up in. He was tripping on acid and he ended up in this freaking insane asylum. And he's going, I'm the hamburger man. Ha, 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 ha. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And, you know, uh, and then to see him doing a kid's show was like, what? That's that dude that was in Cheech and Chong. What the hell? He was also in Blues Brothers for a second. Oh, wow. He was. He there's another one. They he got caught whacking his monkey in the movie theater <laughs> and shit, and uh, he never really recovered from that one. Whacking his monkey in the movie theater. He was. All right, three best sequels of it. Ready? My three three best sequels: Terminator Two, Back to the Future Two, and Return of the Jedi. Road Warrior. Thunder What's that? Right. Is that a part Road two? Road Warrior was, was part two. Mad Max was the first one. Okay. Road Warrior was the second one. Road Warrior is better than all of them, in my opinion. Yeah. Better than, Term really better than Terminator 2 and Back to the Future 2? Yeah, those are going to be in my, my list right there, Brian, because I love anything that has to do with time travel. That was a great movie. Because it, I don't know, it just fascinates me, the whole concept of it, you know, and I like to see how the writers of the story are going to get around paradoxes. You know, like, how do you... Hey, I'm an original movie? Star Trek guy too, Dave. Like, I like the first oh, yeah. five Star Trek motion pictures based on the original cast. I'm mm -hmm. down with all those movies, man. Search for Spock, all that shit, man. I don't know, they got kind of weird. Uh, LDS as it growing up. 
The remake's good too. They made the remake with the uh, what's that dude's name? But they made two two movies, maybe even three now. And the guy from Heroes played Spock. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those that move, those good. movies are very good. I thought. Yeah. For for a remake yeah. of something I used to like, and you you know I'm gonna hate a remake, you know. Those were good. Did you like the original TV series? Yeah, I like that. I love the original TV series, but I never got into the next generation of the other shows. That's why I really like the first five movies because it was focused on the original uh, people as well from the original series. I always thought Picard looked like a big penis, and I just couldn't get into it. He, I'm serious, dude. I didn't want to get into. It. Yeah, dude. I didn't. I, he looked like a big penis, and uh, I knew that like Captain Kirk was the man, even though we know now he's kind of a jabroni. But Captain Kirk was the fucking man, and uh, fuck this Picard guy. I mean, I didn't want to watch. Picard different... was the straight laced guy that knew how to bend the rules. You know? Yeah, he was kind of not too great with kids, but damn it, he knew how to do it. And he, you know. I'm down with Spock and fucking McCoy and Kirk and shit. I mean, like, Picard can go fucking buff his helmet. Well, a lot of the thing that happens is I found myself doing it, too. And at first, uh, I didn't I didn't care for Next Generation when it first came out. And it's because I tried to equate the characters with characters from the first show. You know? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like, oh, he's no, he's no James Kirk. Exactly, you know, dude. That, can, you know, that kind of thing. But once you find out and you see what their characters are, of course, they're going to be different people. They're from another generation, future into the, you know, from when the old series was on. And, you know, they've, they've advanced a bit more. And, of course, they're going to be different people. And so once you get into the um, into their characters a little bit, um then you see that the storyline is actually carrying on just like the plot of the first uh, series where they really are. And you start to learn a little bit more about why these different races hate each other and shit. Um, the connection between the Vulcans and the Romulans, that they're actually the same species. Mm-hmm. Some, Yeah, I mean, there's a whole, a whole litany of shit that ends up um, being revealed through that, through Deep Space Nine, through Voyager, um, all the different spinoffs that came. Yeah, from. I couldn't get into none of the spinoffs, man. I just like so the original. once I allowed myself, once I allowed myself to get into that like that, then I I watched Enterprise, which takes place before Kirk, and before having beam me up technology and shit. But they still had this starship, the very first Enterprise. Yeah, and um, the guy uh, Quantum Leap, what's his name? Scott Bakula. I yeah, think he's the the main captain. Now that's a pretty good show too. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up. That was a good show. For sure. I think what a lot of gets stuck is next gen, especially the first season, copies the original series almost to a T at some points, like the Naked Now. Uh, episode it's it's a complete almost copy of the original series so it, it can be kind of like well i'm watching the same show but with different people and it's it, it once they get off on their own footing it's a lot easier to like start seeing them as just a totally different crew and it's part of like what Sav is saying where there's an episode where like everyone finds out they're all connected from one being and they do this whole puzzle throughout the entire universe and they all have to come together at this one planet and then they all put together all their pieces and they're thinking it's gonna be like some kind of cool oh spoiler some kind of cool weapon or something and yeah it's actually like oh hey guys um so you're all from the same place and uh we're all in unison so i hope that this like fun puzzle got everybody to talk and come together as one and realize that you're all from the same place Hmm. what about groundhog day groundhog day Top ten fucking comedy. Never seen it. You never saw Groundhog Day. There's a lot of movies I personally have never seen. Like my favorite movie was Clue, and I rewatched it repeatedly for a long time. Um, and then it was Idiocracy, and now rewatching it's kind of weird. Where it's like everybody in Idiocracy is wearing Crocs, <laughs> and then if you look into the background on why they used Crocs, it's like because they thought no one would wear such a stupid looking shoe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have you seen um the movie Free Guy? I have seen that. Mm. 
That's that was pretty good. It's kind of um, it's it's kind of a a wake up movie if you if you watch it, um, kind of like the Truman Show, but on a different level. Oh, it's where an NPC in the video game gains awareness it's really cool because it shifts from inside the game to the programmers and shit back and forth and this ryan reynolds he's this npc and oh, wow. he's he's walking through this thing i forget what the name of it is like sin city and there's like car crashes and robberies and shit this is an everyday occurrence he pays no mind to it his job he's just a, works at the bank which gets held up all the time they're used to it no big deal and then one day he just decides to do something different. And he's like, oh, these people, the sunglasses people, they're like superheroes. They can do everything. You know, it's amazing. And then he gets a hold of one of the players' sunglasses. And all of a sudden he's seeing like coins and shit in the air and med packs and stuff like you'd see in a video game. And he takes them off and you don't see them anymore. And then he's like, oh, my God, look at this. And he says, now I have those same powers. And the programmers can't figure out who this rogue player in this huge online game actually is. And they can't shut him down. And it's it's really wild. It, it's on several different levels. I've watched it like three times and gotten three different levels of a story out of the whole thing, even up to and including a battle between God the Creator and, and the Shaitan who's taken over this world that these other people created then they didn't create it to be the game that he wanted it to be. It was supposed to be a place where everybody could just go and hang out and do anything they want to in their imagination. And it's 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 really a cool flick, man. You got to check it out. That sounds cool. What was it again? Freeman? Free Guy. Guy. Oh, yeah. you know, that sounds really familiar. I went to go visit Yeah, my it's a recent one. It's like in the last yeah, two years. It was yeah. just kind of playing in the background. Um. He like has like a super jump at one point, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he can afford yeah. these shoes. See, he's before he's walking along and he'd see these shoes in the store, and he never has enough money in his account to buy any, right? And he's like, one of these days. But then after he's got these glasses, man, he got all this money because he's finding it and shit. And then he sees the shoes and he can buy them. And so he's got these things now, and then they make him able to jump. And that's when these programmers come in as characters and try to take him out. That's probably the part you saw. I think the movie uh, Yesterday is really underrated. Anybody into the Mandela effect, that's essential viewing, I think. I think that movie's so cool, and it's so Mandela effect. Like, that's totally what's going down. I'll tell you what, it's a must yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm must good. see. I've seen it too. Ne nefarious. Nefarious. Yeah, so for anybody that doesn't That's... know, uh, it's a movie about this guy, he's riding his bicycle, and like he has a little wipeout or whatever, he wakes up in the hospital, but it turns out the whole world lost power for like, and everything went out for like a few seconds or whatever, something happened, some some big shift or something, um, but anyways, when he wakes up, there's some things that never existed, he ends up finding out, one of them I think might be Coca-Cola or something, but the big one uh, is the Beatles. The Beatles never existed. Nobody's ever heard oh, wow. of the Beatles. Um, so oh, what he does <laughs> in the movie is, like, he's playing a Beatles song once, and that's when he realized people are like, wow, that's beautiful. What was that? And he's like, you don't know? Like this, <laughs> you know? And then so what he does is uh, when he figures out that these things have basically all been Mandela affected out of reality, literally what, what's happened, um, he writes the Beatles music over off his memory and he starts performing it. Then he gets signed to huge deals. Now he's like the biggest star in the world. But there's other people that are Mandela affected too that remember the Beatles and they start following him around and showing up to the shows and shit. It's fucking really cool. That's a good yeah, nice interesting. Uh, I saw previews for that. What's it called again? I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. Yesterday. You need to watch it. Yesterday. yesterday. Totally Mandela effect, like uh, the Beatles and some popular brands and stuff. Uh, and that's, he died. that's probably like the only the only popular culture thing that deals with the Mandela effect in a respectful way. Yeah, and it doesn't act like what it's addressing Mandela effect at all. But that's totally Mandela effect. The Beatles and Mandela affected out of reality. What Ash? Well, I was curious what Mark was gonna say. Oh, oh well, I was just gonna <laughs> say. Uh... 
like how we were talking about like the electric body thing before, like with that um, uh, Economist cover. So like w and yesterday, um, the thing, the catalyst that gets the whole plot going is like it's a worldwide EMP, um, like an electromagnetic pulse type of thing that takes out all the, you know, electrical infrastructure for a little while. But that's like a really common trope in movies. Um, like in the Matrix, they do EMPs. Oh um, yeah. And there's a there's a lot. Uh, I don't the know if show I twenty four used head. to push that a lot. Yeah, there's, there's a there's Star a Trek episode where um, they make a weapon that kills the whole planet on accident. And and they also like, talk about like um, with atomic bombs, like um, if you blow them up in the upper atmosphere, then it'll create like an EMP effect down here. So I think like something is going to happen that's you know related to the symbolism on that Economist cover, where like we're the EMPs, um, because like in that movie Watchmen, or like it's like a comic book, like. Like the Doctor Manhattan character, he like is the EMP, and like um, like Neo in the Matrix, he is the EMP. Like, there's a point where he could just s stop the the robotic Sentinels just with his own power. Um, and there's there's like several. I can't think of them right now, but there's like several things where like the person is the electrical discharge that that disrupts everything. So. I feel like that's that's coming. Like I I, I don't know exactly how it's going to play out, but I, I just feel like you know something along those lines is going to be happening on on this planet because because things are going to change. Like like physical nature is going to change. It's going to become like more electric, more magical. So we're being trained to be new. All of us. We're all new. In, you know, in to a, a way. Degree. Like that, that's like a fictional you know character, obviously, but and but I think like well, if yeah, you. But... Um, amalgamate like or like uh, you know if you take like all these stories and put them into one story I think that's the story that's going to happen you know the feeling is palpable that something gigantically cosmic is going to happen in our lifetimes yeah like, oh uh, Blade, Blade Runner uh, is another one well I mean god what like, we're seeing and the revelations we're seeing about this place with the fucking you know which is yeah, just last to, uh, several years, runner, seeing yeah. that they lied about where we are and where we came from, and now reality as a whole, we're figuring out is completely different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say we're coming up to something huge. <laughs> yeah, and that would also erase all the data in the world, so like no one would care about like you know their bank accounts or anything like that because it would just all yeah. be erased. Yeah. Thirteen thousand reels of data is already missing, so you know what's a few more. <laughs> oh, but they're really going to the moon in two years, guys. You're gonna see. So just shut up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I've heard that. <laughs> it's gonna look so funny. It's gonna look so funny if they go through with this one, and I don't think they will. I don't think they will because they know it's gonna look too funny. They just keep kicking it's the can. Look... Well, that's oh, why they're prepping with Elon Musk saying, "Oh, it looks so fake. Yeah. It's real," you know, so yeah. that you, eventually you're yeah. like, "Oh, that that is." That's exactly what they do. They did it with 9-11. It was just like a movie, just like a movie. They do it all the time. They've had to postpone it, though, now for about two years. And now they said that the moon is shrinking, which is going to give them even more difficulty. It's going to be harder to hit their target, man. <laughs> well, they got past the Van Allen belts. Wow, that, that firmament really got them for a while, huh? Yeah, even the astronauts say they can't get past it. The Van Halen belt. <laughs> 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 you gotta be careful up there, man. You get hit with a bunch of Eddie's riffs, man. It could devastate you, blind you. Mainstream, you know what can happen? You guys are unpatriotic fucks. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go with that. Hey. I'll go with that. I, I think patriotism is a form of fucking Stockholm syndrome. Hey, really Amanda, do. in the chat, Raven Wolf, good to see you. I agree with that. Oh, dude, the patriotism. I did a stream. I did a stream that I titled "Your Patriotism is a Mental Illness." I think I titled it. Totally a mental illness. <laughs> it it's absolutely is, man. If you disease. really look at it, because look, I'm not talking about your allegiance toward your fellow man and your neighbors and your countrymen. Okay, I'm talking about your allegiance to a group, a corporation, full of psychopaths that do nothing but start. 
problems with other corporations around the world continuously in order to feed their military industrial complex and make money off of your gullible ass. That's it, man. Send your kids off to die in this bullshit. You know? And they're getting ready to try to do it again, man. Listen, I, I, we could keep going for a bit, but I am hungry, so I'm going to step aside for about five minutes while you guys chat it up so I can eat up some food. I'll be right back. Eat it, eat it, eat it, <laughs> eat it. Put it in your mouth and eat it. <laughs> I do appreciate those that enjoy a good parody song. I was, I like Weird Al. I like Weird Al. Amish Paradise. That's that, fucking oh, yeah. uh, that Eat It video. Yes, yeah. it's so epically great. I could have named that as one of my favorite comedy movies. <laughs> Three minutes. I'd movie. say that with fat. Your butt yeah. is wide. Well, you mine is that, too. I, I thought Eat It was in a class by itself, but what do I? Uh, I like fat. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch your mouth, or I'll sit on you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I grew up listening to Weird Al. It's my favorite thing to do, just make off-the-cuff parodies, especially about cats, because usually that's what's around me. But, yeah, parodies where it's at. Because there's so many cool, like, that's what everyone talks do about. Like, oh, the beat's so do good, one. but the lyrics are really disturbing if you listen to them. So if you just make your own, you know? True. Yeah. You know, what Brian was talking about and what David was talking about, about the countries and patriotism and all that. If there's anybody new here li listening, if, if this kind of content is new to you, it, it may take a bit to wrap your head around it. But the fact is, all the countries are puppets and the puppet masters are people we don't know about. And they might not even be people. But you have to know that all the countries secretly work together. All the countries are secretly in cahoots. They all follow orders from an invisible leadership. Yes. I got to agree 100%. Joe. And you have to know that. You have to know that. Like all the countries are just all running around like, you know, like children. And we don't know who the mama is or the dad. But we don't right. know who's yep. calling the shots. We don't know who's calling the shots. But the countries are all secretly working together at the highest levels. They are in cahoots. They are the puppets. Countries are all puppets. And the puppet masters are invisible. Whenever there's a big issue, they're always in lockstep. That's right. That's yes. exactly right. Every time. Yes, yeah. every time. And that's it, it does, and that, that's an indication of top-down coordination. Absolutely, 100%. Um, they all agreed on the last three years, every measure, you know, four, and there years, couple, David. four yeah, years, four years. So, <laughs> I mean, there were a couple countries that weren't going along with it, little small countries and shit, but if you'll notice, they have been, their leadership has been conveniently replaced with those that will go along with the program. They were thought to be insignificant once and now they're not. Um, so yeah, it shows top down the Antarctic treaty. We're going to listen to that. Even though we hate each other, we're at the brink of war with one another. We're going to cooperate on that. I mean, come on, man. You got to be a, a blind man can see this shit, you know? If, that, if it was an actual war, that'd be a tactic to go on in there and hide in Antarctica and be like, oh, yeah, we're totally keeping up the treaty. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there's no and tolerance. Then, zero tolerance you can't go so i'm going to get some coffee mugs made with a penguin an armed penguin that says you ain't going bro <laughs> <laughs> perfect you ain't going bro i don't know i guess austin wits it's uh getting shit together to go and he's gonna hmm. check and see about this 24 hour sun everybody's uh clamoring about mr beast went there and saw a 24-hour sun why didn't he fucking film it then when when where did <laughs> antarctica ah antarctica um antarctica doesn't even exist we don't have to talk about this right now but i've been making videos about this on my channel antarctica does not exist people it's simply not there you cross the 60th, what's going to be there? I'll bet you it's going to be more land and water. But the difference is it'll be perfect land. 
You know, I wonder about that because mm. you look at that 1587 or Bono Monte map, right? And they depict Antarctica as having plants and animals yeah. and all <clears throat> kinds of shit, man. Just another landmass. Yeah. I mean, the North detailed Pole. coast, you know, inlets, little inlets that go around with a detailed coast on the other side of some of this shit, too. I mean, somebody mapped that. Yeah. And actually, you know what? You can even say that it's proven to an extent that that map's real because it changed with the Mandela affected maps. Mm -hmm. So it's based on real measurements. Yeah, some somebody, I, I, I don't know, that thing... Um... I've got a I've got a a replica of it, um, thirty inches by thirty inches, which is an odd size. But the original is ten foot by ten foot. Yeah, it's huge. It's gigantic, and uh, so I'm gonna have to get a custom frame, have a custom frame built for uh, this map. Which reminds me, I'll probably go into town tomorrow and see if I can find somebody that does that. I think there's a place in town. I'll have to check. If not, I'll have to go all the way over to the big city into Harrisonburg. I know they got a place over there. Yeah, there's a really nice digital file of the. Yeah, if you go on the David Rumsey map collection, you can pull up an interactive map of that and really, really high resolution. You can zoom in. And I got yeah, to look awesome. at it really close. And when you look at the North Pole, you know what they've got right at the very center? A capital G. Yeah. And I'm like, what's that about, man? Well, I think that ties into the two Gs that we see a lot in the Mandela effect. And there was like two Gs on Kennedy's license plate also. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, really interesting. And depicting, I mean, there's the areas there. It says this is a land of uh, little men that live under the ground. And then there's another area called the uh, Region de Gigantes, the area the land of the giants. And it depicts like big people on the drawing and on the map, too. And I'm like, and it's right I there. I think there's like category. several. Yeah. <clears throat> no, like all these little of, people like live like under a tree. Show. They what now? Ash? Do they live under a giant tree, these little people that you're talking about? It didn't go into that much detail. Oh. You know, it's just notations on the map. Um, there's also, if you look at the Mercator North Pole. That map right has there, tons of stuff on it. It says right so on it, it says, here's the land of the pygmy men yeah. that stand between four and five feet tall. Um, and also there are giants. That's what I got when I Google translated it. So I'm like, what are they talking about? And then I started thinking, oh, yeah, what about Santa at the North Pole with his elves? You know, and I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that No, there's I something to the gnome thing for sure, yeah. Yeah. Like, why are, like, it's garden like gnomes, recently, like, such a big too. deal? You know? Mm -hmm. Like, everyone knows about garden gnomes. And it's like, well, what's the garden? You know, it's like the Garden of Eden, you know? So are these, like, gnomes or elves from the garden, you know? People talk about when they uh, popularity do in the craft different, scene too. People do like ayahuasca or DMT. They talk about the elves running the, the machine and shit. Yeah, the clockwork elves. And there's like a lot of Mandela effects about elves and dwarves and things. Oh, really? We got the dwarves from uh, Snow White where it's like um, instead of going off to work, now they're going home from work. So it's like, did, were, are there like elves around us that are working? And, and then, you know, now they're about done with their work, so they're going to go home, you know, is it something like that. Um, didn't they have a scene where they went to the mines and then went home? I think so. But the song used to be, it's off to work we go. Yeah, it I hope, I hope. It's off to work we go. What do they say? It's off to yeah, work we go? No, it's it's home from work we go. I've never heard that. I hope, life. I hope. It's home from work we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. don't know about that. That, that one kind of like didn't, that didn't resonate well with me when I heard that. That's went, There's weird. something wrong here. This ain't right. Definitely not right. 
I was even thinking too, I mean, this could be a stretch, but it's good to think about these things. Like one of the big Mandela effects is Pavlov's bell. Um, it's no longer a bell, it's a metronome. But yeah. like, if you think about the word metronome, it's kind of like saying like a city gnome, you know, like, like the gnomes are in the cities, something along those lines. Yeah, and that's just so weird, the the, the idea of a metronome over a yeah, bell. Yeah, it doesn't even make sense. But also think about this, too. It's another thing to do with bells, right? Because right. you know, originally we thought it was, it, we were told that um, Pavlov used a bell and that when he um, rang the bell, the dogs would salivate. But now it's a metronome. So that change in itself, I like what you got going on with the metronome, but there it's also another like Bell Biv DeVoe. There's another one where it changed. The bells are changing. Tinkerbell. Oh, Tinkerbell. Yeah. yeah. Tinkerbell used to be one word. Right. And she doesn't do the, you know, the flying around the castle anymore. Um, there's a bunch of bell ones. Yeah. So that's, that's another instance of that. I um, even wonder if the Liberty Bell is a Mandela effect. Like it would have to have been like a really old Mandela effect, like maybe before we were born. But like, it's weird that the Liberty Bell has like a big crack in it, you know? Yeah, and what they say that was because it cracked because it cooled too fast or some shit like that when they made it. And I'm I like, think that is that, what I heard. That sounds like a Mandela story. backstory. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Why would it have a crack? In it? That's what I was always told. That's why it was in there. What What about the spelling of Manhattan? Not a lot of people are affected by that, but anyone here? That one doesn't yeah, resonate I... with me. I'm not like 100%, but I do remember it being E-N. There was an E somewhere in it, I think. I remember. I, I think it was E-N. You, you know, E-N. there's a Manhattan Beach out near Steffi's house that's spelled with the E-N, unlike the A-N in New York. And Los Angeles used to be Los Angeles. Yeah, that was for me, too. What, with an O? Yeah. Yeah. For me, anyway. Brian. And, and for me, uh, Arnold, Sw- Arnold Schwarzenegger, he used to end in AR and not ER. And I used to think how weird it was that his name sounded like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It sounded like ER, but it was an AR, and now it's always been an ER. What's yeah, I remember from? that, too. Yeah, AR. Because it was like swagger. Yeah, it was the weird. T also. Get to the chopper. <laughs> You must get to I, I spent a lot of time. Uh, I spent a lot of time in Manhattan Beach back in the early nineties, uh-huh. and and the the friend of mine that I was with and and her mom, we were all hanging out there a lot, and and it was really cool. I thought that it was called Manhattan because I always loved New York and music and art that came from New York, and I thought it was cool that in on the West Coast in L.A. you could find a place called Manhattan Beach, and it you know it was the same damn spelling. It, because one of us would have noticed if it was different spelling. Because she's the type that would have pointed it out. Me too. Yeah. But I remember when I moved to to Brooklyn. I lived there for four years, and and when I moved there, I sort of made myself learn several things about the place. Like I wanted to learn what the five boroughs were, and 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 I always had trouble spelling Manhattan. So I wanted to learn how to spell Manhattan. That was one of my priorities. And when I learned how to spell it, I was shocked that it's so easy. All it is is three three three-letter words. Man, hat, tan. Yep, right. Put them together, and that's the correct spelling. So damn easy. But I feel like I missed (laughs) that in a... I feel like I missed that in a spelling test, like in the eighth grade or something. There's all these kinds of little tricks like that that no one really tells you about. But once it's broken down, it's like, oh, well, thank, th- that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole nines, like multiplying by nines, like oh, like nine by one. And you oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, well into my education, they told me that. I'm like, oh, could have used that years ago. But thanks for knowing me now. Cool. So Manhattan's like, oh, like and that wouldn't make sense if it was T E N or T A N, you know, like I this guess if you have ten. Right. Yeah. 
don't sound right. And thank you, Trish, for the subscription. I'm starting to get wound up, Brian. I think I'm going to go live after you're done. Really? Yeah, fuck it. Cool. Well, why don't you get your link and get it in the chat for everybody? Um, um, okay, I'll just do the channel link. Because I probably will wind this down like within the next half hour at most. I'm and getting... I'm not going to do too much, people. Just going to philosophize a little bit. Yeah, everybody make sure you sub and bell uh, Joe. There's over 200 people in the YouTube chat. so Hopefully Hell you yeah. can all sub Joe's channel. That'd be cool. Everybody sub Dave's channel, Sovereign Soul, Unchained Mind. If mods can help out and you know, drop, keep dropping those links for a little bit. C3PO's link is right in the show description because I knew he was coming on. Make sure you sub and bell him. Ash, do you put any videos up? Oh, no. Um, not really. I, I think about it every so often, but uh, most of the things I have are really short. Like, oh, Captain mean Cap, you know, like the lie. So um, it would be like two or three minutes at the most, most of the time. I guess I could start. I, I don't know. Get a little shy, I guess. Yeah. But. So what's today? Today's Wednesday, right? So um, yeah. Saturday... Um, I'm not going to have a show. I'm actually going to probably be meeting up with Tommy uh, on his way through North Carolina. Um, and then um, Sunday, I'm going to be on with the Wigan Saint, I think at like 7 o'clock Eastern. Um, so my next show will probably be about this time next week, next Wednesday. Uh, Dave, what do you got coming up? Um, nothing special. I mean, I've got a thing coming up on the uh, 18th for sure. Um, somebody that uh, I've engaged with on um, Facebook I'm gonna be coming on and having a discussion on uh, globe versus the flat earth. So that ought to be pretty good. They seem to be um, a cordial person that can be maybe talked to, but we'll see what happens when they when they when and if they actually show up so anyway i'll always have something in store i'll probably be live tomorrow night 9 30. um i'll have something for y'all <laughs> um i always do mark who is all is c3po's golden calf for those of you guys that uh weren't following along at the beginning i know sometimes it gets confusing uh dave is sovereign soul unchained mind on youtube uh, Mark C3PO, what do you got coming up? Anything? You working on any videos specifically? Yeah, uh, well, I've always got a, a bunch coming out sooner or later. Uh, I just had to do a bunch of like other work and um, just like some household chores that have been adding up. So I haven't really been able to edit much lately. But uh, yeah, the next one I want to do is like delving into the uh, color of black stuff. Um, I've already talked about that a little bit, but there's just like a lot more to get into with it. Um, and, it, and it gets into the, the two pillars also. Awesome. Cool. Be good. And thank you to Trish Clock, who just gave me a ten dollars super chat. Says much love and thanks for all your time. Thank you so much, Trish. Appreciate it. Yeah, I got to work the next few nights. I don't want to go too much later uh, because I don't want to sleep like right until I go to work tomorrow night, like in the all right. afternoon. This a, yeah. it'll really wear me out when I stay up too late doing these streams. So oh, and if uh, y'all get a chance. If y'all get a chance, go over and check out my stream from the other night. Um, we went over um, the Jesuit connection to the heliocentric uh, belief system, where it really has its roots at, and why it was pushed. So it'd be pretty interesting. That's cool. Oh, I just got like reminded. Actually, I had this interesting story happen to me. If uh, yeah, you we got time to hear. Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I, I do like random like video jobs. So I was doing um, a music video shoot in like this like apartment complex, and um, it uh, like like a nicer condo area, and uh, so it's just like one of those things where like if you really pay attention to the things in your life, um, you see all these messages that we always talk about. That it's just like this constant like world scripting. Um, so I, I didn't even really think about this until after it was over and then it just kind of blew my mind. Um, and things also tend to happen in threes also, which you'll notice if you pay attention to it. 
Um, so anyway, the guy who was, I don't want to like dox the guy, but the guy who's, you know, job or the guy, you know, paid me, like he was the producer of it. So his name, uh, I'll just say his first name is uh, Emmanuel, which is like a name for Jesus. And then as I'm driving to the place, um, my car is just acting like so weird. And then I had a flat tire, like, but I managed to get to the place with the flat tire. Um, and so that was just a weird thing. And then I, I get to the place and uh, the address, the address is, uh, is uh, a manual, which is, uh, like I think there's manual. like feedback or something. Yeah, Shiva, you'll get feedback from you. Uh, Hold on, I'll, I'll mute him until he. Um, so, so the address of the place is uh, 900 and then we're on floor 11 so there's like 911 and um, when I go into the place uh, I'm like bringing my uh, film equipment up to the place and it was because it was on the 11th floor it was nice they had an elevator um, because it sucks to lug film equipment around um, so we go into the room and then we're going to go back out to get more equipment and we pass by the elevator um, and we're like, how did we pass by the elevator? Like, it should be easy to see this. But then we noticed that all the doors were closed and what was happening was the whole building was having like a fire alarm. And um, it was just this crazy thing where it was like one thing after another with like the flat tire and like, um, I couldn't like communicate with anyone, like everyone that I called, like no one would answer their phone. And then, like, we're, like, trapped in this building with, like, the fire alarm, and it's got, like, the 9-11 address, and the guy's name is Emmanuel. And, like, just, like, the more I thought about all the little things that were happening, it just, like, really blew my mind that it was just, like, this is, like, some kind of weird, like, scripting event. Yeah, you're in a movie Earth, man. Well, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that stuff happens all the time. It's so crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, look at everything we've ever looked at. It's full of actors. So, I mean, movie Earth is on the table. Welcome, Shiva Shampoo. How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, man, hey, we hear you good. good. What's, what's happening? Yeah, man. Um, I, I didn't. I know you're leaving, Brian. I know you, that you're leaving, so I'm only on for a couple minutes. I just thought, you know, because of all the Annie hate in the chat, you know. <laughs> yeah. Not that I <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I just thought. I, I just thought I would. Okay, I don't know the movie. Do you want to sing, don't been, you? You want to come on here and sing the song? Don't yeah. You? I'll sing the song because it's a great song, right? I know the song from like. 45 years ago or something, even even earlier. So should I sing you the song? It's very yeah, short. Yeah, I think so. You All have right? to sing us the song. Yeah. Okay, okay. Are, are you ready? Uh, my fucking washing machine's going. Okay, I'll do it anyway. Okay. We don't hear it. You ready? It's fine, yeah. <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that's tomorrow. There'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow. Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrows Till there's none When I'm stuck in a day that's gray and lonely I just lift up my chin and grin And say, oh The sun will come out tomorrow So you gotta hang on till tomorrow Come what may, tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow, you're always a day away. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you, tomorrow, you're always a day away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's a fucking well, great it's song. A movie. Man. I don't even know the movie. I never saw the movie. The, the, the new the new one with that bald creepy pedo guy or something. Oh no, the, and, and not the new one, but the classic one with uh Yeah. You know. and, and it's it's dodgy. It, orphans and stuff. And there's some truth drops in there, right? Economically about the central bankers and all kinds of stuff. Really, if you look at it, it's hardcore, but but the music is good. I mean, yeah. I mean, in that cheesy Hollywood musical way, you know? There's that one. Little, uh, little girls. Ba -ba -dum, ba -da -ba -dum, you know that? It's, there's some... 
It's cheesy fucking American Hollywood it shite, cool, but man. it's good cheesy Hollywood American what, shite. What do you, know? you think about coming like to America, lady. Shiva? What do you think about coming to America, Shiva? <laughs> you don't like it? That's the best movies hmm? ever. Coming to America? Yeah. Oh, oh excellent. Excellent. Very good. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, funny. The, ro the royal penis is clean, your highness. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's the. Dude, I don't know what the movie. I don't know what you guys are talking about. That's Eddie Murphy and Arsenio Hall. Eddie Murphy's a prince, and Arsenio <laughs> Hall is his assistant. And they go to America. I, so I always thought the word Arsenio is such a rude word. It's, I'd never name my kid Arsenio. That's that's setting them up for such a fucking play. great movie, man. It's <laughs> so funny, dude. Boy, he he kind of faded from view. Arsenio, yeah. 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 He just, he was like the golden boy. Then he just like went away. Did he do something wrong, or just I don't know? Well, maybe he wouldn't he do what, something wrong. Maybe they wanted him to, and he was like, nah. Yeah, yeah. It could be. He didn't want to. Last time here, he had a. He had his show, his late night show back in the day. Yeah. We all remember, but it, it was really back. big. Yeah, but he yeah. made a comeback. That show made a comeback right before the thing. That's huh. right. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a strange guy. It's, it's, it's funny, Hollywood does that. They float out these people and then they go, hmm, okay, maybe not, maybe this one, maybe that one. Because it's all pushed, you know. When it's you think of trash, think of Akeem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he's out and on the balcony, he's like, good morning, my neighbors. And they're like, hey, fuck you. He's like, yes, <laughs> yes, fuck you too. <laughs> <laughs> that was pleasant. Yeah. It's been a really good show, by the way. Huh? I, I, I wasn't yeah. going to go on because I just was too interested in listening to all you guys. It's been fascinating and, and uh, cool as usual. And uh, as usual, Mark, you've got some great breakdowns. I love, I love your videos and your uh, Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, it's good stuff. I appreciate it, too. Because not a lot of people do the decoding, you know? There was a, the, the real deep dive uh, by John Lan Lash in 2017. About the, he's got about 68, you know, videos on it. And he does the decoding on, on the, the meanings of the effects and that, you know, the relations of them. But other than that, you don't hear much, many people talking about the, the meanings. You know, people get stuck on the, um, they get blown away by the effect itself. And they're like, oh my God, look at the effects. And the number of them, right? Yeah. You know, or, or getting angry at it. You know, don't take my songs, don't take my movies. <laughs> and stuff. And I just, yeah. Yeah. How dare Mr. Rogers <laughs> change? I'm horrified. <laughs> This I mean, neighborhood. Oh, what the hell? You know, but that, we'll that's be able another. To watch Mr. Rogers ever again. I I never, know, never. And I wonder if that's what it's about: getting away from watching all the media that we love. You know, yeah. that's exactly oh, yeah. what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Don't be attached. Like, if you're attached to that, maybe there's something weird about being attached to that. Well, first of all, that's the best way to get your attention to stuff that you really know and you're really attached to. You say, I know what that is. And they change it. Because if they had changed something obscure, you'd be like, well, I, I don't know. I don't really remember that. I don't really know that. This is stuff you said. You've seen it hundreds of times or thousands of times. So if they change that and you don't get it, I guess you're not meant to. You know, you're not ready for it. Right. I think you're just not ready for it. And what I don't know is, are people inherently designed uh, already that they don't know, that, that they're not able to do it? Or is there, in some cases, some people are like, no, 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 it's bullshit, it's bullshit, it's bullshit. And then one change, they go, yeah, no, 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 no. I know it was that. I know it was that. And once that does, the floodgates open, right? Mm -hmm. You know, a friend of mine was not into it. When I showed him Lion and the Lamb, Lion Lace with the Lamb, he was like, Oh, 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 oh. He, he, knew, he memorized the Bible. He had the Bible that he memorized from his dead mother. He says, I'm going right now. He checked it and it blew him away. He didn't sleep that night. And then I showed him the other Bible changes. And then, you know, since then, it's just the floodgates open. And now he can see almost all the other changes, you know. So it's fascinating. Some people are just haven't been exposed to the right ones. Right. And some people, it doesn't matter what you show them. You know, mm -hmm. the White House could be Purple House. They'd be, it's always been the Purple House. It's just, it's nuts, man, you know. Um, and Brian, there's a few people from our talk in The Rise Above, actually. I heard a few people say, you know, I was on the fence about the Mandela effect. I was thinking it was a PSYOP. But after watching this, I, it, it's, it's undeniable. Yeah. So I was like, 
Cool. Yeah, we laid it on well. We we laid it on thick, and I wish we could have got like another ninety minutes out of those guys because we could have really. I mean, <laughs> but then, but then you try to share a six-hour Mandela video. People are like, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but still, was, you. Was, how about our two-hour one we did for Anarchapolco? I mean, that we were trying hard to keep it as short as possible, right? We're supposed to have like an hour. Then they said, okay, 75 minutes. And then we ended up doing it. We tried to keep it. We reshot this one second. We gave them two hours. And it was two hours. And I was like, oh, no, man. And I showed it to her. I said, look, if you want us to, you know, cut some parts out, we will. But, like, what the hell are we going to cut out? It's already, you know, you're already. We are, and it. we are. And we forgot King Tut on top of everything. We didn't even do King Tut. There's time. We didn't get to Centerville. Hey, we didn't even get to Centerville on the rise above. You yeah. started to talk about it, and then you know yeah. it yeah, got yeah. converted. It, and because that's really, you know, that's really close to home. I mean, if you just present that one, people say, "Well, it's your town." I don't know, but along with all the rest, and then you present that one yeah. and its connections to Lowell and Ed McMahon and all. It's it's just like, you know, it's just piles of evidence. But yeah, I I wonder about that. Do you? I think that there's people who will never get it, no matter what you show them. Yeah, I'm starting to but see I'm not that, sure. and it's it's weird. I mean, so I'm not sure if they're my, humans the same as us. I'm, well, it's it's I'm wondering, in case my egalitarian, loving, compassionate side, where I like to think that we're all one and we're all from God, we're all together, we're all in the same soul, right, wants to think, no, it's not really like that. I mean, these Mandela-denying retards that are like, that get unhinged and angry about it, and doesn't matter what you show them, may, maybe they still are a human being with a soul, but they're just... They're fulfilling a role that they need to fulfill. Like God uh, needs to experience all the aspects of creation. You know, it wants to be Brian. It wants to be as God. It wants to be. It wants to be everything. It, it wants to also experience a uh, Mandela denying retard who's kind of a, an asshole. He wants to have that experience. I mean, so who am I to, to tell God? No, no, no. Don't have that experience. God is everything, right? There's nothing. This oh, this table's not God. Well, yes, it is. So, so is the retard Mandela. And, uh, to say whether well, is he a human, is he an NPC? I, I mean, what do those things even mean? What does human even mean? I mean, we are human. Well, maybe there's a part. Thing. There's a part of their thought process, uh, uh, their brain, literally, that they're blocked off from access, and which would let them see the supernatural. Possible, and but maybe they're supposed to be blocked off because they're there to to fulfill a certain role, right? Um, I mean, we we need uh, we need there is an adversary, adversarial things that happen in our life, right? That teach us stuff. Like the judo teacher doesn't just go, "Oh, hello, have a nice day." You're like, "I'm not learning anything." The judo teacher throws you on your ass th uh, repeatedly, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, "Why are you doing this?" He says. Well, you came to study judo, right? I mean, what do you want me to do? Just have tea with you? And so, you know, you don't call him an asshole. So, so these people are, in a way, an extension of that adversarial teaching nature. They're teaching us, like, how, how retarded can you be that you can't see this? Like, what's wrong with you? And then they'll, they'll like, you know, swear at you. Eh, you're a fucking delusional. And you're like, wow, maybe they're supposed to be there because we're supposed to have obstacles in this life. Right? Yeah. To nope. develop our spirit, you know, with, with it was too easy, you know, we wouldn't get very far. Yeah, if everybody just got it right away, there wouldn't be this whole, you know, situation that we're in where we keep learning, right. you know. Exactly, right. That's why I said if you could be enlightened at the age of five, I mean, what would be the point, you know? And hey, who knows? Maybe there's another, uh, other realities or how do I know? Or people say, oh, oh, this is another one. It's a bit off topic, but same thing. People are like, oh, I can't stand being trapped in this soul trap. I want to get out of here. I want to escape. This is the last time for me. I say, I don't know if it's up to you, buddy. I mean, you're in the, like, maybe you decided to come here, but just because you and your limited retard avatar doesn't know you decided to come here doesn't mean it's not true, right? It's not, I want to leave here. And if you want to leave here, where are you going to go? For all you know, maybe the next place is even tougher. So just relax. Yeah. <laughs> do what you do here. Do it the best you can. Do the best you can and leave the results to God. That's what I think. Don't worry about the results. You're going to be okay if you're kind, if you're loving, if you're searching, if you're living yourself. You're doing the right thing already, right? You don't have to uh, escape and leave. And it's terrible. It's terrible. You're getting into the fear mentality again. You know, yeah, it's a shit life. Shit things happen here. There's so much crap going on. There's so much adversarial oh. stuff. But it's supposed <laughs> to be that way. 
I mean, I'm not saying I like it. I don't like it. I've got terrible shit happening in my life, bro. Like, I don't even want to explain it to you. It's so fucked. But the thing is, I mean, all right, I guess you could kill yourself. You could say, oh, that's one way to escape, right? But then what's going to happen? Are you going to come back or something? Or, or, you know, I don't even know if there is even time, you know. But whatever there is, whether the time exists or doesn't exist, just don't worry about it. Like, don't be fearful. You know, I, that may sound like an easy thing to say. It's an easy thing to say. It's that's the way to roll, man. That's what I've been telling people for 14 years. Don't live in fear yeah. of anything. And yeah, uh, fear try is to the worst thing. I've been trying to tell oh, people. It's a weird last... drug to get addicted to, too. You don't even recognize. And the next thing you mm. know, someone's like, don't live in fear. And you're like, I don't live in fear. It reminds me of an alcoholic saying, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, you... I'm just absolutely <laughs> terrified of leaving the house. Mm. <laughs> and, and the thing is with fear, the other people <laughs> around you will reinforce it. Like you're not, you have very few people around you, except, you know, for us, we're telling us, don't be, but most of the people, it doesn't matter whether you're normies or truthers, forgive the terms, right? They're all going to be like, oh yes, oh yes, oh, everyone's going to reinforce, you know, you're going to say, oh, I have this sickness, my cancer, my, 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 as soon as you say that, you're giving yourself, you're manifesting yeah. that shit. And other people are going to reinforce it. Go, oh yes, oh yes, you do. You, you know, victim mentality. If you're victim mentality, if you're fear, if you're that, the people around you, they feed it. They also feel the same way. So everyone reinforces each other. So you're like, oh well, this must be the way to to be because everyone else is feeling this way. You actually have to go against that. You know, it, it's hard work actually to go against the the stream of fear. Like that's, but it's necessary. If you don't do it. You, you're you're cutting yourself off. I'm very fortunate life. that I learned that early on, you know, by taking it's apart totally the big right. one and learning about the media fakery aspects of it, and then seeing how fake everything was after that. Like, there was never any fear, you know, just for maybe a couple months at best, you know. And I realized it's, it's what Alex the, Jones was pretty key. quick. It's kind of like a skeleton key that opens up all these doors. You know what I mean? Like. You could still believe, let's say you still believe in some of the psyops, some of the lies. As long as you get rid of the fear, at some point, you yeah. will shed the rest of it. Yeah. You know? So that's the thing. And then there's some people who are, oh, they saw through psyops, they saw through a lot of things, but because they're so in fear, they're still really trapped. You know, like the truthers, mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'm so smart. I'm not a fucking normie. Ha, ha, I know this. I know that. And the government's trying to get me. And they're going to inject me. And there's all, and there's all, and the nanobots and the chemtrails. And I'm like, whoa, dude. Like, like you know, the free They shot down are, planes. They, and they know how to do, ho like, holograms. And next thing you know, they're going to have all kinds of aliens coming down to oh, kill yeah. us. And guess what? Uh -huh. We're going to be in trouble. We got to make bomb shelters. But guess what? The elites already have it. Totally. <laughs> Totally. You've got, you have nanobots inside you. All your thoughts are not even your own. They're controlling you. You don't even know it. Okay. And all the plastic that you're eating, Fine, don't, don't even think about it when you're doing your laundry. All of the microplastics being shed from your laundry. You're a horrible totally, person, man. too. Goodness. I mean, it's crazy, no? I mean, at least we can laugh at it because that shit's funny, man. I, I was in there, too. Years ago, I was I've been studying shit since the late 80s. And I'm like, oh, I was studying like, the, you know, Freemason secret society starting around 1990. Right. And so yeah. I was like, oh, look at all this stuff. And like, oh, don't you see? Don't you see? And all these people around me like, and then all these other people get into it. And is it any better? I, I guess so. But now they're instead of being afraid of something, instead of being afraid of the fake COVID non-virus bullshit thing, now you're afraid they're going to come and strap you down and inject yeah, it's you. It's always been bullshit. With, they're going to put you in a FEMA camp. The military is going to kick in your door. And they're going to kill you with the yeah, camera. I fell for that. I fell for that well, for sure. going to be FEMA camps. Have you looked at how big they are? They're going to yeah. lock you in a Walmart. That's like what I'm going to do to people at the grocery store. They're, they're, <laughs> Brian, you're scaring them. Brian, I'm running a fucking <laughs> FEMA <laughs> camp, really. I'm going to fuck. That's what I'm going to do. Gonna they, like, listen, I'm going to get them all. They're all, they're all going to tell me it's mirror, mirror. <laughs> and then I'm going to tell them about the Mandela effect. And any of the fucking deniers, this day and the night, this day and the week, the months ahead, it's a fucking FEMA camp. <laughs> For Mandela uh, tonight. We, we have a man that's locked a bunch of people into a Walmart. He's asking the Mandela questions. We need backup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to need, gonna need right a now. bigger boat. We're him about a, a route. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, two, turmeric? Or no, it's turmeric. Wait, hang on. Guys. And I'm going to make gonna all, all of them. I'm going to make them all sit there and watch my uncle's graduation video, too. 
<laughs> totally. I, actually, term, turmeric. Oh God, yeah. turmeric is good for tumors. You know, they've done a lot of work on uh, on, you know, on cannabis. On on uh, the active. Okay, the active ingredient in turmeric is curcumin. C U R C U R T U R. So that's even like they're, they're, it's tricky, right? Curcumin is the active ingredient. Well, there's many ingredients in, in turmeric, right? But it's the active ingredient. So turmeric and cur uh, curcumin, it's U R, right? So that people go, oh, it's a really tricky one. But turmeric is good for tumors. You know, that's some people remembered it like that because that's what it was. Get in the name, yeah. It's so strange. When I went to India in like 1992, it was turmeric, 100%. And they they use turmeric in everything. <laughs> But mm -hmm. they, I stopped calling it turmeric. I called it haldi because haldi is the Hindi word for it. So mm -hmm. I called it haldi for, you know, a couple of decades. And then when it came back to the Western world, I was like, what the fuck? Why is everyone spelling it like this? This is retarded. Right? Why yeah. is that, what does the extra R mean in this case? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. I hey, think it's Mark? a positive. Well, actually, uh, I have thought about that one. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like... Um, how people think the L might be E-L, like uh, the name for God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that that does line up with a lot of things. And um, just to go off like for a minute on that, uh, one of the ones where I was like, well, how does it make sense for Halliburton? Because Halliburton seems like such a negative thing, but it got an extra L. But mm -hmm. if you look up the name Halliburton, um, I forget exactly what it means, but it's like something like the, just the name Halliburton means like, uh, like Garden of Eden, like something along those lines, like a paradise. Um, so that's why it got the L because it has nothing oh. to do with the company. It has to do with the name. But so the R, I think that R, um, is like another word for God that we don't really know about like a R. Um, so, uh, R comes up a lot. Like you have like a Arnold, um, like, uh, Schwarzenegger. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, yeah. um, <clears throat> but like what? No, I was saying like the end. I remember how Schwarzenegger's name ended in AR, but now it's ER. Oh yeah, but it starts with like losses. Arnold. Oh um, yeah, at the beginning. You'll see too. like a lot of uh, oh. a lot of God characters or Jesus characters start with AR, like King Arthur, um, like the mm. word arch, uh, arch, uh, arc. like that. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. arc. Um, Argonaut. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I yeah, think yeah. like there's something with yeah. the AR, and it's also like the word R in English, A R E. Because um, you have like God saying like I am, but it's also like you know we are. We are right. So, and the yeah, L so... and the R and an R is a bent L, you know, just visual. One that's bowing, maybe. That's true too. But I've also heard that an R symbolizes like the head, um, and then like the neck is like the two um, legs of it. And one of the patterns of the Mandela effect too is turning um, the right leg of the R um longer so you'll see that in like a lot of logos where the right leg of the r is longer than it used to be um mm. so i, I forget <laughs> like where we started with, oh uh, so yeah i think r is like it's kind of like the l um so like if something's a positive it will get an r added to it and if something's a negative it will get an r taken away oh whoa you know, I know AR is accelerated reading. You know, we had to do all of this reading and take these tests in school mm. and we get like our little star would go across the board for how many like books we read and tests we got right. It's also yeah. Armalite rifles too. Exactly, that's why they use the AR, uh, you know, with the one mm. five in their stories. Cause, uh, and also think about the word school um, because if we're like fish, uh, fish travel in schools. Yeah. So they're saying that like these fish are killed by an AR, you know, so it's got all that symbolism. Yeah, wow, well, yeah. Pretty nuts. Oh. It's also the noise a pirate makes. Arrgh! <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, there, there, there's, some, there's pirate stuff too. Like, like the words like pirate and like the terrorist word, like um, they don't, like, like Luke Skywalker is basically a terrorist, you know, against the Empire. Yeah. Mm. So from a certain perspective, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? Mm. I am Luke Skywalker. <laughs> and John Bonjo. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Arr, Luke Skywalker. 
<laughs> Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Arr, Luke Skywalker. Arr. Is it, is it Luke Skywalker? Is, it's from Whoa. some. Uh, What's with the silver leg, matey? I'm the Skywalker. I remember reading about what the Skywalker is from, what he was using. It was Joseph Campbell, I think, talking about the Luke Skywalker is some Siberian shaman reference or something. Oh, wow. Interesting. But also, uh, Luke, Luke S. is like George Lucas's last name, like mm -hmm. Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a lot going on there. Like, you know, Luke is obviously like a Lucifer type word, uh, name. Yeah. Or Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as well. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, there might be something to that. I think you got to, you might, what, you might be on something. Like that. What do you think <laughs> about the fact that I'm a Jedi, Dave? Um, I believe it 100%. Um, and, you know, I'm pretty sure that you probably have mad lightsaber skills. Yeah. And I, and I have. I'm just going to um, go with it, man. He practices a lot. <laughs> and I happen to have two. I have a red and a green lightsaber. So it just depends. In fact, on I, I, Tommy told me that you're quite a sword swallower. So. And, and he's, uh, he's an expert at the skin flute. <laughs> well, you used it. your mind tricks to get on those airplanes, right? So, you know, you got Jedi, yeah. to do Jedi it. Jedi mind tricks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> These aren't the droids you're like looking for. Playing that old meat. That's whistle. what I was going to say. <laughs> That's what I say to deniers every once in a while. I almost never engage in the comment sections of my videos. I just don't have time, you know. And then especially <laughs> if there's deniers, but every once in a while I'll be like, you know, after that dumb comment, I'll be like, you're not the droid we're looking for. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying to, to about Dave things. about Judge Judy. I was saying that Dave wanted to pound her gavel. You know, he that hates her. No, only if she was it. animated. If there's a Judge Judy cartoon, he'll fuck her. I mm. bet you there is. Go on like Deviant Art or something. I bet you'll find all kind Judy. He probably <laughs> got to be Judge Judy art. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. With he might gavel. get a little too rough. There's with probably her. some Deviant. Know. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, I don't want you to like. Choke that, that's actually passes, been kind though. of a disappointing place to try to find residue. I thought I'd find a lot more. Maybe I'm just not looking hard enough. But... Did, you, did you know about Dave and his cartoon fetishes with the women of the cartoons? He wants to uh, impregnate them. Listen, yeah. Judy, Judge Judy's one of those leather dama matrix broads. I guarantee you. I bet yeah. you that Mr. Yeah. Judy gets his ass whooped and they have a safe word. I will guarantee it. For sure, bro. In fact, hey, look, I, I just thought of this right now, and I am never going to investigate this shit, but in the porn world, in the porn clown world, there's probably some dominatrix Judge Judy woman, like the porn shot, like Judge Judy's going to ram the gavel, and she's got a gavel going, oh, bad boy, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be good residue. Really bad but... quality, too. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> Got that porn music playing, you know. Dave, Dave's more into like Angela You're Lansbury. You're so guilty. <laughs> oh, I thought it was more like Wilma and and. Oh, he like loves that, Wilma you know? and Betty. Oh, Danny Phantom has oh, the better women. Oh, oh, Dave started. Dave's on. biggest fantasy. Her, his mom. Come Betty on, and Wilma. Man. Dave. Betty Dave wants a threesome with Betty and Wilma. Or not? He'd be, he'd be good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get that Wilma from the Flintstones? But he, yeah, yeah. yeah. And but he gets real freaky and he'd end up fucking Dino as well. Oh, not the children. Lansbury, Brian. No, 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 no. Just for yeah. your own edification. Yeah. You don't know uh Angela Lansbury from back in the day. Did you know that she was a pinup girl, man? No. She was when she was young, she was a pinup girl, man. World yes. War II, she was around for a long time. Her picture in their locker, man. She was all a hottie. Right, all right, all right. I know Sally Fields was good when she was young. So she I was, would, man. Would, yeah, I would. She was. Uh, you know. She was a little hottie. She still looks good. See, that's the thing. What happens no. is you get older, you start to broaden your range. See, anything eighteen to eighty, blind, crippled, or crazy. You know, that's the way we. You know. That's how you roll. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful with those soul ties you're making. <laughs> no, but that does happen because as you get older, you start, you start, you know what I find weird about my age is that I'm the same age as old people. That's so fucking up, man. 
Yeah. I'm yeah. like walking around. Just the stop same counting age. your age. The, the, you know, Dave, next thing Dave, you know, you stay the, young forever. The word isn't old, it's elderly. It's same <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like crazy. Because I'll see these people and I'm like, man, is that how I'm being viewed too? Probably because I don't see myself that way. You know, people see you and they automatically, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Tell us about the Civil War. <laughs> Wait, no, I thought it was King Tut. Well, that was early. See, I yeah, he forged, oh, okay. gotcha, gotcha. he so forged been, King Tut. Uh, uh, gotcha. yeah, Let me forged tell King you Tuts about the Matt time I was with Stonewall Jackson at the uh, first Manassas battle. There we tell, were. Us, <laughs> tell us about it. What went down? We know you were there. Oh, what? Battle of First Manassas, I can walk you through every aspect of that. Uh, no, no, sure. please don't bore me with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually taken people on tours of that. No, fuck Battlefield that. No, and, and shit, yeah. I can do the same yeah. thing with Next. Gettysburg, man. Fuck Gettysburg. You, know, you go up there and you pay, those clown, you pay those guys uh, money to you yeah. know, go on a tour. You'll just guy. take us you on the tour. Licensed. You have to be licensed by the park. But if I go up there with friends and shit, I'll give them the tour. And I'll go like step by step on the whole thing, and, and you don't have to pay the forty bucks for the tour guide. I, you know, I just, I'll do it because I've actually reenacted that. I've reenacted a few of the battles from Gettysburg, and I was an extra in the movie Gettysburg. There's three great scenes where you can see me get blowed up. Look at this guy's name in the chat, Stavely the Scammer. Stavely <laughs> the Scammer. Yeah. Hey, fucking wow. bite me. You know what's a pal. joke, dude? You don't have anything better to do. It's 1.40 a.m. on the fucking East Coast, and you decided to go over to somebody's channel that you disagree with just to be a, a dumbass. And everybody's just laughing at you anyways because I'm looking at the psychopathy behind your mind, and you're a weird motherfucker. That's for real. Yeah, and um, if you'd like to donate Stavely the Scammer, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. You can become a member. You can come, you can join for seven dollars. You cancel any time, but you can come on and tell me how I'm a scammer and why. Very funny, Cubby Bear. Sold hot dogs at Custer's Last Stand. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave. You just, you, yeah, like that song "Sympathy for the Devil," right? Is they got like that? I was there all the whole. It, it, I was Dave witnessed the fucking crucifixion of Jesus Christ. In person. I was there when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain. <laughs> I am sure the pilot washed his hands and sealed his fate. Please meet you. Won't you guess my name? Yeah, I love that song. I learn you with just the nature of my game. <laughs> just as every cop is a criminal, and all, all the, the sinners, sinners saints. saints. In Exodus, say, just call me Lucifer, because I'm in need of some restraint. So if you meet me, <laughs> have some courtesy, have some sympathy. And some faith. Give all your well-learned politics, or I'll lay your soul to waste. Mm -hmm. I was just playing that. I was just playing that song on my guitar the other day. But that's bullshit. <laughs> Satan doesn't have the power to lay anybody's soul to waste. He doesn't. Have well, to. in a way, but he's a big liar. So. He doesn't have. Oh to. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Joey if he can get you with to. the fear. Get, oh, outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill is all about the. I would really encourage people looking into that one. He doesn't need to. He gets you to do it for him. You yeah, don't I got a question. Uh, could, could you guys sing the chorus to that again? <laughs> the Mandela one or the original one? Won't you guess my name? <laughs> no, because it's, it's not won't you guess my name anymore. <laughs> it's uh, hope you guess my name. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like they want to be found out? I don't know. It's Maybe tired of playing this game and now they want out of their role. I thought I thought the lyrics kind of toggled back and forth. Toggled. To I don't know. Yeah, depends on which which chorus it is. Oh, does it? He, he, yeah. yeah. So. Does he say he hope? Does he say the word hope every time? Uh, <laughs> I didn't look at every chorus. I just I'll, I'll check it out on my own time. Hmm. 
Yeah. yeah, it looks like he says hope every time. Yeah. Wow. Hope for this shit going on, man. It really yeah. is. But no, what I was saying one. is he gets you to do it yourself, right? Who? If you mm -hmm. succumb to the fear, fear and anger are very closely related. They're Talk about Satan. Emotions. Satan can suck vibrations. my cock. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but also by getting you to <laughs> indulge. But listen, getting Strongly. you to indulge in the, the worldly, the pleasures of the flesh at the expense of the soul. Okay, mm -hmm. and there's where the balance has to lie in. This is why you have to have my my idea of a holy trinity is mind, body, and soul. You have to have all three of those things within harmony with one another. And if you're indulging, if you're overindulging into beyond your needs into your wants, your wants will become more and more elaborate. And the more that you indulge into that, it's at the expense of your spirit. Which of course is is treasuring that which is not worldly. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you want what you need, but you don't always need what you want. I guess that's a good way to put it. Hmm. <laughs> kind of like the Rolling Stones. He traps you with the sparklies. He traps you with the sparklies. He traps you, you with the fancy time. pants. You know, with the status, <laughs> with the fame, with the fortune, with the sparkly shit, the shekels. That's how he enslaves you. And it's easy There's to a do book series be... called The Giver. Oh, yeah. And um, it's a quartet. And uh, spoiler: the fourth one has a trade master, and all these people trade in secret, secret stuff, and then they get these fancy things, like a fancy sewing machine with all of the bolts of fabric. They get all these worldly pleasures, but then they're turning into horrible people because they're trading in their like integrity, basically. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's uh, pretty much on point with what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. it's 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 a fine line and you you see it becomes an addictive thing um i think it was david rockefeller somebody asked him one time they said in an interview they said you know you've got basically more money than god i'm paraphrasing of course and uh how much is enough and his answer was just a little bit more <laughs> and that reminded me of a heroin addict. That sounded like a heroin addict. When is enough oh. enough? Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. And it becomes to a point where it's just an addiction to acquire in a mass, you know, to the point where it doesn't even really have any meaning to you anymore. I think that's the blinder. And of course, they get a lot of people will trade in, they'll put their morals on the shelf for a paycheck many police almost that almost everybody does yeah. that yeah bunch of fucking everybody sold their soul so you got to be careful does this go against my core principles is my actions good or are my actions bad yes they're good in a sense that i have a paycheck and i'm able to support my family and and that kind of thing but is it really worth my soul in the long run? Let's not forget, you can't take it with you. <laughs> All the shit goes back in the box the same day you do. We're supposed to store our treasure in heaven. That's right, man. We're going to need a bigger box. <laughs> All right, let's wind it down. I got to I gotta start getting ready to crash and go to bed and... I gotta work the next couple of days, so eleven hour days each day. So I'm gonna wind it down. So um, I know people are asking about everybody's channels. We went through them before, and I know they're not all in the links. So what I want to do is everybody just verbally tell people on the stream how to search your names on YouTube. I'll start at the top left that I see, and that's Dave. Tell people your channel. Okay, you can find me at uh, Sovereign Soul Unchained Mind, or you can use the at SSUM3690. That should bring me up as well. I have a backup channel as well um, called Sob's Place. You can also find me on Rumble at SSUM369. Uh, um, and we'll be probably going live tomorrow evening. 9 30 ish i always go 9 35 i'm not going to be enslaved by the clock but i am prompt to when i say i'm going to start brian 
Um, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I'll fucking burn yeah. you at the stake like the Salem witches used to be in the old reality. <laughs> All right, uh, Shiva. Yeah. Okay. You just look under Shiva shampoo. And uh, for now, I just have music there. I don't have the Annie song, though. So, you know, if you're going to look well, for that, it's not there. Well, it'll have to go up. Right here. What about you, Ash? <laughs> Uh, not yeah. yet. I only got this YouTube channel. I haven't posted anything quite yet. Um, might soon. All right, Joe. Um, Joe Martinez songs. But Ash, I want to encourage you to make videos. You're really good at this, and, and even if it's just a few minutes long video, um, do it. And and maybe you could put your channel link in the chat just in case you decide. Because I'd like to subscribe just in case you make videos. Oh, okay. Um, I'll figure it out. Right. And um, Joe, tell people your channel again. I don't think it was that clip. Oh, um, Joe Martinez songs. I guess that's what it's called. Okay. And Mark? It's uh, C3PS Golden Calf, and uh, the link's in the description. And uh, like I said, I was working on a video about the black stuff, but it's also going to be um, tying in with Breaking Bad. So anyone who's seen that show, uh, I'm going to break it down. Um, it'll be in a way that no one's <clears throat> ever seen it before, because uh, hmm. I don't know if people realize it, but Breaking Bad's actually like the story of the United States. Um, and it we're, we're basically at the end of the story so if we follow along with how breaking bad you know we've been following along with it so if it is the real story then it's another reason why we're almost at the end so it's pretty interesting and the movie el camino is really interesting too so i'll be tying all that together cool all right i'm gonna get out of here everybody it's time for me to crash and uh i will definitely be live with awakened saint sunday night at 7 p.m maybe i'll do something um no i won't be able to do anything before then so I'll see you guys Sunday night on Awakened Saints channel. I assume we're probably doing most of the stream on his Rumble, but I'll definitely get you guys a link before we go live.